Kanaha 16 years. Fire Country, Kanaha Village, Ninja School. Hey, Orakimaru, I want to challenge you, challenge. In the noisy classroom, a white-haired little boy wearing a beige-red edged kimono stood on a desk and yelled at the little boy with long, straight black hair in front of him. The white-haired boy's skin was slightly yellow, and there were red eye lines on each eye. At this time, he was furious, and it seemed that he wanted to have a duel between men with the boy in front of him immediately. However, faced with the challenge of the white-haired boy, the black-haired boy turned a blind eye and looked around at the other little brats who were watching him. He continued to lower his eyes and think about his own affairs. Seeing Orakimaru ignoring him, Jiraiya said even louder damn it, bastard Orakimaru, are you looking down on me? Oh, is there another fight? Haha, <laughs> this guy Jiraiya really doesn't stop. Isn't that right? Even though he was abused every time, he still provoked him again and again. Haha, <laughs> I think Orakimaru will definitely not pay attention to him this time. That's it, that's it. Why should this guy fight Orakimaru? The voices of the children onlookers reached the ears of Jiraiya and Orakimaru one after another. Jiraiya was a little embarrassed, but Orakimaru? He didn't think about anything at this time. He only had one thought in his mind. He traveled through time, and even traveled to the world of Naruto, becoming Orakimaru in his childhood. And the boy in front of him is his future companion one of the three famous ninjas in the ninja world, Toad Sage, Jiraiya. Oh my god! It's incredible! I actually became a member of the time-traveling army? Haha! <laughs> Orakimaru smiled bitterly in his heart, but he quickly accepted this reality. Because of this kind of time-traveling thing, he had it in his mind before time-traveling. I have fantasized about it countless times, and now I have finally traveled through it. Naturally, I accepted it quickly. Although this world in my memory is full of death and danger, being able to live another life is already a gift from God. Thinking of this, Orakimaru calmed down he slowly raised his head and said, You are a powerful Lord Jiraiya, how can I dare to look down on you? You, little did Jiraiya, who was only six years old, know that Orakimaru was in no mood to accept any of his challenges and just wanted to get rid of him as soon as possible. Not for anything else, just because he has just finished digesting Orakimaru's memory. He is a time traveler. He is a time traveler who came to this world in less than two hours. In less than two hours, he experienced countless psychological changes. Just now, he reluctantly accepted his identity as Orakimaru. The original Orakimaru, in Naruto, was called a genius once in decades by the third generation of Hokage. But actually, in this world where he fights for his father and blood, he has nothing. There is neither the sage body of the Senjo clan nor the Sharingan that the Uchiha clan can upgrade. If it weren't for those forbidden techniques that were developed later, he would have been nothing but a bastard, worse than a bastard. Especially when facing the two S.A. Itake brothers. When he was in the Akatsuki organization, he tried to steal Uchiha Itake's Sharingan, but Uchiha Itaka stopped him with a look. Later, he had an idea for the second pillar, but he was easily killed by the second pillar again. In the end, he was finally reborn through the curse seal, and was sealed by Itaki Uchiha with the Ten Fist Sword. It can be described as extremely tragic. What's more important is that Orakimaru is only six years old now, he doesn't know many skills yet, and his parents died a few months ago. This is undoubtedly a challenge for him who has traveled through time. Because he himself is a student who has not graduated from college, even if he inherited Orakimura's strength and learning talent, it was only before the age of six. Even if you want to follow Orakimura's old path, it may not work. Seeing Orakimura's listless look, Jiraiya's fighting spirit that was burning was instantly extinguished. You guy, you always look like this, it's really annoying, oh? It's boring, it's boring. As he said that, he jumped off Orakimaru's desk and returned to his seat. He rested his head on his hands and put his feet up on the desk. He looked like a master who was the only one in the world. Orakimaru ignored him. 
The amused Jiraiya took a deep breath and asked in his mind you just said, you are the system? What system? Science Madman System, Host. Division, Science Geek? Orakimura's head is full of black lines. System? Yes, he has awakened the system that is necessary for time travelers. Originally, it was quite happy to awaken the system just after traveling through time. After all, this is the welfare of time travelers. A, a time traveler, if he doesn't carry a system with him, he would be embarrassed to say that he is a time traveler. Having read a lot of online articles in his previous life, he knows very well that the system can turn a useless person into a person in seconds. Exists like a great god of the earth. But now, science geek? Other people's systems either give unlimited money, which the host can spend as he wants, or they can directly spend 999 with a single blow, reaching the full level at the speed of light. Why do you give me a scientific madman system? Do you want me to take the path of science? Please, this is the world of Naruto, Chakra is the source of all power. Science? Impossible. Orokimaru was a little disappointed. What system is bad? Just doing science? With my level of not graduating from college, I am engaging in trivial science. Do you really think science can change the world? Orokimaru in the original novel didn't do it either, did he? In this world, even if you develop the bazooka, it's just a matter of pain's genius. Engage in scientific research? What's the future? It's better to just give him the body of an immortal. Host, as the owner of the science madman system, you should firmly believe that science is the basis of all life. It is like a key, opening up the way forward for us. Science is an existence that can change the world. We should believe in science and love science. Love science, hee <laughs> hee. Orakimura sneered I'm a poor student who didn't even graduate from college and became a criminal. You talk to me about science? Also, do you know that in this world, the Atsutsuki bloodline is the strongest? Can science fly into the sky and escape from the earth? Well, even if it can, can science create the moon? Stop being ridiculous, okay? I'm alone now and don't want to do any scientific research. Just give me the body of an immortal and let me pretend to be awesome. If that doesn't work, you can just give me a sherry non. What the host said all belongs to genetics. As long as the host studies genetics to a certain extent, it can be done easily. Genetics? Can you research the body of an immortal? Certainly. You didn't lie to me. The system does not have the ability to lie. Okay, tell me how to operate it. Orokimaru quickly assumed the role of Orokimaru. Because in his previous life, he had nothing to miss. In his previous life, he was an ordinary college student with a kind nature and integrity. Although he did not have a father, he there is also a mother who depends on each other. There are no highlights in his daily life. He just likes to chase girls, play games, read novels, and anime and so on. He can be said to be ordinary and couldn't be more ordinary. But fate seems to have opened a huge hole for him. What a joke. One night, when he went out to buy daily necessities, he was hit by someone, and he fainted on the spot. When he woke up again, he found himself lying on the big hotel bed, and next to him there was also lying a girl with nothing on and her body covered in blood. The girl had become a corpse, and in his own hand, he held a bloody dagger. It was obvious that he had been framed for committing murder. This the situation seemed to have been carefully planned by someone. Before he could react, the police rushed in and took control of him. All kinds of evidence pointed to his strong will to kill. So, he was sentenced as he deserved 15 years. His mother did not believe that her son would kill someone, so she ran around trying to avenge her son. As a result, she died in a car accident one night. The driver and the insurance company paid a large sum of money, which was left to him after he was released from prison. But what's the use? After knowing this news, he was filled with hatred and wanted to kill everyone, but in the end he was helpless because he was in prison. 
he swore that if there was an afterlife, he would rather be that heinous villain. He would rather kill everyone than be a good person again. Being framed made him understand the importance of power and status. In prison, the conflict with the prisoners made him understand the importance of strength. God now he couldn't even stand it, so he traveled to the world of Naruto and became Orochimaru. There is nothing more beautiful than this. The only regret is that this scientific madman system. The system has prepared a gift package for newbies for the host. Do you want to enable it? Big gift package for newbies? Really tacky, open it. Congratulations to the host for getting invisible flies asterisk 6. Congratulations to the host for getting the invisible fly matching contact lens asterisk 1. Congratulations to the host for obtaining the primary gene enhancement solution. There are three things, which are stored directly in the system warehouse, and they are all things that can be used directly. What's the use of these? Orakimura frowned. No matter in his previous life or this life, he has never been exposed to these high technologies. In his previous life, he was a student who had not graduated from college. But now, although he is Orokimaru, the scientific madman in the Naruto world. But now Orokimaru is only six years old and has not yet been exposed to these things. Please check it yourself. The system said it simply. Orokimaru nodded, without any nonsense, and quickly checked. The invisible fly is just a gadget used for detection. This kind of thing is like the bug of the Abarame clan. Used for reconnaissance and detection. The only difference is that this fly is invisible. When used with contact lenses, it is more invisible than the bugs of the Abarame clan. And the detection radius is also good, about 5 kilometers. Primary gene enhancement solution? Can you strengthen your physique a little? Orokimaru raised his lips haha, in other words, this thing can increase the amount of chakra of ninjas. Judging from the current situation of the host, this is indeed the case. Orokimaru nodded to express his understanding. Because he knew that in this world, the source of ninja's power is chakra. An energy produced by the perfect fusion of life energy and spiritual energy. Let's not talk about spiritual energy for now. Let's talk about it first life energy. Life energy generally refers to each person's physique. The stronger the physique, the greater the storage capacity of chakra, and the faster the recovery rate of chakra, which can be a big advantage in fighting. Just like this world the Senju and Uzumaki clan. Because of the strong physiques of the members of these families, any child has more chakra than an ordinary ninja. In a fight, they can use their ultimate moves at will. Who can withstand the ordinary ninja? So, seeing the instructions for using this primary gene-enhancing fluid, Orokimaru quickly understood its function, which also made him somewhat interested in this system. After all, in this world, ordinary ninjas who want to increase the amount of chakra have no choice but to become apart from the Jin Hiraki, the only thing that can be done is to transplant the cells of the first generation Hokage. But this system can be accomplished with only one test tube of the gifted primary gene enhancement fluid, which is quite miraculous. After a short period of research, Orokimaru finally figured it out. Probably. Well, I understand. In addition to the novice gift pack being given as a gift, I need to research future technological products myself, right? Yes, host. I don't know why but I still think it's more convenient for you to give me the immortal body directly. After all, scientific research is too labor-intensive, and it's powerful enough to be used better than the external forces you mentioned. The system was down a bit, and it took a while for it to react. Science can also make the host stronger than all ninjas, so the host please believe in this system. Well, I have already made a profit by being able to live my life again. Orokimaru murmured yes. Let's take a look at my properties panel first. Host, Orokimaru. Mastered technology, none. Unlockable technology, primary gene enhancement fluid production program. The next stage can be unlocked, gene extraction. The extremely simple system interface allows Orokimaru to quickly understand. 
systematic research divided into two major categories. Genes and Weapons Needless to say, genes are naturally related to everyone's body, such as cells, blood, genetics, etc. Weapons are some offensive modern weapons. For example, they are the same as the original ones, Mecha Naruto, Pain's small rockets and heat-seeking missiles and so on. Currently, you can only see these, and there are many more that have not been unlocked. After the first scientific research project is completed, the second project can be automatically unlocked. But now, based on Orakimura's thinking, the system actively helped Orakimura choose to develop genetic research projects first. As long as three genetic experiments are completed, weapon experiments can be unlocked. In addition, the system also has a mall. It is full of some auxiliary technology products, such as invisible flies, genetic analyzers, mineral detectors, smart mining machines, etc. For these things, you need to complete experiments in exchange for technology points, and use technology points to exchange. For example, complete primary gene enhancement through liquid experiments, you can get 5000 technology points. And a smart mining machine only has 1000 technology points. Haha, <laughs> others traveled to the world of Naruto and awakened various bloodline powers, but I was doing scientific research here. Orikimaru laughed at himself unlock the primary gene enhancement liquid production program. Ding, the primary gene enhancement liquid production program has been successfully unlocked. Congratulations to the host for obtaining the primary gene enhancement fluid production process. Congratulations to the host for obtaining the right to use the raw materials of primary gene enhancement liquid. Congratulations to the host for obtaining the main experimental equipment of primary gene enhancement fluid. Note, completing a successful scientific research project can automatically unlock the next scientific research project, gene extraction. Gene extraction, the genes of any species can be extracted through scientific means. Suddenly, there are countless experimental methods in the big snake's mind. The system warehouse also has some major experimental equipment, such as microscopes, DNA extraction equipment, DNA quality control equipment, etc. There is also a button to receive free raw materials next to the warehouse. Orikimaru was not in a hurry to receive it, but he could see, there are some plants and herbs on them. Some plants and herbs Orikimaru has heard of, but some he has never heard of. The attribute panel has also changed. Technology Mastered, Primary Gene Enhancement Solution Unlockable Technology, None Yet The next stage can be unlocked, Gene Extraction Technique Seeing so many things, Orikimaru quickly began to research. According to the system, every time he unlocks a scientific research skill, he can get a corresponding set of raw materials and experimental equipment for free. There is only one set of equipment and raw materials, so I have to use the limited raw materials to develop a primary genetic enhancement solution that meets the test tube data standards. Just pour theory into your head and then let yourself practice it. Haha, <laughs> interesting. Class is on, class is on. While Orikimaru was talking to the system, a male ninja with bandages on his legs and a Chuyunin vest walked into the classroom and started today's lecture. The teacher's name is Izawa, and he is the homeroom teacher of Orikimaru's class. Students, please open our textbooks. Today, we will talk about the application of transformation. Listening to the teacher's voice, Orikimaru came back to his senses and then remembered that he was now in the world of Naruto, not some science fiction world. Almost confused the world. Orikimaru calmed down, put aside the system matters, and began to listen to the teacher's lecture. But after listening to it for about 10 minutes, he had no intention of listening anymore. Don't get me wrong, it's not like he can't listen. It's because he seems to have already mastered everything the teacher said, and he still remembers it clearly. For example, the application of the three-body technique. Another example, the basic rules of ninja. There are many things that the teacher didn't talk about, but he knows it too. Everything seems to be innate. 
It seems that he has completely inherited Orochimura's abilities. Orochimura secretly thought in his heart. After absorbing the memory, he knew that the ninja school only learned some of the most basic knowledge, such as the extraction of chakra, and some theoretical courses on ninja combat. The only practical ability taught was the three-body technique. And shuriken throwing techniques. Under normal circumstances, except for some family disciples, it is difficult for civilian ninjas to learn any decent ninjutsu. However, although Orokimura's parents died not long ago, their strength during their lifetime was considered good, giving Orokimura Maru left some inheritance. So he doesn't have to worry about learning some ordinary ninjutsu. It's just because he is still too young now and his chakra is not enough to perform many ninjutsu. You know, the original Suzuki can perform high fireballs at the age of 12. Kakashi, who is also a genius, was surprised. He is only six years old now. The amount of chakra is average. Of course, now that I have inherited Orokimura's ability, my talent should be no worse than that of future geniuses like Kakashi and Uchiha Itake. Even if he is only six years old, he is definitely stronger than most genin. The only difference is that he has just gained the ability and has not had the chance to practice it yet. The function of the transformation technique is to transform the body into other people or objects to paralyze the enemy, causing the enemy to be careless and expose weaknesses. I have talked about this issue many times, and it doesn't make any sense to talk about it too much. So now, we directly ask a classmate to give you a demonstration of the transformation technique. Chinin teacher Izawa on the podium, after saying this, his eyes began to scan among these little kids. There are currently only more than 30 people in this class, and they are only 6 years old. Very few can use transformation techniques. So. Of course, he set his sights on Orokimaru. Orokimaru-san, you will be the one to set an example for everyone, okay? Hearing the teacher calling him, Orokimaru was stunned for a moment, and then nodded slightly. He stood up directly in his seat and circulated chakra according to the way he remembered. Bang! After a puff of white smoke, he turned into Izawa's appearance. So powerful, he deserves to be Orokimaru. Yes, it's so strong. Isn't this too realistic? Orokimaru-kun. Listening to the discussions of these little brats, Orokimaru breathed a sigh of relief. Sure enough, he has completely inherited Orokimaru's power. He was able to achieve such an effect after using it for the first time. Izawa was also satisfied. Nodding, indicating that Orokimaru can sit down. Tisk, what's so great about it, I can also do the transformation technique. Jiraiya whispered to the side. I don't know why, when he was a child, he seemed to have a grudge against Orokimaru, and they would quarrel with each other at the slightest opportunity. Just like Naruto and Suzuki in the original work. But now, he has confirmed that he the powerful Orokimaru doesn't want to pay attention to him at all. Oh, no. Even the previous Orokimaru would not pay attention to him, let alone now. You know, the current Orokimaru is actually an adult, why? Maybe he is arguing with a little brat? Orokimaru has a lot of thoughts in his mind at this time. Although he has awakened a scientific madman system, he knows very well that in this world, his own strength is the most important. Even if he is engaged in scientific research, the ultimate goal is to improve his own strength. Therefore, he should put scientific research aside first. He will not consider scientific research until he is fully familiar with Orokimaru's abilities. You know, Orokimaru in the original work, even if even without a system, he was number one in his grade, and finally became one of the three ninjas. Although his combat power in the later stages was not very good, his ability to survive was absolutely amazing. As long as he can follow Orokimaru's path, it will be enough for him to survive until the end of time. It's the end. Hey, three ninjas? Orokimaru suddenly thought of something and glanced at every seat in the classroom Tsunade, one of the three ninjas, is not in this classroom? Did you remember it wrong? After searching through his memory, Orokimaru quickly understood the whole story. 
Tsunade is the granddaughter of the first Hokage and has never been to a ninja school at all, because like Kanoamaru in the original work, she hired a private teacher. Now Jiraiya has never met Tsunade. Forget it, think about yourself first. Orikimaru murmured according to my memory, the ninja school will have its graduation exam in a week. With my current situation, the things in the school are no longer useful to me. So, can you first see if this invisible fly works? The system is the key to the rise of time travelers. Orikimaru, who is also a time traveler, understands this very well. Therefore, it is completely necessary to study the capabilities of this system. Orikimaru reached under the desk, flipped his wrist, and six mechanical flies the same size as ordinary flies appeared out of thin air in his palm. When the teacher wasn't paying attention, he put on the matching contact lenses. Activate stealth mode. As soon as Orikimaru's thoughts reached this point, the six flies gradually disappeared from his sight. Orikimaru could feel that the flies were still in his hand, but he couldn't see them at all. Sure enough, it is high-tech, can it actually achieve true invisibility? The invisibility effect is better than invisibility. When the six flies flew out of the classroom according to Orikimaru's instructions, six perspectives appeared on Orikimaru's retina. This feeling, it's like sharing the vision of the samsara eye. Sharing the vision of the reincarnation eye is the original technique of pain. Six corpses, six pairs of samsara eyes. The perspectives of each pair of eyes are connected and can be used to help dodge attacks. Now, can I do this just by relying on the gadgets given by the system? Feeling the magic of high technology, Orikimaru became more interested in the system. Although this is the world of Naruto, Chakra is the most important, but technology, maybe it is really feasible? This kind of fly is definitely no worse than the insect detection ability of the Abarame clan, and its viewing angle can be connected to your own contact lenses and appear on your own retina. In the battlefield, for reconnaissance, it is absolutely useful to use explosions. And this is a gadget given by the system. If you study it yourself. Orikimaru's golden pupils shrank slightly. Haha, <laughs> although I didn't become Uchiha or Senju, I became Orikimaru, which seems pretty good. Orikimaru curled his lips and began to carefully study the perspective of this fly. Six invisible flies, centered on the ninja school, spread in all directions. Various buildings in Kanaha village appeared in Orikimaru's sight. Teaching buildings, private houses, hospitals, intelligence department, armed forces department, hokage building, etc. He also saw the hustle and bustle on the streets of Kanaha village, with the Uchiha clan, Hinata clan, and Nara clan clan above. The most important thing is that the six flies are invisible, and the kinetic energy is a black tech battery that uses ambient light to charge, not chakra. Therefore, no one in the entire Kanaha village can discover it. You know, most of the perception abilities in this world are to perceive chakra. A product like this kind of technology cannot be sensed by ordinary perceptive ninjas at all. The only drawback is that the six-line operation is a bit difficult for one person to understand. As we all know, no matter what world you are in, scientific research requires a lot of money. The original Orikimaru is a sonin and a disciple of the third Hokage. In addition, I have colluded with Danzo, a high-level leader in Kanaha, so there is no shortage of research funds and equipment. But now, not only am I too young, but I also have nothing but scientific research materials. There is no interpersonal relationship, and the money is pitiful. Although some key experimental equipment and materials are provided by the system for free, there are still many that you need to buy yourself. Such as beakers, test tubes, alcohol lamps, etc. So, you want to do scientific research? I have to say, there is a long way to go. But Orikimura didn't panic, he still had a lot of time anyway. As time goes by, school is over soon. Orikimura took back his scout fly, ignored the others, and returned to his residence. His residence is relatively remote, but the house is not small. At least it's much bigger than Naruto's in the original. After rummaging through boxes and cabinets, I collected 5,000 tails. 
he is so poor, and after the graduation exam is over in one week, he will no longer receive village subsidies. 5,000 tails, nothing can be done. Get some money first. Well, no, let's use the primary gene enhancement liquid first. With a thought, Orakimaru pulled out the glass bottle that looked like a test tube. Inside the bottle was a light green liquid. These things are all real objects and are stored in the system warehouse. This system warehouse is also a bit strange and can only store some dead objects. Moreover, it exists in the form of a grid, and the same kind of items can also be superimposed. For example, six invisible flies only occupy one grid, but the matching glasses also occupy one grid. Functionally, although it is not as good as the eyes that come with the original Uchiha Obito the alien space can be as powerful as a living person, but it should be stronger than the space scrolls used by ordinary ninjas to carry things. At least, it feels more convenient than the space scrolls. Looking at the light green liquid in front of him, Orokimaru hesitated. Then drink it all in one gulp. The technology tree of this world is a bit crooked. Although the technology is very backward, there are a lot of sealed foods, such as bread in bags, milk in boxes, etc. There are obviously no cars or mobile phones, but there are computers, natural gas, and refrigerators. Which processing plant manufactures boxed milk? Are computers and refrigerators also produced by an electrical appliance factory? There are too many doubts about various signs. But Orokimura doesn't care so much at this time. Now, no matter which world he is in, he has no relatives. The only thing he can rely on, besides himself, is this system. Therefore, he had nothing to hesitate about drinking this bottle of gene-enhancing fluid. The potion has a faint sweet taste in your mouth, but other than that, there is no unbearable taste. After drinking the potion, I didn't feel anything special. Could this thing be a fake? It shouldn't be. As soon as he finished speaking, a strange feeling spread from his stomach throughout Orokimura's body. There was no pain in his memory, but instead it felt warm and indescribably comfortable. It was a bit hot. Orokimura's white forehead began to sweat. The skin is also secreting grey-black impurities at a speed visible to the naked eye. Washing the essence and marrow? This is a word that suddenly came to Orokimaru's mind. After about ten minutes, the heat disappeared and the black impurities were no longer secreted. Orokimaru's whole body was covered with sticky black objects, but he felt indescribably comfortable inside his body. He decisively went to the bathroom and took a bath, and he felt even more refreshed. According to the method in his memory, he sat cross-legged and extracted the kara and then felt the amount of chakra that can be stored in his body. Well, it is at least 50% more. And the brain is much clearer. It seems that the physical energy and mental energy have been significantly improved. Chakra is 50 more what is the concept of percent? You must know that although Orokimura's own chakra amount is not much, it is definitely a lot. Among civilian ninjas without blood, his chakra amount should be considered above average. Not as good as Jiraiya and someone like Rakage, but much higher than Kakashi. Now there is 50% more, which can be said to be far beyond his peers. At the current age, ordinary sea level ninjutsu, using 3 or 4 will basically not have any impact. Speaking of chakra amount, I have to mention it. In the ninja world, although the amount of chakra of a ninja can increase with age, but it is more related to each person. It's related to the individual's own physique. For some people, no matter how old you are, but your physique is not good, no matter how much chakra you have, you won't get much. Moreover, when you get old, your chakra volume will go downhill. Just like the original work Kakashi. He's grown up, and he's still a jonin. His chakra volume is not as good as that of Naruto who just graduated from the ninja school. The third Hokage was a ninja hero when he was young. When he gets old, he can only have two shadow clones. So, it makes sense that the physique determines the amount of chakra. The topic is a bit far-fetched. The camera returned to the original point. Orokimaru, 
who had been baptized by the strengthening liquid, came to the mirror at home and looked at the man with fair skin and flowing long hair in the mirror. Shoda. A strange feeling came to his heart. He smiled slightly, and the person in the mirror also smiled slightly. After a while, he took a deep breath. Although he looks handsome, his golden vertical pupils like a python do look a bit penetrating, he he, Orakimaru. In the evening, Orakimaru ate two pieces of bread and prepared to go to the training ground to practice ninjutsu. After all, I had just inherited the memory, and apart from the previous transformation technique, I had never really tried to use any other ninjutsu. Now Orakimaru, his parents just died. And he also changed from a normal little kid to a cold little shot. He has a somewhat withdrawn personality. Although there is not as much fanatical pursuit of science as in the original work, I already have some weird ideas in my heart. For example, why do people die? Where do people go after they die? Normally even an adult would not think about these questions. But he has thought about it many times after losing his parents. Boom, boom, boom. There was a sudden knock on the door, which made Orakimaru, who was about to go out, frown slightly. Orakimaru opened the door, and there was a girl with a ponytail standing at the door. The girl had brown hair, a pretty face, and was wearing a white short-sleeved top. Green shorts? When Orakimaru opened the door, he immediately showed an innocent smile. Hi, Orakimaru. Tsunade. Orakimaru looked at the girl in front of him up and down, and quickly determined the identity of the other party. Jiraiya has not met Tsunade yet but he has already met Tsunade. There is no other reason, just because he is from this class the first place. Not only is he extremely talented, but he also studies more seriously than ordinary students. His ninja phantasm, actual combat and theoretical data have surpassed the Uchiha clan, which has many geniuses at the same level. And as a member of the Uchiha clan, the archenemy, the princess of the Senju clan, Tsunade naturally paid attention to Orakimaru. After all, they are all of the same age and equally talented. By chance, she learned of her existence from Hiruz and Sarutobi. I deliberately found an opportunity to get close to myself. The purpose was to compete with myself. I have to say, this reason is very fucked up. How? It seems like you don't welcome me very much, Tsunade said with a playful smile. In the current Senju clan, although the first Hokage is dead, the parents of the second Hokage and Tsunade are still there. And Tsunade's younger brother, the boy named Naoki, isn't even born yet. Therefore, Tsunade is not in any pessimistic mood now. She is just a lively and cheerful little loli who likes gambling and is a little violent. Orakimaru said calmly it's just an accident. Come in and sit down. After saying that, Orakimaru ignored her and turned back to his living room to play with his ninja tools. Tsune didn't care about Orakimaru's plainness, and walked in with her hands behind her back and her little feet raised. But just halfway, she stopped and sniffed her nose. Hey, Orakimaru, why does your living room smell so bad? Don't you always love to be clean? A stray cat got in just now. Orakimaru lied naturally then stood up and walked to the side to open the window for ventilation. He knew that the stink that Tsunade was talking about should be the smell of impurities removed after he used the genetic enhancement fluid. But he would definitely not say such a thing. Hearing Orakimaru's words, Tsunade looked confused and didn't think much about it I see, forget it, let's not talk about this, let's go to the training ground. Go to the training ground? What to do? Of course it's practical training. Those other guys are no match for me, otherwise why would I come to you? Tsunade said of course. As a princess of the Senju clan, she is qualified to say this. Because in Kanaha village now, it is difficult to find an opponent like Orakimaru among children of the same age. After all, how can ordinary ninjas is she highly talented among the Senju clan? What? Jiraiya? This guy doesn't even recognize Tsunade now. Uchiha Fugaku? He's only one year old now. Hinata Hizashi? They're all still liquid. However, 
facing Tsunade's battle Orokimaru was not interested in the full challenge let's do it another day, I have something to do today. Something's wrong? Tsunade was stunned what can be more important than improving your strength? No comment. Orokimaru packed up his ninja tools, took them with him, and went out directly when you leave, remember to close the door for me. Thanks. As soon as he finished speaking, Orokimaru had already walked away, leaving only Tsunade in a daze. What's going on with this guy? Hey, wait. Orokimaru ignored Tsunade, not that he was pretending to be cold. But because he is a time traveler. As a time traveler, he has the consciousness of a time traveler. In his eyes, both Jiraiya and Tsunade are just six-year-old brats. Although their strength is much stronger than the adults in their own world. But a brat is a brat. As an adult with a 21-year-old soul, he has no interest in sparring with these little brats. Although this would make him seem incompatible with this world, Orokimaru had become somewhat withdrawn after the sacrifice of his parents. Therefore, if he does this, it will not arouse people's suspicion. Um. Orokimaru's eyes suddenly flashed and he quickly took two steps to the side. Several pebbles passed by where he was just now. Looking at the three brats blocking his way, Orokimaru couldn't help but frown. Damn it, did you miss this? A kid wearing a black shirt with a red and white ping-pong ball carved on the back said unwillingly. Two children of the same size behind him were also staring at Orokimaru with malicious intent. Is he Orokimaru? Hey. The response is quite fast. Yes, I didn't expect that this guy looked so weak, but his reaction was not slow. So weak? Indeed, Orokimaru has looked a little thin since he was a child, and his slightly pale skin. The whole person showed a sick feeling. Orokimaru glanced at it, not caring at all about the other party's ridicule. Because he knew, no matter which world you are in, when facing someone who is mocking you, the best way is not to defend yourself. Instead, use your own strength to make the other person shut up their stinky mouth. It's just that. Uchiha said. Orokimaru recognized the identity of the person. The first one to speak was his classmate, a kid from the Uchiha clan. In the class, relying on his status as a big Uchiha clan, he often bullied the civilian ninjas. In his memory, three days ago, he was bullied and he beat him as a matter of course. As for the two people behind him? Orokimaru didn't know him, but judging from their clothes, they must be brats from the Uchiha clan. Moreover, it should be bigger than me. Orokimaru, you'd better be at ease today, otherwise. Just three against one, right? Orokimaru calmly interrupted the other party's words. Being hit by Orokimaru's words, Uchiha's anger surged you bastard, I can't bear to see you being more arrogant than me. Do you really think that because you are number one in grade, I am afraid of you? Two big brothers, help me beat him up. Hehe, <laughs> I'm sorry, kid. Although we don't want to bully the small, but who asked you to bully my cousin? The two older children rolled up their sleeves and wanted to step forward and beat Orokimaru. In their minds, Orokimaru was the child of a civilian ninja, and they would just beat him without any psychological burden at all. But just as they were about to step forward, a lowly's voice suddenly came over. Stop it, you Uchiha clan, do you think there are too many people to bully those who don't have enough? As soon as someone arrived, the little Lolita with a ponytail ran over from behind, panting. Oh, who do I think she is? She is the little princess of the Thousand Hands clan. Uchihachi was stunned for a moment, then smiled faintly what? Do you want to stand up for Orokimaru? Although Uchiha called him princess, his words were not polite at all. Orokimaru knew that the Uchiha clan and the Senjo clan had a long history of grievances, so it was normal for the Uchiha clan to note Tsunade. As we all know, Kanaha village was founded by the Uchiha and Senjo families. But in fact, the two races have irreconcilable conflicts. The Uchiha clan has declined because of Uchiha Madara's departure. Later, the first Hokage Senjo Hashirama died, and the second Hokage Senjo Tobirama came to power, 
and even suppressed the Uchiha clan forcefully. So the Uchiha clan has always been dissatisfied with the Senjo Hokage lineage. But dissatisfaction is dissatisfaction. At this time, the second generation Hokage is still there, and the Uchiha clan can only swallow their anger. If you are just a child, you are not so particular. Therefore, it is normal for Uchiha Shu to not be so polite. Tisk, you alone are not worthy of my action. Hearing what Uchiha said, Tsunade retorted casually I just can't stand how many of you bully others. What's wrong with the many bullying the few? It's not you I'm bullying, get out of my way. Uchiha said dissatisfied. Although he is a child and does not know the grudges of the higher UPS, he also knows very well that Tsunade's status is not low and he cannot be beaten easily. I won't let you. Hit me if you dare. Tsunade said without caring. You. Uchiha couldn't defeat Tsunade, so he had to turn his attention to Orokimaru. Orokimaru, as a man, do you only hide behind a woman? That's right, it's so embarrassing. He is the first in his grade, but he turns out to be a coward. The two brats behind him sneered, mocking Orokimaru unscrupulously, not caring at all that there was a Senjo princess standing in front of him. Hateful. Tsunade was a little unhappy and wanted to speak for Orokimaru, but Orokimaru suddenly patted her shoulder and pushed her aside. Although I don't have the habit of bullying the younger ones, the naughty child's words, I don't mind stretching my muscles. Orokimaru has hatred from his previous life in his heart, but he is not so mad as to bully children. But these brats in front of him are obviously not ordinary brats. They are brats from the Uchiha clan in the ninja world, and they are arrogant and domineering bears. Children Faced with such naughty children, Orokimaru doesn't mind educating them for their parents. As for whether they can beat them or not, Orokimaru is not too worried. Because the three boys opposite don't have forward protectors yet. Even Genin they are not ninjas, even if their surname is Uchiha, their strength is limited. After hearing Orokimaru's words, Tsunade was stunned. She was about to say something more, but she saw Orokimaru put two fingers in front of him. Bang! A puff of white smoke in a flash, a figure exactly like Orokimaru appeared next to him. This is, doppelganger! Tsunade was stunned. Apparently she didn't understand why Orokimaru used a clone at this time. Doppelganger? Haha! <laughs> Is this the strength of being number one in grade? It's too unrealistic. Just, just, don't you know that clones are used to lure enemies? What's the use of using the clone without finding cover? Since you are looking for death, then we will help you, watch out. Said Uchiha, without talking nonsense, he clenched his fist and hit Orokimaru's clone directly. His idea was very simple. His two eldest brothers were enough to deal with Orokimaru's body, and he only needed to deal with this clone. So he didn't hesitate to attack. On the other hand, Orokimaru felt very strange. This fist is not as fast as expected. The clone turned slightly to the side, dodged the opponent's punch, and then slowly raised his hand. Snapped. A slap to the back of the opponent's head. Due to the inertia of his fist. Uchiha was slapped by Orokimaru again. He couldn't control his body and fell to the ground. Hateful, um, this is. After he fell down, he wanted to curse, but before he could curse, he froze. The other two Uchiha brats who were about to step forward were also stunned. This clone, is it an entity? How come? Tsunade was also surprised this is not a clone, is it a shadow clone? Orokimaru, can actually use shadow clones? How is it possible? Isn't he only six years old? He is six years old, is there enough chakra? A series of questions appeared in several people's minds at the same time. Orokimaru didn't know that he had a shadow clone, which surprised everyone to such an extent. Because in his memory, Itaki Uchiha could accurately throw shurikens when he was less than four years old and he could learn to use shadow clones when he was less than six years old. This myself is nothing at all. Therefore, after he solved the Uchiha set, he directly looked at the other two people. 
He didn't say anything, just looked at him. The meaning is obvious, if you want to take action, hurry up. Orikimura's golden vertical pupils look a little cold. The other two brats looked at Orikimura's body, then at Orikimura's shadow clone, and cold sweat broke out on their foreheads. At this time, it's not up to them to go up, and it's up to them not to go up. Yes, they are scared. Really scared. Because as the Uchiha family, they know that clones are a basic course in the ninja school. The clones are phantoms and can only lure enemies. No real harm. Every ninja knows this technique, no surprise there. But the shadow clone. Shadow clones are different from ordinary clones. This jutsu is separated into an entity, which can move and fight like the caster. It has consciousness independent of the caster's body and a certain ability to resist strikes. It can be applied to various advanced ninjutsu. Not to mention genin, even many chinin may not be able to master it. Coupled with Orikimura's already not weak strength. Hateful, how so? Uchihachi was not that bad at first, but because he didn't think about it just now, he was caught off guard by Orikimaru. Seeing the expressions of several people, Orikimaru immediately understood the mentality of these brats. He directly released the shadow clone, ignored a few people, turned around and walked towards the training ground. Facing the kid who had given up, Orikimaru had no interest at all. Why does Orikimaru influence the clone? The answer is simple, because Orikimaru used to have ninja parents. Shadow clones are no better than multiple shadow clones. Multiple shadow clone is a forbidden technique, and there are many people who know it, but very few people can use it. But the shadow clone is different. There are many people in this art guild. Even a ninja in a trap may be able to master this art. So it makes sense that Orikimaru's parents would. Orikimaru meeting is even more natural. It's just that the principle of shadow clone is to divide the chakra of the main body equally. The clone belongs to the chakra body and the reaction is not as good as the main body. Therefore, Orikimaru generally does not use shadow clone. Even if it can be used reluctantly, it won't last too long. Yes, in terms of chakra control, he is not as good as the original Uchiha Itaki who has Uchiha blood. After all, the spiritual energy contained in the Uchiha bloodline, even if the Sharinan is not opened, is much higher than that of ordinary ninjas. In terms of controlling chakra, he has a natural advantage over ordinary ninjas. But now, Orikimaru has used primary gene enhancement fluid, which has increased his physical and mental energy to a higher level. Except for the Sharinan, in terms of other talents, he is no worse than Uchiha Itake. Therefore, there is nothing wrong with him using his shadow clone to fight on a whim. Because he had fantasized about this technique more than once in his previous life, and now that he was finally able to use it, he naturally had to try it first. When Orikimaru walked away, Tsunade finally reacted, ignored the Uchiha and the others, and hurriedly chased after Orikimaru in the direction he left. Kanaha Village, a certain tall building. Three ninjas wearing armor stood on the roof, looking at the scene on the street through the light, dumbfounded. It's actually a shadow clone? Bravo! Sarutobi, this Orikimaru is indeed a good seedling. Haha, <laughs> it's really surprising. Being able to use a shadow clone at the age of six is unprecedented. Among the students of this class, apart from Tsunade, Orikimaru is probably the one who stands out, right? Haha, <laughs> that's not necessarily the case. Sarutobi Hiruzen said with a smile. Yes, he is Sarutobi Hiruzen. The future third generation Hokage. But now he is only 24 years old and a good young man in Kanaha. And next to him, Uchiha Kagami and Shimura Danzo are both equally young. Hearing the conversation between the two, Danzo did not speak, but looked at the direction Orikimaru left, not knowing what he was thinking. It is Kanaha's 16th year now. The first ninja world war is not over yet, but it has developed from a large-scale war to the current local battle. While Kanaha is dealing with the war, it is selecting good seedlings for training in the ninja school. Orikimaru is one of them. 
Today they they had just finished their mission and were about to return to the Hokage's office, but they accidentally saw Orikimaru going out. After a closer look, there were a few Uchiha people ambushing ahead. So, they decided to stay and take a look. Originally, they saw Uchiha Uchiha Kagamaya was a little embarrassed when a group of children formed a group to bully others. But Shimura Danzo felt that it was normal for children to fight, and there was no need to take action when there was no danger, so he stopped the two of them. Then, what happened the scene just now? Orikimaru is still too weak now and doesn't notice anyone peeking at him. Only Tsunade was following behind him. Like, a follower. Hey, why are you following me? Ah. Tsunade was stunned for a moment, then said indifferently I, how could I follow you? I'm going to the training ground, so you should follow me. With that said, Tsunade shamelessly put her hands behind her back and walked in front of Orikimaru. This is the way to the training ground. She believes that Orikimaru is going there, but she just doesn't know what Orikimaru is doing there. Look. Seeing Tsunade's appearance, Orikimaru was speechless. Sure enough, you are still too young to even lie. After saying that, Orikimaru ignored her and walked straight towards the training ground. 436, 437, 438. Haha. <laughs> It's ridiculous for a kid who doesn't know ninjutsu and genjutsu to dream of becoming a ninja. That's it, that's it. Give up, kid, you're not fit to be a ninja at all. Okay, okay, each of you can say a few words less, after all, they are working so hard. What's the use of just trying hard? You're a loser, no matter how hard you try, you're still a loser, ha ha ha. Orikimaru came to the training ground. Before he walked in, he heard the noise of several children inside. Orikimaru was a little curious. As the two of them moved, one wearing a green leather tights and a red scarf a figure appeared in the sight of the two of them. The child was about the same age as him, with a strange hairstyle, and was doing sit ups with sweat on his head. And next to him, there were several children about his age surrounding him. Matt, Kai? No, it should be Matt Dai. Now is a time of war. Children in the ninja village enter school at the age of five, and can take the graduation exam at the age of six. And Matt Dai doesn't look any older than himself. That is to say, is he just five years old and just entering school? How, do you know him? Tsunade saw Orikimaru's expression and was a little curious. No, this is my first time too. Orikimaru told a lie that was not a lie. Matt Dai, met Kai's father, a 10,000-year-old genin who spent 20 years creating the most powerful Taijutsu, the Eight Gate Dungeon. Orikimaru has a profound memory and will never forget it. But again, there is no need for him to tell Tsunade this. This man is only five years old now, has just started school, and is one grade below him. Orikimaru has no interest in exchanging Taijutsu experience with a little kid. He cares about himself I came to the shooting range and started throwing shurikens according to the method I remembered. Although it was the first time to throw, the feel seemed to be innate. Ta ta ta. So all three shurikens hit the target. None. Duh. Also hit the red heart. Orikimaru curled up his lips. He looks much better than his peers. This is good. Orikimaru took down the shuriken and kunao from the target and started practicing repeatedly. Training is boring, but Orikimaru enjoys it. Because this is his first real contact with these things. As expected of being number one in the grade. Tsunade sat on the grass nearby and said somewhat depressedly by the way, since you are coming to the training ground, why don't you come to the training ground with me for a real life training session? Actual combat? Comparing physical skills? I am no match for you in physical skills. Orikimaru said honestly while continuing to throw kunao. In terms of pure taijutsu, even in the later stages, Tsunade is one of the best. One punch smashed Suzanu in Uchiha Madara's fourth form. The whole thing in the ninja world, how many people can do this? Even if she is only six years old now, her physical skills are not what Orikimaru can compete with now. 
so Orakimura has no interest in fighting her. After hearing Orakimura's words, Tsunade was even more depressed Won't you fight if it's not my opponent? I remember you were not like this before. People will change. Tsunade was speechless Well, since you are really not interested, I won't bother you anymore. Anyway, after the graduation exam is over in a week, we will be divided into groups, and then we can fight as we want. Will they be divided together? Are you so sure? Of course, the second Hokage is my great uncle. Tsunade said arrogantly. The current Hokage is his great uncle Senjo Tobirama. Isn't it trivial for her to want to go through the back door? If Orakimaru is a loser, it may be a little difficult, but Orakimaru is a peerless genius. Tsunade wants to put the two of them together, which is just a matter of words. Okay, you practice slowly, I won't disturb you anymore, bye. Tsunade smiled playfully, waved her hand towards Orakimaru, turned and left, muttering in her mouth at the same time. He is indeed the man that Tsunade likes. He is obviously a genius, but he still works so hard. Tsunade's voice was not deliberately controlled. It seemed that she was telling Orakimaru on purpose. Just hearing Tsunade's muttering, Orakimaru couldn't help but narrowed his eyes. Can this woman tease a man at the age of six? Sure enough, children in this world are not generally precocious. Orakimaru murmured to himself. To be honest, Orakimaru was not surprised at all that Tsunade was so direct. Because according to his memory, Tsunade said in front of him more than once that she admired him very much. Of course, this kind of appreciation, is the appreciation of genius, not the kind of love between men and women. After all, everyone is just a kid now, they don't understand anything at all, and the contact time is short. But it just so happens that Orakimura's soul is an adult people don't care about these little things. Anyway, for him now, familiarizing himself with skills and improving his strength are the most important things. He knows very well that there is no way to avenge his previous life for the time being, now that God has allowed him to be reborn, if I still live the same useless life as in my previous life, I will be sorry for my identity as Orakimaru. Therefore, if he wants to rise, he will be stronger than the Orakimaru in the original work. His idea is also very simple, get familiar with it as soon as possible with my own abilities, after I graduate, I will find a way to get some money to study this primary gene enhancement solution. As long as I have researched the first thing, the subsequent research will be much easier. By then, I will use my own strength and scientific research to make great progress all the way. In the end, he became a strong man and could do whatever he wanted. It was best to trample everyone under his feet. Thinking of this, Orakimaru pulled out the kunau again and worked harder to become familiar with his abilities. According to memory, his hands were fast seal. Wind release. Big breakthrough. The distance and cutting ability are not enough, and a lot of chakra is wasted. Come again. Wind release. Big breakthrough. Be better this time, continue. Orakimaru, who is immersed in training, has no trace at all. Note that Tsunade did not go far. Instead, she was behind a pillar in the distance, looking at Orakimaru in a daze. Time, with Orakimaru's training, soon came to midnight. In order to balance work and rest, Orakimaru decided to go home and sleep. Early the next morning, he came to a grocery store and walked in directly. Five chakra test strips. Five hundred tails. Thanks. The fat boss said with a smile. Orakimaru handed over the banknotes in his hand, not stingy with his money at all. Five hundred tails is one hundred tails, which does feel a bit expensive. But in this world, with everything related to ninjas is very expensive, and Orakimaru knows it very well. He has learned that an ordinary shuriken costs 300 tails, and a kunau costs 1,000 tails. Therefore, a chakra test strip of 100 tails is still within the acceptable range. Speaking of ninja tools, Orakimaru couldn't help but think of the ninja named Tenten in the original work. Now that he thinks about it, she is really a wealthy person. 
All kinds of messy ninja tools are thrown away casually, and he doesn't know where a genin comes from. How much money? As for Orokimaru, why did he buy chakra test strips? Maybe anyone who has watched Naruto knows that this thing can test the attributes of ninja chakra. Chakra is divided into seven attributes, fire, wind, thunder, water, and earth. Yin and Yang Lita Euro trademark s not talk about yin and yang for now, because the chakra test paper cannot be measured, but there is no problem in testing the other five attributes. Inject a certain amount of chakra into the test paper, the test paper will have different reactions. Fire, the paper will fire. Wind, the paper will split from the middle. Thunder, the paper will wrinkle. Water, the paper will get wet. Earth, the paper will shatter. In Orokimaru's memory, in addition to the basic 3K technique, he also has a shadow clone and a wind. Escape. Big breakthrough. Therefore, he doesn't know if he has chakra of other attributes besides wind attribute chakra at this time. Therefore, if he wants to become stronger, he must first test his own attributes. Then determine the direction of training. Of course, he knows that in this world, the five element ninjutsu is actually useless. Because most of the ninjutsu are medium and long range attacks, and they also require seals. The enemy is also a ninja and when you release the ninjutsu during the process of doing ninjutsu, the enemy can easily release other ninjutsu to block your ninjutsu. But ninjutsu is like a nuclear bomb. Normally, no one uses it, but when the enemy uses it, you have to yes. Otherwise you will be at a disadvantage in the battle. Therefore, before learning those snake ninjutsu, it is completely necessary to learn the five elements ninjutsu. Looking for a random position, Orokimaru started to try according to the method in memory stand up. While Orokimaru was testing his chakra properties, the Hokage office of Kanaha village. The second generation Hokage Senjo Tobirama, with silver hair and red eyes and a godlike robe, is handling military affairs. In front of him, Sarutobi Hiruzen and Shimura Danzo stood respectfully in black combat uniforms. You have done a good job in this sniper mission and the war on the border has been effectively alleviated. The second Hokage said with a solemn expression next, the war should enter a short truce period. You don't have to go on missions, just stay in the village and serve as mentor Jounin. The school will hold a graduation exam in a few days. Yes. Yes. Sarutobi Hiruzen and Shimura Danzo replied respectfully. Facing the powerful second Hokage, even Danzo, the old Yinbai, can only be respectful. The reason is not only because of the second Hokage it's their teacher. And because the second Hokage has very iron-blooded methods. The second Hokage nodded and was about to say something more when a little lowly suddenly opened the door and walked in. Uncle, uncle. Alas, the teacher is here too? Seeing the person coming, the second Hokage frowned slightly Tsunade. What are you doing here? Hehe, he, I came here to tell you something. What's up? After the graduation exam, I want Orokimaru to be with me. Orokimaru. Hearing Tsunade's words, the second Hokage's serious face showed a trace of doubt who is it. The current Orokimaru has just revealed his talent, and Senjo Tobirama, as a Hokage, has no habit of paying attention to civilian ninjas. So the current second generation Hokage has not noticed Orokimaru yet. He is the genius of this class. Genius? The second Hokage was stunned for a moment, and then said calmly anyone who can make you think he is a genius must have something special about him. As Tsunade's great uncle, he watched Tsunade grow up. So he knew that although Tsunade herself was full of shortcomings, she was arrogant at heart. People who can be recognized by her are naturally extraordinary. Hearing this, Tsunade said arrogantly of course, Let's not mention that all his basic courses have perfect scores. Just because of the shadow clone yesterday, he can be included in the ranks of top geniuses, right? Shadow clone? The second generation Hokage finally showed a hint of surprise. Can you already use shadow clones before you graduate? We also saw this yesterday. Orokimaru is indeed a child with extraordinary talents.
Sarutobi Hiruzen explained on the side. Originally, even if Sune didn't come today, he planned to train Orokimaru, but now it's just a little earlier. So, there is nothing bad to say. Oh! Hearing what Sarutobi Hiruzen said, the second Hokage couldn't help but be surprised from what you say, you have noticed him a long time ago. Indeed so. Look, it seems that this child is really not simple. Then uncle, did you agree? There is no reason to say no. Yay, long live. Orokimura doesn't know anything about what happened in the Hokage's office, and maybe he wouldn't care even if he knew. Because he knew that even without his intervention, he would eventually become Sarutobi Hiruzen's disciple. This is a matter of certainty, and there will be no changes at all. Looking at the chakra test paper in his hand, Orokimura fell into deep thought. After the test just now, he discovered that the current self does not seem to have all the attributes in his memory. Wind, earth, water. These are the three that came out of the test. From this point of view, maybe the reason why Orokimaru in the later period has all attributes is because he transformed his body? Orokimaru had no clue, so he stopped thinking. Because he is not used to thinking about problems that he cannot figure out. Taking a deep breath, Orokimaru looked towards the sky. If you want to quickly improve your strength, besides family blood, the best way is to become a Jinchuriki. The Jinchuriki doesn't want to think about it for the time being. With his current strength, it's useless to think about it. As for family bloodline? Maybe we can work in this direction first? In other words, you should conduct the experiment immediately? Well, the more I think about it, the more right I am. Hey, that's not right either. Because you don't seem to have enough money yet? According to his estimate, buying those scattered small experimental equipment would cost at least hundreds of thousands tails. Hundreds of thousands tails, for him now, is simply an astronomical figure. You know, a genin can usually only accept D-level missions. The bounty for a D-level mission is only 5,000 to 10,000 tails. This money should be divided among several people in a team. If one person has 2 to 3,000 tails, apart from some daily expenses, how many months will it take to save enough? Orokimaru's eyes narrowed slightly. He had never thought that in this world where strength was respected, he would one day be troubled by money. He had previously thought about whether to sell the strengthening liquid rewarded by the system. You might be able to earn a lot of money this way. You know, this thing can increase your chakra by 50%. But after thinking about it, he still felt that selling this thing was too risky. Not to mention that he was not sure whether this thing was useful at first. Even if he was sure it was useful, how could he explain where it came from? You know, the ninjas of Kanaha are not stupid. When the time comes, they will torture themselves to extract confessions, etc. How will they deal with it? He doesn't want to change from a researcher to a person being studied. Forget it, let's deal with the graduation exam first, and take this time to familiarize yourself with the experimental process. Thinking of this, Orokimura decisively returned to his residence and began to use the knowledge in his mind to simulate experiments. What? Go to school? These days, if you don't have to learn from your shadow clone, you are embarrassed to say that you are a genius? Throughout the entire Naruto series, only Uchiha Itaki has learned this trick from his shadow clones. Even Kakashi, who is also a genius, goes to school in his own body. You know, when Kakashi took the graduation exam at the age of five, he was able to use forbidden techniques to create multiple clones. The reason why he still uses his true body is simply because his chakra control is not good enough to maintain the clone for a whole day. And Uchiha Itaka did it, and now Orokimaru has also done it. Time flies like an arrow, and the sun and the moon fly by. In the blink of an eye, seven days passed. During these seven days, Orokimaru consolidated his abilities while absorbing the information provided by the system. Now he has everything ready and all he needs is the east wind. During these seven days, he also discovered something special. That is, 
the detection fly given by the system can record the process of other ninjas performing spells through electronic eyes. The recorded process can also be played back in slow motion, which can help you learn these common ninjutsu. This feeling is like having six more sharinans. So during these seven days, the recorded images, coupled with his talent and his parents' inheritance, allowed him to learn a lot of ninjutsu. He mastered a series of chaotic ninjutsu such as water waves, earth clones, earth flow walls, wind blades, etc. in just seven days. Although he knows that these ordinary ninjutsu are really useless, it is better than nothing. On the morning of the seventh day, graduation exam. Exam content, Sansakanjutsu and Shuriken throwing. The so-called three-body art is the art of substitution, transformation, and clone. Shuriken throwing, of course, goes without saying. On this day, Orakimaru came in his true form. Okay, today is the graduation exam. Now, the students whose names I have read please come to the podium. Chinan Aizawa held a list in his hand and said to the students. Hirata. Arrive. Kenta. Arrive. Kenichi. Arrive. When they heard the roll call, the students walked towards the podium one by one. Just because all the students in this class are only six years old, very few can graduate. Next, Jiraiya. When he heard his name being called, Jiraiya, who was sitting not far away, seemed to be on stimulants. Orakimaru, let's see your master Jiraiya graduate successfully, haha. Jiraiya came to the podium in a provocative manner, and decisively began to show off his proficient three-skin technique, which immediately caused the students in the audience to scream in surprise. Wow, Jiraiya is so strong. This guy is so hidden. Can you become proficient in the three-body technique after just one year in school? The talent is pretty good too. Aizawa couldn't help but nodded, because Jiraiya was also one of the few people who could pass the exam. Yes, Jiraiya graduated successfully. Although Jiraiya was a little nervous like Naruto when he was a child, he was not a loser. The reason why Naruto in the original novel is a loser is not because he is not talented. It's because he has the Kyuubai sealed in his body. The presence of Kyuubai disrupted his chakra use. But Jiraiya is different. There is no Kyuubai in his body, and his talent is pretty good. Although compared to geniuses like Orokimaru and Tsunade, Jiraiya is indeed a weakling, but he is much better than other classmates at the same time. It belongs to the type that is more than enough than the top and less than the bottom. Otherwise, he would not have graduated at the age of six, and at the same time he would have been spotted by Hiruz and Sarutobi. What? For the sake of balance, Kanaha's tradition is that the first person in the class will be matched with the last person? This is nonsense. This statement may be reasonable in other teams, but this group of sunin? Even during times of war, anyone who graduates from a ninja school at the age of six is considered an absolute genius, right? The fact that Jiraiya was able to graduate with Orokimaru at the age of six speaks volumes. The topic is a bit far-fetched. On the podium, Jiraiya finished performing his ninjutsu and proudly raised his chin towards Orokimaru. The provocation is self-evident. Just when it's Orokimaru's turn. Bang 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 bang. When four shadow clones appeared in the classroom, the whole classroom became quiet, and Jiraiya was confused. This guy. Even the teacher Izawa was stunned at this moment. A civilian ninja can use shadow clones at the age of six? Or four? How could this make him, a teacher in his twenties, feel so embarrassed? But fortunately, Orokimaru has shown talents that are different from ordinary people since he entered school, and now he can use the shadow clone. Although he was surprised, he was mentally able to accept it. Jiraiya, Orokimaru. You two go to the training ground and wait for Master Hiruzen. Aizawa gave the order, and Jiraiya, who came to his senses, looked confused. Teacher, don't you need to divide us into groups? The people graduating today, besides him and Orokimaru, there are also Uchihashu and a few others. It stands to reason that the teacher will assign a three-person team based on their respective situations. Need not. Why? 
You will know when you go there. Izawa is too lazy to say more. Because this is a rule from above, he doesn't know the specific reason, he only knows to execute the order. Good, all right. Jiraiya was a little confused, but when he saw Orokimaru had walked away, he didn't think much and quickly followed him. Feed Orokimaru, wait a minute. Training course. Orokimaru waited quietly, and at the same time he breathed a sigh of relief. Finally you can do tasks and earn money. Money is the root of all evil. Even in this world where strength is respected, money is a very important thing. Orokimaru, do you think that girl was looking at me just now? Hey hey, I'm asking you something. Didn't you hear? Hey, it's really boring. Well, I think she must be looking at me. I, Lord Jiraiya, am suave, handsome, and very popular among girls. It would be unreasonable for her not to look at me. Jiraiya kept chattering next to him. But Orokimura didn't want to pay attention to him at all. He finally understood that Jiraiya has been a talker since he was a child, and he is also an absolute pervert. Can you think of a what does it feel like for a six-year-old kid to walk on the street and stare at beautiful women all the time? One moment, this girl's legs are white, and that girl's butt is up. She doesn't look like a six-year-old child at all. To this, Orokimura didn't understand very much. You said you are only six years old now, and your body has not yet developed. What can you do after seeing it? Can you still react? While thinking, Sarutobi Harizan appeared between the two with a smile. Human sight. Oh, you two classmates have been waiting for a long time. My name is Harizan Sarutobi. From today on, I will serve as your guiding Jounin. Well, let me introduce myself first. Jiraiya looked very excited and started introducing himself. My name is Jiraiya and my dream is. After Jiraiya finished his introduction, Orokimaru casually gave his name. Sarutobi Hiruzen looked at Orokimaru and nodded with satisfaction, and was about to say something when Tsunade's Lolita tone suddenly rang. Sarutobi Sensei. The moment he saw Tsunade appearing in the distance, little Jiraiya's eyes suddenly lit up. This is Tsunade who will form a team of three with you. You should know, Orokimaru. Um. Orokimaru nodded slightly. When Tsunade appeared, Orokimaru was not surprised at all, because whether it was memory or reality, Tsunade would definitely be in the same team as him. But Jiraiya now didn't know. At this time, he saw when he arrived at Tsunade, he was like a cat that smelled something fishy and had already rushed in front of Tsunade. Oh, my name is Jiraiya. It's our first time meeting you. Please take good care of me. If you have any love letters, please give them to me later. Um? Why should I give you something like this? Tsunade raised her eyebrows and clenched her fists at the same time. When Jiraiya wasn't paying attention, she suddenly exerted force don't make such a joke with me. Bang! Before Jiraiya could react, he flew out. This was Tsunade's gift to Jiraiya. Orokimaru was also a little surprised by Tsunade's strength, although he had long known about Tsunade's strange power. It was born with it, but it was still a bit shocking to see it with my own eyes. You know, Tsunade is only six years old now. She actually knocked away Jiraiya, who was taller than her, with one punch. I have to say, it is very powerful. Jiraiya came back with a swollen face and Orokimaru glanced at the two of them. Sure enough, I am an adult and can't play with them at all. Compared to such a lively scene, he seems to prefer to be alone. I don't know if my original personality is like this, or if it is influenced by Orokimaru's original personality. Damn it, girl, what kind of monster are you? Jiraiya said complaining while rubbing his swollen face. Cut. Okay, okay. Today is the first day for everyone to get to know each other, and we will be together for a long time in the future, so don't hurt the friendship. Sarutobi Hiruzen quickly settled the matter. We meet for the first time today. I need to get an idea of your strength. After everyone really got to know each other, 
Saratobi Harrison took out two bells. So, there are two bells here. Your task is to snatch these two bells. Seeing these two bells, and hearing Saratobi Harrison's explanation, Orakimura's eyes froze slightly. Are the Sunan also trying to grab the bell at this time? Since there are two bells, that means. Is there anyone who has nothing to eat? Orakimaru said calmly. Orakimaru, your understanding is good. Anyone who fails to grab the bell will not only have no food to eat, but will also be tied to this wooden stake. Is it really a test for grabbing the bell? Well, with Hiruzen Saratobi as my opponent, I can test my practice these past few days. Next to me, when I heard Hiruzen Saratobi's words, Jiraiya suddenly became so funny. He became excited again and quickly looked at Tsunade next to him. Hey, let me tell you. If I grab the bell, will you date me? If you don't get it, stay away from me from now on. Tsunade agreed casually and without hesitation. Because in her mind, Jiraiya had no chance at all. Okay, that's it. In the face of women, Jiraiya is even more confident. His confidence is not like Obito and Naruto, who only show it on the surface, but actually have low self-esteem in their hearts. He is really confident in his own strength. Sarutobi Hiruzen looked at Jiraiya's high-spirited appearance and couldn't help but smile then let's do it, I will turn around and count dozens, you guys are ready to fight. Now, the clock starts. As he said that, Sarutobi Hiruzen hung the two bells on his waist and turned around. Whoosh! The moment he turned around, the three of them disappeared in an instant. Orakimaru also found one the place was hidden, and at the same time, thoughts were racing in his heart. He knew that from the moment he crossed over, everything would no longer be as he remembered it. Because no one knew what kind of butterfly effect his crossing would produce. In other words, you must learn to judge the situation, and at the same time you must have your own opinions and cannot be led by memory. Orakimura no longer remembers how Naruto's seventh spot took the bell in the original book, let alone it's time for the three ninjas to seize the bell. But he knew that Hiruzen Sarutobi was very strong. And it's a bit ridiculously strong. If you want to seize the bell, you have to outsmart it. Thinking of this, he flipped his wrist and a fly was thrown out. Soon, Sarutobi's vision appeared on his retina. Damn it, Jiraiya is such an idiot. In the middle of the training ground, Jiraiya had been hung up by Hiruzen Sarutobi's superficial trap. Only then did Orakimura realize how unreliable Jiraiya was when he was a child. Although I graduated successfully, my nerves are really high. Especially the theoretical knowledge, it seems that I can't pass the test. Forget it, this guy is hopeless. Looking at Tsunade lying in the grass in the distance, Orakimaru pondered for a moment, and then gestured towards him. Tsunade was stunned for a moment, then nodded slightly. Although the two have not cooperated yet, Orakimaru's gestures are universal and very simple. This means that he will come first later and let Tsunade wait for the opportunity. Whizzing. The two shurikens went straight to Sarutobi in the training ground. Orakimaru's original plan was to discuss tactics with the other two and then engage in a 3v1 team battle. Facing the powerful Sarutobi Hiruzen like this, we might have a chance. But Jiraiya was caught, so only two people could get in. The shuriken was thrown by Orakimaru, but Sarutobi's strength was beyond compare. Even if the shuriken was thrown from behind him, he still dodged it easily. An attack of this level is not possible. Sarutobi teased with a smile. The words just fell. Water escape. Water chaos. Oh? Have you learned water escape on your own? How amazing! The current Sarutobi Hiruzen is as agile as a monkey. While admiring, he used a few somersaults to dodge Orakimaru's water release ninjutsu from the side. Just when he was about to say something more, he suddenly became alert. Suddenly. Whoosh. A wind blade passed by, and Sarutobi was cut in half in an instant. Seeing this scene, Jiraiya, who was hanging upside down on the tree, was stunned. Sarutobi-sensei, killed? Cheat, 
is that a lie? Tsunade, who was ready to take action at any time, was also stunned in place. She just saw Orokimura create a shadow clone, and then made a large circle from the woods to the other side, preparing to attack Sarutobi front and back. The clone used his hands Riken and water release attract attention, but the main body takes the opportunity to use wind release with super cutting power. Although there is no big problem in tactics. As a princess of the Senjo clan, she knows how strong Sarutobi is. How could he be cut to death by Orokimaru's wind blade? Except for Orokimaru, Tsunade and Jiraiya were also surprised. But soon, they breathed a sigh of relief. Because Sarutobi Hiruzen, who was cut into two pieces in the field, gradually lost his original appearance, and then turned into two lumps of dirt at a speed visible to the naked eye. Seeing this scene, Orokimaru couldn't help but frowned. Sure enough, the Earth clone. He knew that Sarutobi would not be killed by ninjutsu of his level. But I didn't realize when he used the clone. You know, reality is different from the battle and memory. In my memory, when fighting ninjas, sometimes I clearly saw that the person I captured was a human being, but it turned out to be a clone. This situation generally does not occur in reality. Once it appears, there is definitely something wrong. Is there a link missing? Is it the Earth clone he used when he appeared on the scene? Or is it used when you are waiting for someone to hide your body? Amazing, he was able to defeat my clone. The figure of Sarutobi Hiruzen strolled out of the woods nearby. Looking at the two Orokimaru, one on the left and one on the right, he couldn't help but show approval Orokimaru, you are really surprising. The clones can actually release ninjutsu. You know. The principle of shadow clones is to equally divide the chakra of the main body. For an average six-year-old child, the amount of chakra in the main body and the ability to release ninjutsu are quite impressive, let alone a clone. At this time, Orokimaru's clone can not only release ninjutsu, but also does it not disappear after releasing ninjutsu? Doesn't this mean that his chakra level has reached an exaggerated level? This is nothing, and... Orokimaru narrowed his eyes and said, it's not over yet. As soon as he finished speaking, he rushed forward quickly, using the power of wind attribute chakra at the same time. Although the wind attribute chakra cannot directly increase the movement speed of the ninja, it can reduce the weight of the caster through a special release method. This is equivalent to increasing the movement speed in disguise. This is Orokimaru's inherent ability, so it's not too unusual. It's just that the speed of this increase is limited, and Orokimaru is only six years old at this time, so he can't form an effective lethality against Sarutobi Hiruzen at all. No matter in terms of strength or speed. Fortunately, the transformation of the primary genetic enhancement solution has greatly improved Orokimaru's mental strength. Therefore, after using this move and fighting Sarutobi in Teijutsu, his reaction could barely keep up with Sarutobi's fists and kicks. Punch, dodge, kick. Every move looks extremely skillful. Good, so strong. Jiraiya, who was hanging upside down on the tree at this time, was so surprised that he couldn't speak when he saw the two competing in Teijutsu. As the saying goes, there is no harm without comparison. Seeing Orokimaru's heroic appearance in using Teijutsu, he couldn't help but wonder. Seeing the embarrassment of being hung up. Something called jealousy gradually engraved in Jiraiya's mind. His physical skills seemed to be much better than before. On the other side, Tsunade, who was lying in the grass, was also a little surprised. She had known Orokimaru for a long time, so she could naturally feel the changes in Orokimaru. The strength is not weak, and the speed is not slow either. Sarutobi praised again but you can't do it on your own. Nanny. The words just fell. Boom. Suddenly there was a loud noise, which instantly resounded through the sky. Sarutobi quickly fended off Orokimaru and dodged two somersaults to avoid the explosion, before he could make his next move. It's now. Whoosh. A figure shot out from the grass on his side. Ding ding. When he reacted, the bell made two crisp sounds. Hehe, <laughs> Sarutobi-sensei. 
Tsunade held the bell and stood in front of him with a smile. The battle is over. Oh! Ha ha ha! Sarutobi Hiruzen was stunned for a moment, then laughed it's really a good cooperation. Although he was obviously letting off steam just now. But the fact that two six-year-old kids can cooperate like this is enough to prove their strength. Especially Orokimaru. Thinking of this, he looked at Orokimaru next to him but, Orokimaru, who did you learn these abilities from? Yeah yeah. Orokimaru, how did you come up with the idea of attaching the detonating talisman to the clone? Tsunade also admired it. Just now Orokimaru and Sarutobi were competing in Taijutsu. Although Orokimaru had improved a lot, he still clearly had the upper hand. But at the critical moment of the battle, his shadow clone rushed forward. Tsunade thought that if her clone rushed forward, she would only be killed. Unexpectedly, after rushing forward, during the fight with Sarutobi, she would actually self-destruct? And the angle of this self-destruction was just enough to force Sarutobi Hiruzen not far away from her. Far away. Then the scene just happened. I have to say that calculation of strength is indispensable. After hearing the two people's questions, Orokimaru said perfunctorily I was just imagining it. Although he copied Uchiha Itaka's clone explosion, Uchiha Itaka's father is only one year old now. So Orokimaru is not lying. Are you just imagining it? Haha, <laughs> you are really talented. Sarutobi Hiruzen laughed, as if he had received a unique genius I have just graduated, and I can use the detonating talisman flexibly. Not bad, not bad. Orokimaru is very talented and Sarutobi is very happy. But Jiraiya's fate is not so good. He was tied to a tree stump pitifully and was ridiculed by Tsunade. However, it was the first day that Jiraiya and Tsunade met, and they didn't really like Tsunade, so the two of them faced each other and even started scolding each other. One calls the other person flat-chested, airport, and washboard. The other one called the other person a big pervert. Sarutobi Hiruzen was at the side trying to smooth things over Okay, okay, Tsunade, you and Orokimaru go back first. I'll talk to Jiraiya. Well, teacher, when can we start taking tasks? Orokimaru suddenly said. Only by doing tasks can you make money, and only by having money can you do experiments. Orokimaru's thinking is very clear. There's no rush for this, I think it's almost time for today, so, let's talk tomorrow. All right. Orokimaru nodded, turned, and left. There is not much difference between one day earlier and one day later. After hearing Orokimaru's words, Tsunade who was walking in front stopped curiously what? From what you say, you really want to do the mission. Um. Why? Money. Are you short of money? Yes. Watching Tsunade leave, Orokimaru's words still echoed in Orokimaru's mind. I thought it was a lot, isn't it just a mere 150,000 tails? Just wait, I'll go back and get it for you. Sure enough, a wealthy family is a wealthy family. 150,000 tails, for many genin, is a huge sum of money. Even a Chuyunin needs to do many dangerous missions to survive. But Tsune didn't even say a word, are you going to give this money to yourself? Although he has repeatedly emphasized that it is a loan, the fact that a little kid can take out so much money is enough to prove the financial strength of Senju. To be honest, borrowing money is really something Orokimaru can't do never thought about it. Because he has no relatives or friends in this world. What's more, Tsunade herself is just a little lowly, how can he have the nerve to speak? But when the topic between the two of them came to money, Tsunade took the initiative of course he would not refuse the offer of money. After all, it would save him nearly two months of time. And Tsunade would also be taken care of by him. In other words, this is a win-win situation, and no one will wet a loss. Half an hour later, Tsunade lived up to her trust and threw a stack of banknotes in front of Orokimaru. One thousand tails of banknotes, a total of 150. Well, 150,000. At this moment, Orokimaru felt like he was being kept as a Shoda. 
The most important thing is that he had to say thank you. Thanks. You're welcome, anyway, with your strength, it won't take long to make this little money. Orakimura nodded, noncommittal. Although Jenin makes money very slowly, as long as you upgrade to Jenin, you will make money much faster. With your current talent, it is only a matter of time before you want to upgrade to Jenin. Farewell to Tsunade, Orakimura began to buy experimental equipment. His home is not too small, and he lives alone now. He had cleaned it out three days ago and used it as a laboratory, so he was not afraid that he would have no place to put these things after buying them. Originally, an ordinary laboratory requires a lot of large instruments and equipment, and the area of an ordinary private house is definitely not enough. However, the first primary strengthening liquid is relatively simple. The main thing is that the raw materials are hard to find, and large equipment does not require much. So, his home can barely accommodate it. It is now the afternoon, people are coming and going on the street. Orakimura slowly walks into a shop. It is full of experimental supplies. Does Kanaha Village sell large-scale experiments? Where is the equipment? The answer is no. Because in Kanaha, only the top management of Kanaha need to do experiments. And they all do research in secret. Merchants sell large experimental equipment here. There is no market at all, so naturally they don't sell it but some commonly used consumable equipment is sold. This store is one of them, and the only one. I have to say that money is a good thing in any world. If there is no money to support Tsunade, I think it will take at least two months to implement this experiment. Putting these things back in big and small bags, it's already evening. But Orakimaru was completely sleepless at this time. He had rehearsed the experimental steps countless times in his mind and he couldn't wait. All kinds of experimental equipment were placed, and he started his first experiment in his life according to the steps in his mind, the production of primary gene enhancement liquid. Originally, he thought that his theoretical knowledge should have passed the test, and the experiment should be very simple. Unfortunately, only after the real contact did he realize how naive his previous thoughts were. First, heat this herb slightly. Um. Why is it confused? Come again. This is, the fire is getting smaller again. It should be no problem this time. Too much material? Scientific research requires countless experiments and countless failures before the value of scientific research results can be reflected. The same is true for Orakimaru now. However, he himself is not a fuel-efficient lamp. In his perception, what is he? I almost knew the theory, so there was no reason why I couldn't figure this out. So, the long-term scientific experiment began. Time passes day by day. Orakimaru also gradually became familiar with life in Kanaha village. On the second day of graduation, Hiruzen Sarutobi sent the forehead protector belonging to Kanaha to the three of them. The three of them officially became genin at the age of six. During the day, he followed Sarutobi Hiruzen on C-level and D-level missions. At the same time, he learned various combat skills from him. At night, he did experiments. In order to balance work and rest, he is also extremely strict with himself. You must go to bed at 12 p.m. and get up at 7 a.m. Now that he has become Orakimaru, he has no reason to be an otaku anymore. Hard work pays off. Half a year later, one night, ten o'clock. Looking at the light green liquid in the test tube in his hand, Orakimaru finally smiled happily. It should be a success. System, check if it is qualified. Ding, detection starts, testing completed. Primary gene enhancement solution, purity 92%, exceeding 90% testing standards. The system's final judgment the primary gene enhancement solution has been produced. The next technology can be unlocked. Gene extraction technology. Unlocked. Weather. Sure enough. Orakimaru let out a long breath unlock. The efficacy of the enhanced liquid is measured by the purity percentage. 
only when the purity reaches more than 90% can the full effect be exerted. Of course, Orakimura did not pursue 100%. Because as long as it reaches 90%, the effect will be the same. Ding, the gene extraction technique was successfully unlocked. Congratulations to the host for getting another series of experimental equipment. But this time, there weren't as many as the first time, and they were all gadgets. Orakai looked at it and saw that the next scientific research information is, gene fusion. Gene fusion, fusing two or more genes with each other to enhance a species or get a new species. Gene fusion? Two or more genes fused to each other. Seeing this, Orakimura's eyes narrowed slightly. This ability sounds really cool. But without obtaining the information, he couldn't evaluate the usefulness of this ability. I spent two hours briefly reading the information on this gene extraction technique. Well, this ability is also very interesting. It records the extraction methods of all genes. Orakimura couldn't help but nod at exchange, genetic detector. The exchange is successful and consumes 1000 technology points. Suddenly, there was a palm-sized gadget in Orakimura's warehouse. It looked like a small camera, but it was wireless. Orakimura glanced at the attribute panel, and there were some changes. Host, Orakimaru. Mastered technology, primary gene enhancement fluid. Data for this stage, gene extraction technique. Plant 0 100, biology 0 100. The next stage can be unlocked, gene fusion. Remaining technology points, 4000. Gene detector can detect any species genetic information. Do we need to obtain the genes of a hundred kinds of plants and a hundred kinds of organisms to complete this technology? Orakimaru murmured this is not difficult. A hundred kinds of living things? Snakes, insects, rats, ants, birds and animals, you can make up a hundred kinds at random. As for a hundred kinds of plants, not to mention, there are more than a hundred kinds of flowers and plants. Of course. It is too late today, he is not in the mood. Early the next morning, Orakimaru came to the training ground as scheduled. But in his mind, he still recalled the hardships of doing experiments in the past six months. There are many raw materials for this strengthening liquid, and they need to be decomposed or purified one by one. Or maybe it's fusion. Sometimes, even a slightly off proportion will fail. If you fail, you have to start all over again. Sometimes, a simple purification and fusion experiment takes more than 10 days. I have to say that this is a difficult task for a newbie in scientific research. But in this world, there are always more solutions than difficulties. In order not to waste raw materials, when practicing his purification and decomposition skills, he chose to use other plants or food instead. Then after you become proficient in experimental skills, you can start using raw materials. On the way, he also went to the Kanaha library and bought a lot of related books to read. It took half a year to finally complete the first simple experiment. Of course, this simplicity is only for old experts and professors. For a novice like him, it doesn't feel so good. Walking on the road, Orakimaru looked at the weeds on the roadside, and his heart moved. The genetic detector was taped to the inside of the arm and hidden in the sleeve robe. Take out a small test tube, pick up a random weed, put it in, and start testing. Ding, a mountain weed specimen has been detected. Because the specimen level is too low, no energy can be obtained from fusion. Sure enough, just picking up some weeds can complete the task. Ding. A plantain specimen has been detected. Because the specimen level is too low, the fusion cannot obtain any energy. Ding, check it out. Pick it up again, bite it again. Along the way, more than 10 kinds of plant genes were obtained. Of course, this is not the most important thing. What is important is that the latter sentence cannot obtain any energy after fusion, which seems a bit weird. System can these plants still integrate with themselves? Yes host. How to integrate? Please unlock the next technology. 
the next technology. Hearing this, Orakimaru looked at the words gene fusion I see. Gene extraction is the collection of animal and plant specimens, and then extracting genes from these animal and plant specimens through decomposition, heating, burning, etc. And gene fusion means fusing these extracted genes together? Thinking of this, Orakimaru suddenly had a flash of inspiration in his mind. Can the genes of animals and plants be fused? Should human genes also be able to fuse? So, the cells of the first Hokage. Orakimaru couldn't wait to get this information. Hi Orakimaru, morning. Hearing the sound, Orakimaru looked up. It turned out that he had arrived at the training ground unknowingly. Tsunade was greeting Orakimaru from a distance. He had known Tsunade for a long time, and had been assigned to a training ground. They have been together for half a year, and the two of them have become very familiar. Morning. Orakimaru nodded, which was considered a response. Alas, you are in a good mood when you drive today. Good. Tsunade smiled slightly and suddenly approached Orakimaru by the way, since the day of the graduation exam, you have been rushing back every time after the graduation exam. What is the important thing? I'll tell you this later, Orakimaru said calmly. Because these technologies are very powerful, and he is still too young now, he doesn't want to expose them yet. Orakimaru's indifferent expression made Tsunade stunned, and then his face turned slightly red. It seems that you are in a really good mood today. To be honest, Orakimaru is really good looking now, prettier than many women. With fair skin and flowing long hair, when he meets some girls of the same age when walking on the road, saying two words together will make them blush. Therefore, Tsunade now has a good impression of Orakimaru. In the original work, if Orakimaru hadn't been withdrawn and not interested in women, how could there have been anything like that kid Kato Dan? He and Tsunade must have cultivated a good relationship long ago. Can you give me a piece of your hair? Orakimaru suddenly said. Orakimaru's request was somewhat incomprehensible, and his answer was wrong. Why are you asking for your hair while we are chatting? Tsunade is a little confused, but this does not affect her shyness. Dry, why do you want someone else's hair? Tsunade said with a slight blush. Could it be that this guy wants to use this as a token of love? It has to be said that she already has a crush on Orakimaru, and the hair is the girl's personal belongings. So she has no choice but to think more. If it's inconvenient, forget it. You guy, you are so confident in asking others for things. Tsunade, who was a little shy at first, immediately became furious. At the same time, she reluctantly pulled off a piece of her hair here. If she hadn't known Orakimaru's character, she would have been met at Orakimaru. This guy is a straight man of steel. Orakimaru took the hair and his voice was still calm thank you. No, need not. When Orakimaru thanked him, Tsunade was stunned again. It was obvious that she was not used to Orakimaru being so polite today. Orakimaru ignored him and directly put Tsunade's hair on her long head. Inside the robe. Ding, a human hair specimen has been detected. The quality of the specimen is medium. A little life energy can be obtained by fusion. Can Tsunade's cell level only be average? Orakimaru murmured to himself only a little life energy. I thought I could get the body of an immortal. After doing experiments for so long, he also understands. If you want to obtain a complete gene, it is best to extract it from flesh and blood. The hair test is not particularly accurate. But this level will generally not change. That is are you saying that Tsunade's genes can really only be considered average? Orakimaru thought about it carefully, and it seems that this is right. In Kanaha village, the Senjo clan is indeed very strong, but there are only a few well-known ones. And when it comes to Tsunade in this generation, even her parents have no well-known achievements. Tsunade's bloodline is mediocre. Not to mention the awakened sage body, which has a huge amount of chakra. Without the yin seal, her chakra amount is not even as good as Jiraiya's. Such a civilian ninja. Therefore, there is nothing wrong with the system's test results. A little life energy? 
Orakimaru thought thoughtfully, and after a while he had made a decision. Save these genes that can obtain extra energy first, and wait for them to be unlocked after genetic fusion, choose some that suit you for fusion. Hey, hey, why are you two still here? A shout sounded from a distance. Listening to this voice, there was no doubt that it was Jiraiya's tease. They both turned their heads at the same time. Jiraiya, what's wrong? Sarutobi sensei is busy today and can't come. Let me inform you of the disbandment. What? I have to say that Orokimaru is lucky. From the identity that traveled through time with him. One of the future three ninjas, Orokimaru. You know, in the ninja village, ordinary civilian ninjas are easily bullied. But Orokimaru and Jiraiya didn't. The reason is that they have a teacher and this teacher is a disciple of the second Hokage. According to this relationship, he is the Hokage's disciple. Who dares to bully ordinary people? Even Uchihachi didn't dare to cause trouble again. Just as it happened, Orokimaru was enjoying his leisure time. After bidding farewell to the two of them, he began to collect a large number of specimens to complete his mission. Tsunade and Jiraiya didn't think much about Orokimaru's solo actions. Because Orokimaru has always been like this. Hey, Tsunade, let me show you something. After seeing Orokimaru leave, Jiraiya smiled mysteriously at Tsunade. Tsunade was confused thing? What? You've got a good idea. Jiraiya was full of confidence. He lightly scratched his finger with a kunao, and began to quickly form seals with his hands. The Art of Psychic Bang! He slapped his hand on the ground, and circles of black runes spread quickly, followed by a wave of white smoke rose instantly. After the white smoke, a small toad appeared in the field of vision of the two of them. This is... Hey, how's it going? Am I awesome? Jiraiya crossed his arms over his chest with a proud look on his face. Now, he already has some vague thoughts about Tsunade. So... Not long after he signed a contract with the Toad of M.T. Mayaboku, he couldn't wait to show off in front of Tsunade. Unfortunately, Tsunade, who originally thought this guy was indeed very powerful, saw Jiraiya's proud look and immediately gave him a roll of his eyes isn't it just a psychic technique? What's so great? I can too. What? You too? Jiraiya immediately lost his composure. This technique was taught to him by the third Hokage after snatching the bell half a year ago. The third Hokage told him that to use this technique, you need to sign a contract, and it also requires a lot of chakra. He the amount of chakra at that time was not enough. Therefore, in order to increase the amount of chakra, he had been practicing desperately for the past six months. It was not until recently that he accidentally used psychic skills to go to Mayaboka Mountain. But Tsunade. Certainly. Tsunade looked disdainful look at it. Same, blood, seals, white smoke. Bang. A little slug appeared next to the little toad. This, this is, Jiraiya was surprised. I am also speechless. I finally put on a good show, but I didn't expect others to do it too. How about it? Did I lie to you? Tsunade looked arrogant. At once, even if this is the case, then I am better than Orokimaru. You'd better save some money. Even you know the art of channeling, and Orokimaru must have known it a long time ago, but he is not as showy as you, so you don't know. This, this is impossible. How is it impossible? If you don't believe it, ask him. Just ask. Ding, congratulations to the host for obtaining the ant specimen. Ding. Congratulations to the host for getting. Does the same creature only count as one specimen? After listening to the system's explanation, Orokimaru had an idea in his mind. These specimens still need to be processed and the genes extracted to complete the task. The same creature can only be counted as one task. For example, humans. No matter how many individuals you collect cells are only counted as one task. Only animals, the same species, and different varieties can be superimposed. Of course, this does not affect Orokimaru's research. 
because for him, a hundred species are really not necessary too easy. Hey, that's... Looking at a cemetery in front of him, Orakimura seemed familiar. After a moment, he suddenly realized. It turns out that my parents in this world are buried here? No wonder it looks familiar. Thinking of this, he turned to the village, the flower shop of the Shanzhong clan, bought a bouquet of white chrysanthemums and placed it in front of his parents' grave. Although I am no longer the Orakimaru I used to be, it is still fate, so just think of it as my filial piety to you. As he said that, Orakimaru bowed deeply towards the tombstone. In any case, these are his parents in this world, and they also left a lot of inheritance for themselves. There is nothing wrong with paying homage. Orakimaru bowed and was about to leave. But at this moment, a white object caught his eye behind the tombstone. He was a little curious, so he took two quick steps to the back of the stone monument and picked up the white object. What's this? Snake's skin? Or white? Hey, Orakimaru. Looking at Jireyu running towards him, Orakimaru put away the snake skin what's wrong? I ask you. Psychic skills. After hearing Jireya's explanation, Orakimaru was stunned. That's right. The three ninjas all have their own psychic beasts. They had been busy doing experiments before, but they forgot about this. I originally thought that it was because my fate was not yet there. Well, now it seems that these two people have already had it, so why don't I? Tsunade said you knew it a long time ago, but I didn't believe it, so I came to ask. Jiraiya said unconvinced hey, hey, if you can use it, just use it and see. Won't? Orakimaru said bluntly. Won't? Really not. Jiraiya still doesn't believe it at this time. No need to lie to you. Haha, <laughs> let me just say, I, Jiraiya-sama, learned this technique with great difficulty, and you, Orakimaru, have never been seen using it before. When Orakimaru said no, Jiraiya immediately danced with joy. It's as if my heart suddenly feels balanced. Orakimaru still didn't want to pay attention to him, shook his head, turned and left. He has no interest in Jiraiya's cuteness at all. In the current situation, only learning and getting stronger can make him happy. Well? Why are you leaving? Don't leave, let's talk to you, Jiraiya-sama again. Boring. At night, lying on your own bed. Orakimaru looked at the white snake skin in his hand and fell into deep thought. Although he seemed careless during the day, Jiraiya's words still attracted his attention. Tsunade knows psychics. It must be related to her family. In addition, the psychic slug changes size according to the amount of chakra, so you can use it no matter how small the amount of chakra is. So it's normal for Tsunade to do it. As for Jiraiya, he was taught by Hiruz and Saratobi and used necromancy without signing a contract. As a result, he was accidentally teleported to MT Mayaboku. But what about yourself? Although there are many ninjutsu scrolls in my parents' inheritance, there are no psychic skills. Not to mention the psychic snake. Is it because, he is a time traveler, so the opportunity that originally belonged to Orakimaru is gone? Boom. A sudden muffled sound startled Orakimaru. What? Boom. Another sound. Orakimaru determined the location of the sound this time. Is it in the living room? He ran to the living room in a few steps. His golden pupils scanned the room warily. Boom. Another muffled sound. It was coming from under the floor. Coming out? It feels like someone is hitting the floor? Could it be, Orakimaru thought of a possibility. That is, your home may have a basement? It's normal for a ninja to dig a secret tunnel in his own home. It's just that Orakimaru was young in the past so he didn't know. Or could it be said that this basement was dug by his parents before Orakimaru was born? Orakimaru didn't have time to think too much, because he was eager to know, what is in this basement? My parents have been dead for almost a year, how come there are still living things? Finding traps or basement entrances is a compulsory course for ninjas. 
especially when it is determined that there is an entrance to the basement. The living room was filled with many experimental equipment, and Orokimura directly loaded the large equipment that was not in use for the time being into the system warehouse. Soon, in the far right corner of the living room, he discovered the thick wooden floor. The sound also came from here. Orokimura knocked it, and sure enough, it was hollow. He wasn't sure what was inside, so he was extremely cautious. He gently drew out a kunau and carefully placed his hand on the edge of the floor. Squeak! The floor is lifted. Suddenly, a huge flower python as thick as an adult's calf appeared in front of Orokimaru. The giant flower python raised its head and spit out the letter. The golden vertical pupils look eerie. Orokimaru instinctively wanted to retreat and defend but suddenly realized that the giant python didn't seem to have any intention of attacking him. Its golden vertical pupils stared straight ahead. After a moment, it opened its mouth and spit out a scroll on the ground. This happiness came so suddenly that Orokimaru was a little overwhelmed. Seeing this snake, Orokimaru's first thought was to retreat instead of attacking. Because in his subconscious mind, he thinks that he should be a snake player. If I kill snakes, how can I be friends with them? Fortunately, the result did not disappoint him. However, facing this sudden appearance of the flower python, Orokimura still did not dare to be careless. After looking at the scroll, he immediately had a plan. While wary of the flower python's attack, he reached for the scroll. The scroll is nothing special, it just records the origin of the snake. Was this raised by his own parents? Orokimaru narrowed his eyes as the spiritual mark engraved in the subconscious of this snake, so he won't attack me. Thinking of this, Orokimaru glanced at this flower python. The three ninjas all have psychic beasts, and this Orokimaru knows it very well. The only difference is that the toads in Mayaboka Mountain can all talk, and although there is only one slug, it can also talk. And the snakes in Ryakai Cave, except for the most important ones, can't speak. In other words, the current one is also a non-speaking type. Can't speak? So, the original Orokimaru is how do you control these snakes? Orokimaru was lost in thought. Do I need to sign a psychic contract first? It seems to make sense. But how to sign a contract? Do we have to find Ryakai Cave first? Bah! When Orokimaru was thinking, the flower python suddenly spat out the message at him. Do you want me to go down with you? Looking at the movements of the flower python, Orokimaru asked tentatively. Bah! The flower python seemed to nod it, then turned around and crawled towards the basement. Orokimaru just thought for a moment and followed. Because he believed, with his current strength, he should be able to cope with any emergencies. The basement is not big and the light is very dark. Orokimaru hesitated for a moment and went back outside to get a candle and light it. Soon, everything in the basement came into view. His eyes. A special scroll and a long iron box appeared in front of him. Room, living room. Orokimaru was sitting on the ground, with two things placed next to him. The flower python coiled behind him, spitting out the letter obediently. Yes. Clever. This python looks very docile. At least he was docile in front of Orokimaru. Orokimaru was also a little surprised at how friendly this snake was to him. But at this time, he had no time to think too much, because the two things in front of him were even more attractive. Looking at the two things in front of him, even he couldn't help but admire them. It turns out that his father also signed a contract with the snake clan in Longdi Cave. Was this snake channeled by him to protect these two things? In the basement, there is a snake hole leading to the outside of Kanaha village. It is used to catch food for this flower python. Therefore, this snake can live in it for a year. What a surprise! Orokimaru calmed down and looked at the iron box next to the scroll. The iron box was not locked only a simple seal. The seal could be unlocked by inputting chakra. Soon, the box opened. Inside was a handful of sword, a sword shining with silver light. 
Orakimura's pupils shrank sure enough, CAO's Hijian. In my memory, it was this sword that killed the fourth Kaze Cage Raza and the third Hokage Saratobi Hirazan. Although this thing is not a divine weapon, it is extremely sharp. And it can be long or short, weird and changeable. It can also be regarded as a murderer. A sharp weapon. There is a letter next to the Kozai sword. Orakimura slowly opened the letter, and countless words appeared in front of his eyes. Boy, if you read this letter, it means I'm dead. There is no doubt that this is what Orakimura's father left to him. The letter said that he got this sword by chance. Before going to the battlefield, he had a premonition that he would die in battle, so he put the sword in the basement for storage. The letter also explained how precious this sword is, and Orakimura should never use it in front of others until he is not strong enough. Because it was so valuable, Orakimaru in the original novel made this sword smaller and hid it in his belly. Orakimaru raised his lips. In his memory, every time Orakimaru used the Sachi sword, he would open his mouth, and then a snake would come out of his mouth. Then, the Sachi sword would come out of the snake's mouth. To be honest, it's a bit disgusting. Orakimaru estimates that the reason why the original Orakimaru is so disgusting is because he used his own body for experiments and disabled himself. As a result, he has snake characteristics all over his body. So the current Orakimaru, obviously not planning to take this path. Putting the Sachi sword aside, Orakimaru picked up the psychic contract and read it. The one in front was his father's name. After reading the instructions on the letter, well, it will put your name on the back, and then use your own blood to make a bloody hand seal. Orakimura nodded secretly and did it without much hesitation. After all, the psychic beast can also improve the ninja a lot. Fighting Power Although psychic beasts like snakes are disgusting, their fighting power is very strong. Didn't you see that Buntat and the slug were tortured together in the original novel? With Orakimura's operation, the blood contract was soon reached. In Orakimura's mind suddenly there was something else. Master, just give me the contract. The voice belongs to the flower python. Hearing this voice, Orakimaru was stunned after signing the contract, I can communicate with these snakes in my mind? Haha, <laughs> that's interesting. The flower python took the contract scroll and disappeared into Orakimaru's room into a puff of white smoke. Orakimaru looked at the snake skin in his hand and murmured to himself I felt the breath of the white snake skin, so I couldn't help but want to come out of the basement. It's really magical. Could it be that this snake skin belongs to the white snake immortal? White snake sage, one of the three holy places, the ruler of Ryakai cave. On the same level as slug and toad sage. The snake skin that allows ordinary snakes to detect breath, except for white snake sage. Orakimaru can't think of any other snakes. But, memory the white snake immortal in the middle is very big, far beyond what this white snake skin can match. Forget it, I don't want to think about it anymore, I can't go to Longdi Cave now anyway, and I can't think of a reason no matter how much I think about it. Orakimaru, who had no clue, stopped thinking. Because he knew that Ryaji Cave was a holy place and a place to learn celestial arts. He couldn't find it himself, and the snakes in Ryaji Cave couldn't form seals like the toads in M.T. Mayuki. Use reverse channeling to channel yourself. Therefore, if you want to figure out the reason, you can only find the location of Ryakai Cave in the future and ask clearly. After thinking about this, Orakimaru began to consider another question. Then that is, what to do with the CAOG sword? Although he is not good at using swords, this thing is a good weapon after all. He has already got it, so he can't give it to others for free, right? So, storage becomes a problem. Let him put it in his stomach like the original Orakimaru. He felt that it would affect the appearance, and this grass sword was not that important to him who knew the plot. He would not do this unless it was absolutely necessary. Sealing it into a scroll? That's one way but the scroll is also something external to the body. If the scroll falls, the CAOG sword will also fall. This is obviously not possible. Then, 
put it in the system warehouse? This is possible. However, this also has a disadvantage, that is, when taking things out of the system, the space principle is used. There is no white smoke from the space scroll. This feeling is more like the different space ninjutsu used by the original Uchiha Obito. There is nothing wrong with the different space ninjutsu itself. But at my current age, is it a bit exaggerated to use different space ninjutsu? Orokimaru lowered his head and pondered, and soon had the answer after a moment. No matter what, under normal circumstances, I can't use the CAO's hygiene, so it doesn't matter where I put it. Thinking of this, he waved his little hand, the space fluctuated, and CAO's hygiene disappeared in an instant. After obtaining the psychic technique, Orokimaru felt much better. Because he knows that all three holy places have magic. Immortal magic is the key to dealing with the Atsutsuki clan in the later stage. In the original novel, Orokimaru's body was crippled due to experiments, and the frequent body changes caused by his reincarnation caused a rejection reaction between his soul and his body, so he couldn't learn Senjutsu at all. You can only absorb Senjutsu Chakra from Kabuto Senen. But it's different now. For Orokimaru now, everything has not started yet, he has too much plasticity. At the same time, he also has too many ideas. Early the next morning, Orokimaru came to training as usual. Before I even got there, I heard Jiraiya's purring voice coming from the front. Now, I told you that Orokimaru doesn't know how to channel spirits. You still didn't believe me. Should you believe it now? I could have asked it myself yesterday, Orokimaru said it himself. How can it be? Even you, an idiot, can do it, how could Orokimaru not? White, idiot. Bastard, how dare you call me an idiot? You flat-chested woman like a washboard. Flat chest? Could you please say it again? The veins on Tsunade's forehead were exposed. She clenched her fists, endless anger was brewing. Jiraiya was not to be outdone it's the same again, with such a flat figure, there is no femininity at all. You bastard, you're looking for death. Bang! Tsunade punched out. Jiraiya was already prepared and dodged decisively to the side. Do you think I will be hit by you again? You idiot woman, Billy Billy. Jiraiya dodged while turning around and making faces at Tsunade. Tsunade seemed unable to outrun Jiraiya and kept chasing after him. Oh, Orokimaru. Looking at Orokimaru who suddenly appeared in front of her, Tsunade was stunned. Orokimaru? You're here just in time. Tell Tsunade, do you know how to do psychics? Jiraiya seemed to have seen the savior, walked up to Orokimaru and said loudly. Hearing Jiraiya's question, Tsunade stopped what she was doing and looked at Orokimaru with curiosity. Because she also I really want to know this question. Orokimaru said calmly yes. Ha ha ha, Tsunade, you heard it, Orokimaru didn't, well? Before Jiraiya could finish his words, he came back to his senses you said, you can. Damn it, you bastard, that's not what you said yesterday. Jiraiya was furious immediately because he felt like he was being tricked. Orokimaru ignored him I couldn't do it yesterday. But today I will. Varied, what? Jiraiya and Tsunade were both stunned at the same time. One night, you learned the psychic technique? What the hell? Orokimaru didn't bother to explain, and looked around where's the teacher? Oh, Sarutobi-sensei won't come today. He asked us to wait for you to come and go to Kanaha Hospital to help. Hospital? Orokimaru was stunned for a moment, then suddenly thought of something then let's go. After saying that, he went straight to Kanaha Hospital without waiting for the two of them. Because he suddenly thought that the hospital seemed to be the best place to get blood samples from ninjas? Hey, Orokimaru, wait. Damn it, you guy, don't you know what a team is? Kanaha Hospital. Sarutobi Hiruzen is also here to help at this time. Bed 11, another blood transfusion is needed. This wound is very deep and almost infected. Didn't you disinfect it when you were on the front line? There is no way, 
frontline medical conditions are limited. Seeing Orakimaru and the other three coming, he quickly stood up. Huh? You are here, come and help. You are not capable enough now, so just be responsible for bandaging. Lake Baiwa, there is bandaging work, just leave it to the three of them. Okay, all right. A woman wearing a white coat and a brown ponytail replied while cleaning the wounds of the wounded. Lake Baiwa, Saratobi Harrison's wife. She was only in her twenties at this time. Orakimura glanced at Kanaha There are very few doctors and nurses in the hospital, but there are many wounded people. Why are there so many wounded today? Looking at the bustling Kanaha hospital lobby, Orakimura was a little confused. He also came here once during the first phase of the experiment. But the wounded were definitely not one-fifth of the current number. After hearing Orakimura's words, Saratobi Harrison turned around and smiled heartily Haha! Orakimaru, you are quite attentive. It's okay to tell you. Because the fighting on the front line had eased, some of the more seriously injured soldiers were sent back to the village. That's it. Orakimaru nodded thoughtfully. So it was sent back from the front line? Is this war? Terrible. Jiraiya and Tsunade looked at these painful Kanaha ninjas with unbearable expressions. Orakimaru, however, had already been mentally prepared, helping while searching for his prey. Soon, the hospital's blood storage room appeared in his sight. Well, the hospital was so chaotic that no one would notice him. That night, Orakimaru returned to his home after a busy day in the hospital. There are more than a dozen small needles arranged in a row and there is some red liquid in the needles. There is no doubt that this is Orakimaru's blood sample taken from the hospital's blood storage room. Although he had a busy day, he did not rest immediately, but quickly started testing. Because now, after learning so much knowledge, he has begun to become deeply interested in these things. So, how could he take a break when he had access to so many good things? Ding! It has been detected that this sample contains water attribute energy, and the power of water can be obtained by fusion. Um? The corner of Orakimura's mouth finally curled up. Sure enough, flesh and blood is the best genetic sample. He knew that these detected attributes should be the chakra attributes that the blood owners could originally use. When Tsunade's hair was detected before, she could only obtain a small amount of life energy. And when this blood sample was detected, it was can you obtain chakra of other attributes. You know, Tsunade originally had chakra of four attributes, water, fire, thunder, and earth. From this point of view, it is enough to see the difference between blood and hair. The test continues. Ding, it is detected that this sample contains energy of two attributes, fire and thunder. When fused, you can obtain the power of water and the power of thunder. Ding, this sample was detected to contain wind. One genetic test after another, and blood data one after another were presented to Orakimaru. There are single attribute ones, dual attribute ones, and even a three attribute one. Ding, a special human gene sample has been detected, and the characteristics of this gene can be obtained by fusion. Special genes? System, check details. Looking at the blood in a small syringe in his hand, Orakimura's pupils shrank. Host, please wait a moment, the system is being analyzed. The analysis is completed. According to the host's memory, the gene belongs to the Uchiha clan. Uchiha gene characteristics can be obtained by fusion. Uchiha. Orakimura narrowed his eyes. When testing Tsunade's cells before, the system showed that the fusion could only obtain a small amount of life energy. But Uchiha's blood can obtain Uchiha's characteristics? What is the principle of this? Senju and Uchiha are genetically equal, so why did Tsunade have nothing on her hair before? Is there a difference between hair and blood? It's not the host, it's because. After the system said this, Orakimaru quickly understood. It's because Tsunade has not awakened the sage body, so he cannot obtain the sage body by merging her genes. The owner of this blood is the Uchiha clansman. He awakened the Sherinan, so he can gain the power of Uchiha. 
Orakimaru has learned a lot of genetic knowledge after all. I know that cell or gene transplantation will cause rejection. What is the most awesome thing about the Uchiha clan? Of course the Sharinan. That coquettish eye power makes everyone yearn for it. But the spiritual energy contained in the Sharinan is so powerful that most people simply cannot bear it. Under normal circumstances, only the bloodline of the Uchiha clan can freely use the power of the Sharinan. Transplanted eyes like the original Kakashis cannot be opened and closed freely. But now, according to the system, if I fuse this gene, I can have Uchiha's bloodline and even awaken the Sharinan? The more I think about it, the more it makes sense. Seven days later, the gene extraction task was completed and the gene fusion data was unlocked. Also unlocked at the same time is something called gene fusion fluid. After obtaining this information, Orakimaru confirmed his idea that he could fuse other people's genes. This gene fusion is more than just transplanting cells into the human body like in the original work. But a true fusion. Extract a biological gene, go through a series of processes, and then integrate it into something called gene fusion fluid. Finally, one creature can possess the power of two creatures at the same time. To put it simply, if this research is successful, Orakimaru can fuse other people's genes and gain other people's power. Integrate the genes of the Uchiha Kai Kai clan to awaken the Sharinan. Integrate the Byakugan gene of the Hayaga clan and awaken the Byakugan. Integrate the genes of the first Hokage and awaken the body of a sage. Yes, it's awakening. Awakening using the genetic power of one's own fusion is not a simple transplant. Can gene fusion fluid perfectly fuse two different cells together? Haha, <laughs> that is to say, if I master this technique proficiently, I can even make anyone have the Sharinan? Can anyone also have wood escape? Can you even extract the chakra of Azura and Indra to cultivate your own samsara eye? Um, it's getting more and more interesting. The task of gene fusion is to make a gene fusion liquid. Complete the mission to get 8000 technology points. The next technology is gene repair fluid. Gene repair solution, can repair any severely damaged genes and cells. Orakimaru took a look and realized that the technology points gained from completing this mission were of little use to him now. Because the things you can buy at the technology point are all auxiliary props, most of which are not needed at the moment. As for the genetic repair fluid unlocked by the next technology, he didn't care. Because right now, what he is most interested in is the gene fusion fluid. Therefore, with Orakimaru having a clear goal, the next days will be very simple. It's two points and one line. Follow Sarutobi on missions, and after disbanding, go home and do experiments. Everything outside seems to have nothing to do with him. There is no way, this scientific research project is so attractive. Outside, the first ninja war is still going on. But war has nothing to do with Genin. Therefore, Orakimaru has no sense of urgency. Of course, the main reason is because this war has come to an end. Kanaha has enough combatants and there is no need for them to go to the battlefield. Otherwise, even if they are Genin, they will be forced to take the Chuyunin exam. Once you become a Chuyunin, you will be immediately dragged to the battlefield. Now Orakimaru is deaf to what is happening outside the window. In addition to the necessary training courses and tasks every day, I just focus on research. Scientific research takes time. The days pass by day by day, and two years are here in a blink of an eye. The end of Kanaha 18. This year, Orakimaru is eight years old. Looking at his home filled with various animal and plant specimens, Orakimaru nodded with satisfaction. At this time, apart from the necessary medium-sized experimental equipment, his home was filled with bottles, jars and other containers. The containers are all filled with various snakes, insects, rats, ants, birds and animals soaked in potion. In two years, with the help of the system, he has become a true genetic expert. Gene enhancement solution, gene repair solution, gene extraction, gene fusion. All kinds of genetic knowledge are already far ahead of the world. Weapon technology has also been unlocked early. 
However, the research and development of weapons technology requires a lot of larger equipment and minerals. With his small house, there is no way he can do it. Therefore, he has been studying genes for the past two years. Speaking of genetics, I have to mention it. He originally thought that as long as the genes of ants were applied to the human body, humans would have hundreds of times the power of ants. But obviously, this is just human fantasy. The reason why ants are so powerful is because their body structure is composed of bones wrapping muscles. It is this body structure that causes the ants disproportionate strength. It has nothing to do with genes. It is the influence of body structure. The human body structure is fundamentally different. It doesn't work. Of course, the most important thing is that the gene fusion method provided by the system is to extract the energy in the genes, cultivate them, and then fuse them. Like the genes of ants, the energy contained in them is too weak to be cultivated at all. The effect of genetic enhancement liquid is only obvious after the first use. Even if the enhancement liquid is upgraded to a higher level, the effect will not be particularly significant after drinking it. Judging from this situation, even if the strengthening liquid is upgraded to a high level, the strengthened physique cannot be compared with the cells of the Thousand Hands clan. Looking at the various genetic drugs created by himself in the system warehouse, Orakimaru frowned. It seems that it's time to make a deal with Kanaha. During this time, Orakimaru was mostly studying the gene fusion fluid. It's just that this research has reached a bottleneck due to insufficient blood samples. Therefore, after he spent a year and a half developing the first gene fusion fluid, he chose to unlock the subsequent technologies first and look for inspiration. Behind the gene repair fluid is the intermediate gene enhancement fluid. These two things are relatively simple and are an extended version of the previous research project, so the completion time of the two technologies combined is only four or five months. And Orakimaru believes that after the first experience, the next time he makes it, it will only take three or two days. I have to say that scientific research is difficult. But as long as you have reached that threshold and your talent is high enough, it will be easy to achieve results with a little effort. Orakimaru is in such a situation now. Otherwise, even with the help of the system, he would not be able to complete so many scientific research projects in more than two years. Orakimaru, Orakimaru. A rapid knock on the door suddenly sounded. Orakimaru frowned and came to the door Jiraiya, why are you yelling? I challenge you, challenge. Go, 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 come to the training ground with me. Jiraiya pointed in the direction of the training ground with his thumb, and after saying that, he couldn't wait to pull Orakimaru away. Challenge? Orakimaru pulled his hand out of Jiraiya's hand without leaving a trace no. In the past two years, under Sarutobi's arrangement, he has fought Jiraiya countless times. Jiraiya has never been able to fight back every time. Therefore, when they are not gathering together, he never fights with this person. Damn it! After all, if you abuse food too much, it will be boring. Hey, hey, I learned a new move this time, I can definitely beat you. Jiraiya said this with a lewd smile on his face hey. As long as I defeat you, Tsunade can be my girlfriend. Just thinking about it makes me a little excited. Stop dreaming, even if you win, Tsunade won't like you. Orakimaru poured cold water on him in time. You know, Orakimaru said this not just from memory. But after getting along for such a long time, he knew Tsunade's criteria for choosing a mate. One is strength, the other is good looks. This is the most important condition and the only one. After all, she is the princess of the Senjo clan. She has good strength and looks pretty good. It is normal to have requirements on these two points. Jiraiya, strength it's okay, but this looks. It's really a flaw. Orakimaru's words hit Jiraiya. But Jiraiya is thick-skinned. Of course he won't be knocked down by Orakimaru's few words. How do you know it's impossible if you don't try? I believe that as long as I persist, I will be able to impress her one day. Okay, do you want to fight or not? Jiraiya changed the subject. Not interested in. 
Orochimaru refused decisively and unkindly. His time is precious, but he has no interest in playing tricks with Jiraiya. At this time, Jiraiya was a little depressed. He finally practiced one or two tricks, but the result was that this guy doesn't want to fight. It feels like a punch to cotton, making people vomit blood. You. However, he was about to say something, but suddenly he discovered something new. Hey, Orokimaru, what's going on at your house? Sharp, really awesome, what are these? This is not the first time he has come to Orokimaru's home, but he usually doesn't go in. In addition, Orokimaru deliberately concealed it, so he couldn't see what was going on inside. But this time, he saw the experimental equipment in the room. Of course, the scientific research equipment provided by the system had been put away by Orokimaru, so all he saw was some experimental equipment that could be purchased in Kanaha village. But this was enough to shock Jiraiya. Because he is only eight years old now. I am so curious about all new things. The various transparent bottles and jars are so dazzling to see. These, are they all yours? Certainly. What are you doing with these? Improve your strength. Improve strength? Jiraiya was stunned for a moment, then said in a funny tone, What nonsense are you talking about, guy? To improve your strength, shouldn't you practice day and night? What's the use of doing this? With your wisdom, I can't explain it to you. Orokimaru, Jiraiya, you guys, hi. What's this? Tsunade also suddenly jumped down from the roof of Orokimaru's house. When she saw that the door was open, she walked in directly. But when she saw the scene in front of her, she had the same reaction as Jiraiya. Because she didn't know either. Orokimaru is actually doing research? He glanced at the bottles and jars next to him, and then looked at a few genetics books next to the table. Tsunade was really surprised picked up a book and flipped through two pages it's really amazing. Can you understand these things? I couldn't understand it before, but now I can. Orokimaru said calmly. When he first started the experiment, he was really a little confused. He has been researching just one primary gene enhancement solution for half a year. Now, it is estimated that given him a few days, he can make several. Before? Tsunade grasped the key point of the words you mean, you started studying these things a long time ago. Um. Orokimaru nodded slightly. After more than two years of training, his strength has reached a point where he can protect himself in any situation. Therefore, he doesn't mind letting the two of them see his laboratory. Besides, in Kanaha village, there are already talents responsible for researching this field, so this is not too unusual. Of course, there are still differences. After all, Orokimaru's scientific research projects are given by the system, which is better than Kanaha Village is much more advanced. After hearing Orokimaru's decisive admission, Tsunade immediately remembered it. Two and a half years ago, Orokimaru, who had just graduated, borrowed money from her once. Just because Orokimaru paid back the money quickly. So she didn't care at the time. Now think about it, did he borrow the money to do this? Oh my god, this is too exaggerated, right? Orokimaru was only six years old at that time. A six-year-old child can study these things? Why? Is it because of his dead parents? I have to say that Tsunade has a great mind and actually quickly helped Orokimaru think of a reason. As expected of you, you are so awesome. Hey, why are we so powerful? We are ninjas, and our own strength is the most important. What is the use of studying these? Jiraiya curled his lips. At this time, he had completely forgotten that he had been exaggerating the power of Orokimaru just now. But for some reason, he couldn't get angry when he saw Tsunade worshipping Orokimaru. Hit me somewhere. Tsunade immediately retorted no matter how useless I am, I'm still better than you, an idiot. Yes. I am an idiot, but no matter how idiot I am, I am still better than you, a washboard. Jiraiya smiled wickedly. The three of them have been together for so long, and he has become a little skinny in the face of Tsunade's ridicule. 
Hearing Jiraiya's words, Tsunade was furious again what did you say? Jiraiya, you are looking for death. I'm looking for death, come and beat me. You. Hey, you two, stop making trouble here. Seeing that the two of them were about to start fighting, Orikimura stopped him with words in time. Although these two guys were only eight years old, the fight was still earth-shattering. If they break some experimental specimens or something, it's nothing. But if they break their own if the experimental notes are destroyed, then it's a bit confusing. Did you hear that, Orikimaru asked you not to cause trouble here? Jiraiya smiled proudly. I, Tsunade hesitated to speak. Orikimaru interrupted Tsunade again okay, Tsunade, I have something to go to see Mr. Saratobi. Do you want to come together? Certainly. You came at the right time. In view of your good performance before, I decided to take you to the battlefield to sharpen your skills. As soon as he saw Saratobi downstairs in the Hokage building, Saratobi said this. Go back and prepare, we will set off in an hour. Well, after hearing this, Orikimaru immediately knew that his plan would be delayed. The first ninja war was called a war but it was actually two villages fighting each other. Kanaha vs Kumagakur, Kirigakur vs Iwagakur. It can be said to be extremely monotonous. To be honest, Orikimura didn't know, how could these village ninjas fight for so many years with only a few thousand people on one side? Is it true that a gentleman speaks but does not act? Of course, Orikimura didn't delve into this issue. He originally planned to use a weakened version of the gene-enhancing fluid he recently developed in exchange for Kanaha's support in scientific research. By the way, you can also come into contact with the remains of the first Hokage. But now a mission suddenly comes, so we can only postpone the time. An hour later, Orikimaru and the three men, fully armed, approached the entrance of Kanaha village. Forward protector, ninja uniform, Ninja tool bag, scroll, leggings, and ninja shoes are all ready. This is not the first time Orikimaru has done a mission, but he used to do some D-level missions in the village. Such as picking up garbage, weeding, catching cats, delivering letters and so on. Even if there are occasional missions out of the village, they are to deal with some ordinary bandits not far around Yai village. I have never encountered even a stronger wandering ninja. How weak are ordinary bandits? Just look at the warriors standing behind Cardo when fighting Zabuza in the original work and you will know. Naruto's shadow clone can easily do two in seconds. Kakashi's multiple shadow clones can scare them all into the water. Facing an opponent of this level, they couldn't even be interested. But this time, when Orikimaru and the others arrived at the entrance of Kanaha village, Sarutobi Hiruzen had been waiting for a long time. At this time, he was also fully armed, wearing black armor, looking heroic. When he saw Orikimaru and the three people arriving, he couldn't help but nodded with satisfaction. The three of them are all his proud disciples. Especially Orikimaru, his talent is surprisingly high. This makes him, as a teacher, very happy. Let's go. There was no passionate speech. No inspiring words, just these four simple words. Along the way, Sarutobi Hiruzen also told the three people about the mission content. According to what Sarutobi said, the two Dai Hokage has already returned to the front line with his men, and the Cloud Ninjas of the Land of Thunder have now decided to retreat. In other words, the front line battlefield is no longer so dangerous. And Orikimaru and the others are the future of Kanaha village. Sarutobi has the responsibility to show the future of Kanaha the cruelty of the battlefield. So, here they are. The ninjas have a unique way of walking, spinning and jumping on the trees. A group of four people maintain their formation and move quickly to the front. On both sides the scenery is also constantly moving backwards. Hee <laughs> hee, it's finally time to go to the battlefield. The three of us should be the youngest ones on the battlefield, right? Jiraiya looks a little excited. After all, they are only less than nine years old now. It is indeed a bit early to go to the battlefield before the age of nine during the First World War. But Orikimaru, who knows the future, 
knows that at this age it's already very late. In the original work, Uchiha Itaki was taken to the battlefield by his father at the age of four. Kakashi also graduated at the age of five, and became a Chuyunin at the age of six and went to the battlefield. Compared to the ages of these two geniuses, they simply don't want it to be too late. That is to say, Kanaha now has the second generation Hokage, and there are enough combat personnel. Otherwise, with their talents, they will definitely be arranged to take the Chunin exam soon after graduating at the age of six. The battlefield is cruel. The closer you get to the front line, the more you can see the traces of fierce fighting. Fire Nation, Northeastern Defense Line You can see broken rocks and swaying trees everywhere. Kunao, shurikens, and broken ninja swords were scattered on the ground. There is no doubt that a sizable battle took place here. If you look carefully, you can see that there are even a few corpses that haven't been taken away yet. This is war. There were countless casualties, corpses littered the fields, and one person lost his life without paying attention. Seeing so many corpses, Jiraiya and Tsunade were obviously still a little uncomfortable. Only Orakimaru looks unusually calm. Maybe it's because he is an adult to begin with, or maybe he is already mentally prepared. In short, his current performance is much better than Jiraiya and Tsunade. It's still at most half a day's journey to the front line, so be careful. After checking the condition of the corpse, Hiruzen Sarutobi promptly reminded him. Um. The three of them nodded. Just as they were about to say something, suddenly. Whoosh whoosh. Six figures appeared next to the four people and surrounded them. Jiraiya and Tsunade were startled and quickly made defensive moves. Orakimaru also squinted his eyes, and while alert, he looked at the forehead protector on the other person's forehead. One of your own. On the battlefield, the forehead protector is the initial criterion for judging friends and foes. Once you wear the forehead protector of your own village, even if the enemy transforms him into a shapeshifter, he will never attack him immediately. Is it Lord Hiruzen? Among the six people who came, the leader wearing sunglasses suddenly spoke. Oh? It turns out to be a bear Takia. Hearing Sarutobi Hiruzen call out his name, a bear Takia breathed a sigh of relief and gestured to several others at the same time. Identity confirmed, alert lifted. Seeing this scene, Orakimaru couldn't help but have a deeper understanding of the battlefield. The battlefield is much more rigorous than he imagined. The biggest function of a forehead protector is actually not to protect the forehead. It is used to distinguish the ninja's camp on the battlefield. After all, even among the ninjas in the same village, there are many ninjas who don't know each other. What's more, during a battle, there isn't that much time for you to look at faces. Normally, two teams of ninjas meet in the wild. After confirming their camps, they also have to confirm passwords, passwords, etc. At this time, a bear Takia heard Sarutobi Hiruzen calling his name, and naturally knew that this could not be the enemy's disguise. Because he can only be regarded as an ordinary member of the Abermei clan. Except for his own people, it is impossible for the enemy to know his name. After the two parties confirmed their identities, Sarutobi Hiruzen and a bear Takia exchanged information, and then continued to rush towards the front line with Orakimaru and the others. Battlefield, it's really scary. Jiraiya couldn't help but swallow while he was running. At this time, the scene of the messy battlefield still remained in his mind. Such a tragic scene, for anyone who went to the battlefield for the first time, all have a strong visual impact. Not to mention the current Jiraiya, who is still just a child. An eight-year-old child's mental endurance is naturally limited. If it is the first time to go to the battlefield, let alone him, even many adult ninjas, will be scared to death. After hearing Jiraiya's words, Tsunade also echoed yes, although I have heard a lot before, I still feel a little uncomfortable seeing it with my own eyes. War is like this, just get used to it. Sarutobi Hiruzen comforted him. He has seen too many such scenes. After seeing too many, he will naturally become numb. After speaking, 
he glanced at Orakimura subconsciously. There is nothing special about this kid before and after. Expression? Sure enough, are you born to be a ninja? Kanaha border. Military base. Oh? Monkey, are you here? Looking at the four Saratobi who landed on the ground, the second Hokage in blue armor said with a serious expression. At this time, he was arranging his equipment. Next to him, stood several other Kanaha backbone warriors. Power. One is the slightly fat Akimichi Tofu, and the other is Uchiha Cage with the clan emblem on his shoulder. The other one is Danzo with a scar on his chin. This is not the first time Orokimaru has met these people, but he had never had the opportunity to get in close contact like today. When he took a closer look today, he immediately felt how powerful these people were. The other people were fine, but the second Hokage. Orokimaru could clearly feel the aura on his body even if he didn't release it deliberately. Um. Hearing the words of the second Hokage, Sarutobi nodded teacher, that, I bring them to the battlefield. Sarutobi, what are you doing here with three children? Where do you think this is? Before the second Hokage spoke, Danzo next to him couldn't help but start talking. He and Sarutobi are teammates, but they are also sworn enemies and competitors. They love each other and kill each other. Even if there is only a little chance, he will catch him, and then argue with Sarutobi. Of course, the second Hokage will generally not stop this situation. Because he believes in the saying that competition leads to progress. As for why Danzo is so opposed to this? Again, if a ninja can go to the battlefield at the age of six or seven, it is because he is forced to do so. If it is really possible, they will never allow children of this age to go to the battlefield. And this is the situation now. Oh? Haha, <laughs> it doesn't matter Danzo, they are all very capable. Nothing will go wrong for sure. Sarutobi said with a hearty smile. Sarutobi is very young now, and his smile is very hearty. He feels like the adult version of Naruto and Naoki. No problem? Hum, you will regret it when something goes wrong. Okay, stop arguing, since everything is already here, let's let it be. The second Hokage subconsciously glanced at Orokimaru Monkey, I will lead people to fight their main force now. You just lead a team of Umbu to clean up the enemy's remnants. Yes. Umbu was a department created after the second Hokage came to power. Its full name is, Assassination Tactics Special Forces. Similar to a special military department, the members of Umbu are all outstanding ninjas selected from the village. They are mainly responsible for protecting Cage and preventing enemies from invading the ninja village. Sometimes they are also responsible for reconnaissance and assassination tasks. The nature of the tasks is usually extremely harsh or boring, such as guarding important suspects. Due to the special nature of the mission, its members all wear white masks that imitate animals when operating. The nature of the mission and all other information are kept confidential. The umbu is directly under the shadow, and all orders are issued by the shadow. There are multiple teams of four or five people under the army and the team leader uniformly conveys orders and leads the execution of tasks. At this time, Sarutobi temporarily gained control of the umbu of a five-man team. Five people, all wearing animal masks and dressed according to their figure, four men and one woman. Including Sarutobi and Orokimaru, there are nine people in total. Their goal is to snipe those Kumo ninjas who are also in teams. Here is Insama. Is it really okay to raise these few children? Here is Insama, is it really okay to raise these few children? While walking through the jungle, one of the Umbu glanced at Orokimaru and the others and couldn't help but ask. They are affiliated with the Hokage and are responsible for different things. Therefore, they only know Tsunade and do not know Orokimaru and Orokimaru. Jiraiya On the battlefield, being young is not a problem. What matters is whether you are strong enough. Will you become a burden to them in battle? Forget about. Tsunade. After all, she is a member of the Senjo clan, and she is also a direct relative of the first and second generation Hokage. 
no matter how weak their strength is, they can't be much worse. But Jiraiya and Orochimaru are clearly civilian ninjas. How much fighting power can the children of civilian ninjas have? Eagle, don't underestimate them. Sarutobi Hiruzen understood what the Umbu captain meant, and smiled lightly if we really fight, I'm afraid you may not be their opponents. Umbu all have their own code names. And the code name of this Umbu captain is Ying. Hearing Sarutobi's words, Ying was immediately dissatisfied although they are your disciples, your words are a bit too much. Yes, just a few brats. I think so. I'd be lucky if I didn't hold back. That's it, that's it. Several Umbu denied Sarutobi's words with every word. The meaning of the words was obviously to look down on Jiraiya and Orokimaru. But think about it, let alone Jiraiya and Orokimaru, two civilians. A ninja, even a child of the Senjo clan and the Uchiha clan. What can he do at the age of eight? How can he be the opponent of their Umbu? In response to the rebuttals of several people, Sarutobi smiled slightly eagle, Fox, you guys after being a ninja for so many years, don't you know that there are geniuses in this world? Genius? You mean them? Although I don't deny that there are geniuses in this world, no matter how talented they are, their abilities are limited, right? Is not that right? Hey, hey, I'm talking to the uncles from Umbu, can you please stop looking down on others? That is, our strength is very strong. Tsunade and Jiraiya couldn't help but retort. The three ninjas are inherently talented. Even if they are young, they are beyond the reach of ordinary ninjas. Although they have not yet taken the Chuyunin exams, their strength is early it has surpassed many Chuyunin. You must know that Chunin are the largest group of ninjas in every ninja village. Even in Umbu, there are many outstanding Chunin. Therefore, what Sarutobi said is also there is no problem. The current Sunin do not lack strength. What they lack is battlefield experience. Haha, <laughs> the little devils are quite confident. Is not that right? I just don't know if I'll be so scared that I'll pee my pants when I encounter an enemy later, ha ha ha. Ha 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 ha. Alas, you. Everyone, stop for a moment, there are enemies ahead. Tsunade also wanted to refute the words of several Umbu, but was interrupted by a sudden voice. Everyone looked around and saw that the owner of the voice was none other than Orokimaru who had been silent. Hearing Orokimaru, not only those Umbu, even Sarutobi was surprised. He quickly made a stop gesture. Orokimaru, what's going on? There are enemies ahead. Orokimaru repeated it again. Just hearing Orokimaru's words, one of the female Umbu was a little confused is there an enemy? Kid, don't talk nonsense. Even I, a perceptive ninja, can, hi, wait, an enemy is really coming, everyone be on alert. Whoosh whoosh. A group of nine people turned into after images and quickly looked for cover in the jungle. But at this moment, everyone in hiding looked at Orokimaru with a different look. Sarutobi, Tsunade, and Jiraiya were okay a little bit, because they knew that Orokimaru had a certain sense of perception. But the other Umbu didn't know. So, at this time, they were filled with admiration when they saw Orokimaru hiding behind a huge rock. Is this kid also a sentient type? How amazing! The female ninja who is responsible for perception in the team, codenamed Nightingale is even more incredible. She is the ninja responsible for perception in the team. Although her perception ability is not the strongest, she can be selected and sent to the Umbu. Naturally, he is outstanding in this aspect. But just now, this long-haired boy actually sensed the enemy before himself? Doesn't that mean that his perception ability is stronger than his own? At this time, Orokimaru didn't know that he was surprised again go. Because this time, he did not rely on his own ability, but on technology. When he entered the range where he might encounter enemies, he released his six invisible flies to explore the way ahead. Because in you may encounter enemies at any time in a war-torn area, so you should be vigilant. In this case, the speed at which everyone rushes cannot be as fast as the invisible fly. After all, 
everyone has to be alert at all times to see if there are any enemy ambush around them. So, in this place covered by woods, Orakimaru was able to find the enemy faster than the nightingale. Swish! Before anyone had time to think too much, three figures ran out from the trees in front. On their forehead protectors, there were impressive engraved marks. Marked by clouds. Kanaha Border, Kumo Ninja Village Defense Line. In the jungle, dozens of vigorous figures are running quickly. Among the dozen or so of them, both men and women had dark skin and carried a very sophisticated ninja sword on their backs. Judging from their attire, they are definitely the elite among the ninjas of Kumo Ninja Village. Damn it, I don't a Euro trademark T know what our rakage is thinking, but we actually want to compromise with Kanaha. One of the men suddenly said. Listening to his tone, he seemed to be a little dissatisfied with rakage. That is, this battle has been going on for so long, and the hatred between the two sides cannot be erased by an agreement. I also agree with you, the ninjas of Kanaha deserve to die. Several people in the team also agreed. Okay, okay. Although I know that some of your relatives died at the hands of Kanaha ninjas, he is the rakage after all, and we must listen to his orders. That's true, but no matter what, we have to have a carnival before retreating. Yes, I want to kill myself before I leave. It's best to meet. Wait a moment. A dark-skinned man leading the team quickly stopped on the tree trunk, and at the same time signaled to the people behind him, the others stopped decisively. What's wrong? Captain Shai. The man named Shai smiled evilly there seems to be a mouse in front. Oh? The other person also smiled it's a bit unexpected, woo, feel it. Yes. One of the thin men nodded. After speaking, he squatted down and pointed two fingers on the ground. How many people can you sense? Nine people. The thin man said with great certainty. It's obvious that he is also a perception-based ninja. When ninjas fight in the forest, due to vision problems, they usually compete with perception first. After determining the number of enemies and even detailed information, they then decide on the battle plan. At this time, this is what these Kumo ninjas do. And they think they have better perception than the other party. Only nine people? Shaggy glanced at the people behind him and grinned hey, there are twelve of us, and we have the numerical advantage now. I will take two of them to lure the enemy in front, and the others will see the opportunity to snipe them. Learn. Whizzing. Ding ding. Seeing the three Kumo ninjas appearing, Kanaha took the lead in launching an attack. Several shurikens were thrown directly. The three cloud ninjas who lured the enemy were naturally well prepared and easily fended them off. You bastards of Kanaha, come out and die. Ha ha ha, do you still want to ambush us? After blocking the shuriken, the Kumo ninja screamed crazily. While avoiding the attack flexibly, he threw the hidden weapon. Boom. Kunao appeared with the detonating talisman in the hiding place of everyone in Kanaha. The sound sounded. Sarutobi Harrison at this time, he also had a solemn look on his face. The enemy's sensing ninjas are also very strong, there is nothing we can do, Ying, hold them back. Yes. The umbu named Eagle replied, quickly forming seals with his hands. Earth. Release. Rock attack. As he pressed his hands on the ground, countless rocks shot forward like bullets. Sarutobi Hiruzen looked at it for three times the person glanced Orakimaru, Tsunade, Jiraiya, just show your normal state, be careful. Um. Everyone else, come with me to meet the enemy. Yes. As soon as he finished speaking, Sarutobi Hiruzen took the lead and rushed out with an afterimage. Marai Shinobi's combat power is naturally not outstanding. The moment he entered the field, he had already found his opponent. Soldiers will fight against soldiers, and they will fight against generals. The Jonin naturally had to deal with the Jonin. So, a battle began. Each of them seemed to have found his opponent. Sarutobi was much stronger than ordinary ninjas 
but the number of enemies was so large that he was instantly divided into three people were holding him back, and he couldn't escape even in a short time. Seeing the chaos on the battlefield, Jiraiya couldn't help but swallowed his saliva, and was about to say something, when suddenly his whole body was lifted up by Orokimaru. Don't be in a daze. Orokimaru's cold voice reached his ears. He just felt that the scenes around him were moving forward rapidly. Boom! A huge explosion exploded at the location in front of the three of them. So close! Jiraiya patted his chest in fear. He was about to thank Orokimaru. Whoosh whoosh! Three figures fell in front of the three of them. Two men and one woman. Oh, it's actually three little ghosts. Ha ha ha, shouldn't such a big kid still be sucking milk? Stop talking nonsense and deal with them quickly. One of the male ninjas quickly reminded. On the battlefield, no matter what age, as long as you are wearing an enemy forward protector, you are an enemy. Facing the enemy, ninjas will never be merciful. After hearing what his teammates said, the female ninja smiled coldly little devils, since we are on the battlefield, don't blame my sister for being cruel. Go to hell. As she said that, she pulled out her sword and jumped into the air. Yunlio. Makazuki slash. Whoa. The crescent-like sword light mercilessly slashed towards Orokimaru and the others. Most of the ninjas in the Cloud Ninja Village in the Kingdom of Thunder are good at thunder escape and sword skills. In their understanding, when fighting Kanaha ninjas, all they have to do is get close to them, and then a dazzling sword strike will follow. Facing such a powerful sword technique. Except for the Uchiha and Hayaga clans who have eye power, few Kanaha ninjas can stop it. In fact, it is indeed the case. Compared to melee combat, the overall level of Kumo Ninja is much higher than that of Kanaha. So now, facing these three brats, she has absolute confidence to kill them with a knife in the next second. Pity. Clang. The sound of metal collision sounded. The female ninja's eyes turned sharp blocked. This brat, Nanny. Latent shadow snake hand. Whoa. Countless snakes came out of the cuff of Orokimaru's left hand. Jiraiya. Um. Hearing Orokai's cry, Jiraiya finally reacted and quickly put his hands together ninja technique, needle hell. Careful. Your opponent is me. Watch the punches and drink. Latent shadow snake hand. Orokimaru's signature skill. Shortly after receiving the psychic technique two years ago, Orokimaru had developed this technique. The learning of ninjutsu is much simpler for Orokimaru now than scientific research or something like that. Because of scientific research, a simple project will take at least half a year or even a year or two. Even though he already had experience in making genetic enhancement fluid, it took him two months to make the genetic repair fluid. But ninjutsu is different. Because that's all the principles of ninjutsu. Except for those secret techniques and blood inheritance limits. The general principles of ninjutsu are actually very simple. With someone to teach him, with his talent, he could learn it in a day at most. If there is no one to teach me, if I study it myself, it will not take more than three days at most. Latent Shadow Snake Hand is a psychic ninjutsu. With the idea of this technique in mind, it only took three days to use the principles of necromancy to research this technique. Although this technique does not appear to be very powerful in the original work, and generally cannot kill people, it is quite effective. Countless snakes, each with its own role. Intimidate, contain, capture. And it doesn't require any seals, so it's very convenient. If you weren't a speed ninja, you wouldn't be able to dodge it. At this time, the female Kumonin in the battle was not slow at all, and she did not underestimate the enemy but she did not expect that Orokimaru would use a kunau to block such a swift slash of hers. She never thought that Orokimaru would have such an attack method. So, he got tricked. The moment she was blocked by Orokimaru's kunau and then bitten by the giant pythons in the hidden shadow snake hands, she knew something was wrong. Pity, she knew it was too late. Whoosh whoosh. 
countless white hairs like steel needles emanated from Jiraiya's head and body next to him. The penetrating power of white hair is very strong, and it is as dense as raindrops. With such a close distance, she couldn't escape at all. She wanted to struggle, but Orakimaru's pythons trapped him so tightly that she couldn't move at all for a short time. After all, not everyone has Tsunade and Sakura's strange powers. Her teammates want support. But Tsunade blocked his way with a heavy punch. Boom. The ground is cracked and gravel is flying. Puff puff. Almost at the same time, this female ninja of the Kumo ninja was beaten into a sieve by Jiraiya's needle hell. She even had time to scream. Damn it, these three brats. The remaining two Kumo ninjas were also angry at this time. I thought that the battle would be easy, but I didn't expect that these three brats couldn't take any measures, and one of them was killed in an instant. Bastard, Yuru, what's going on over there? The captain named Shai obviously heard the screams of this man. Taking advantage of the gap in the battle, he shouted loudly and asked. They adult ninjas haven't decided the winner yet. They are responsible for solving those three brats. But one of his teammates died first. How the hell can this be reliable? Hearing the captain's words, Illa was furious. These are not ordinary brats, damn, I'm going to kill you. The two tightened the ninja swords in their hands and began to look at the three brats in front of them. At the same time, Orakimaru glanced at the gap in his kunau, and was surprised at the sharpness of the other's ninja sword. He looked at the side again Jiraiya, who was still in shock, couldn't help but frown Jiraiya. What's wrong with you? I, did I kill someone? Jiraiya muttered to himself with some fear. He is only eight years old now. When he did tasks before, he just defeated the enemy. He never really killed anyone. But now, he just subconsciously follows the usual way of cooperation between the three of them. Fighting back, actually stabbing the opponent to death? This was definitely a huge shock to his young mind. On the contrary, although Orakimaru had experienced this situation for the first time, he was there was no feeling like Jiraiya. He even felt that the hatred in his heart seemed to have found an outlet. This kind of unscrupulous killing not only did not make him feel uncomfortable, but made him more excited. What about killing people? If you don't kill him, he will kill you. Haven't you received psychological training? Jiraiya, now is not the time to lament this. Tsunade also echoed. She grew up in the Senjo clan of Kanaha and she seemed to have accepted the reality faster than Jiraiya now. Can, but. Nothing but, coming. Orakimaru shouted coldly, and the two Kumo ninjas drew their swords and moved forward again. Their companion was dead, so they naturally had to avenge her. Facing the attack of the two, the three of them quickly retreated. The battle became more and more intense, and other people began to suffer casualties. Earth Escape Earth flow and great river. The ground suddenly softened, causing a Kumo ninja who couldn't react quickly to fall into the quagmire. Cloud flow, Xia Zhan. Uh huh. A Kanaha Ambu couldn't avoid it and was cut with a long gash in his chest. Shuriken, Kunao, detonating charm. Soon it resounded throughout the battlefield. Hiruzen Sarutobi dealt with one person and quickly dodged the attack of the opponent's Jonin Shai. Looking at the three Orakimaru who were still fighting with Kumo Ninja, he immediately shouted. Orakimaru, take advantage of now. Um. Orakimaru reacted instantly. He hooked out a kunau with a detonating talisman and threw it out. Boom. The huge explosion forced the opponent back and at the same time widened the distance between the two sides. Whoosh whoosh. The three of them quickly went back to back. They gathered together, bit their fingers at the same time, and started to form seals with both hands quickly. Hai Su Yu Shen Wei The Art of Psychic The Art of Psychic The Art of Psychic Bang 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 Three hands pressed at the same time on the ground, three huge white smoke also rose at the same time. The white smoke quickly dissipated, and three huge psychic beasts appeared in front of everyone. 
oh, no. It was for. Because Sarutobi and a monkey demon. This is, psychic beast. Awesome kid. Amazing. The Umbu of Kanaha during the battle caught this scene with their peripheral vision, and expressed their admiration for the three brats in their hearts. At this moment, they finally recognized the strength of Orokimaru and the others. After all, the psychic beast, not everyone has it. Moreover, combat psychic beasts can also improve the combat power of ninjas a lot. They understand this very well. Hateful. Looking at the three psychic beasts standing in front of the three of them, the cloud ninjas clenched their ninja swords with horror on their faces. These three brats are too exaggerated, right? Not only is he not weak in strength, but he also has a psychic beast? The other two psychic beasts look fine, one is a slug and the other is a toad, but they don't seem to have much fighting power. But that huge flower python looks really impressive. Tsunade Sama the slug shouted softly when it came out. Its voice was very sweet and made people feel comfortable. Jiraiya, I'm on vacation, you summon me at this time, alas, have you gone to the battlefield? The two psychic beasts just appeared, and they both made their own voices. Only Orokimaru's flower python spat out a message without saying a word. He only shouted in his mind master. I have to say, before Orokimaru defected, the feeling of the three ninjas fighting side by side was really good. Even Orokimaru now can't help but feel a little touched in his heart. For two years, under Sarutobi's arrangement, they worked together and trained together. Not only did my relationship improve a lot, but I also learned a lot of combined attack techniques. The latent shadow snake hand combined with the needle hell is. So are the three current psychic beasts. The art of channeling can be used after signing a blood contract. It's just that the psychic beast that is channeled is related to the amount of chakra it has. Tsunade's slugs control their size based on the amount of chakra, Orokimaru's snakes and Jiraiya's toads control their species based on the amount of chakra. The Sunan at this time were only eight years old and had limited chakra. Therefore, the psychic beast that comes through the channel is naturally not the super large one in the original work. Toads and slugs are probably only a little taller than an adult now. An orokimaru's snake is naturally not a snake, but a flower snake that is 7 or 8 meters long and thicker than an adult's thigh. Of course, orokimaru has now taken the intermediate gene enhancement liquid, and with his age, the amount of chakra has more than doubled from two years ago. The real strength is naturally much more than this. But in order to cooperate with Tsunade and Jiraiya, he could only channel this snake. He once thought that if he really channeled all the snakes, it would be difficult to deal with it. You know, snakes are very cruel and cold-blooded creatures, and Wan Shi is one of the few snakes in Long Di Cave that has intelligence. Intelligent snakes not only retain the nature of cold-blooded actions, but also have their own thinking ability. They are cruel and arrogant, and will not even buy the face of their masters. If he really channeled one snake, he might have to fight it to tame it. Orokimaru doesn't have that spare time now, nor does he have the need to summon it. The topic got a little sidetracked, and the camera returned to the woods. The Kumo ninja originally had a numerical advantage, but they obviously underestimated Sarutobi, and even more so Orokimaru and the others. Sarutobi solved one, and Orokimaru and the other three also solved one by surprise. In the end, in terms of number of people, they only had one more person. At this time, as soon as the four psychic beasts appeared, the numerical advantage of the Kumo ninjas was suddenly gone. Especially the monkey demon of Sarutobi Hiruzen, it is simply their nightmare. Its sharp claws can even grab their ninja swords directly. Ding ding! Bang bang! Tsunade, get out of the way! Learn! Tsunade tapped her toes and quickly exited the battle circle. Jiraiya and Orokimaru had formed seals, and they were aiming at the Kumo ninja who was dragged down by three psychic beasts. Fire escape! Fire bullet! Wind escape! Great breakthrough! Fire escape! Use the wind to help the fire! The fire was like wildfire! 
sweeping towards the cloud ninja in front. Soon, screams came from the fire. Ninjutsu, kunao, shuriken, detonating charms, psychic beasts. Let the entire battlefield be filled with smoke. The unequal strength of the ninjas themselves brought this encounter to an end quickly. White, white ape, damn it, you are here as in Saratobi. After looking at the three psychic beasts and then seeing the white ape in front of him, Jounin Shai also recognized Saratobi's identity. Because in the previous battlefield, the image of Saratobi Harazan was deeply engraved in the hearts of their Kumo ninjas. Especially this white ape. Saratobi Harazan looked at the two people opposite him and asked instead of answering the war should have ended long ago, why are you still so stubborn? Finish? Ha ha ha! So naive, die. Shay I clenched the knife in his hand and rushed forward again. He knew that he was no match for Saratobi Harrison. But, escape? He looked at the dead teammates around him. Because of the existence of Saratobi Harrison and the junior Sunan, he made miscalculations, which ultimately led to the total destruction of his team. Therefore, he has no shame in going back. Anyway, I no longer have any relatives, so instead of fighting like this endlessly, I might as well just die. He has this awareness. Ninjas should die on the battlefield. Whoa! The kunao in Sarutobi's hand stabbed into his heart from the back with a cold light. Bang 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 bang! As the last kumonin fell to the ground, the four psychic beasts turned into white smoke and disappeared on the battlefield. The woods returned to silence again but the ground became a mess, no different from the scene I saw before coming here. Umbu of Kanaha, take stock of the battlefield quickly. You guys did a great job. A man walked up to the three of them and said with admiration. How old are you? It's the first time you go to the battlefield to show such combat effectiveness and cooperation? This is simply incredible. Where, no way. In the face of Umbu's praise, Tsunade and Orokimaru were fine. But Jiraiya was extremely embarrassed. Because he was the most panicked person just now. If it hadn't been for Orokimaru, he would have been seriously injured. But it's okay, after all, he is the future Sunan, he did not lose his temper in the subsequent battle. Orokimaru ignored everyone's talk, but looked at the enemies who had lost their fighting power but were not dead. At this moment, there was an inexplicable feeling in his heart. Pleasure. He drew out a kunao and walked towards them slowly. Hey, Orokimaru, what are you doing? Jiraiya was stunned. Snort. With a muffled sound, the non-combatant cloud ninja was wiped on the neck by Orokimaru. Seeing this scene, Jiraiya was stunned. Tsunade also showed a trace of unbearableness on his face. This guy... Although they are enemies, they no longer have any fighting power, so why should they be killed? Sarutobi also saw this scene at this time. But he was just a little surprised. Only the Umbu named Eagle had a strange look on his face behind the mask. This guy is very suitable for Umbu. Shaking his head and no longer thinking, he also took one of his uninjured subordinates and wiped the necks of all the fallen enemies. Killing people and silencing them is the job of Umbu. Naturally, Hiruzen Sarutobi did not stop this. Although Sarutobi seemed a little soft-hearted in the original work, that was only for Danzo, and it was because he was old and didn't want to lose his former companion. But now, he is young, and he is still an elite jonin who has killed countless enemies. Let the enemy escape or something. Non-existent. It was just the Umbu's actions that once again refreshed Tsunade and Jiraiya's outlook on life. It turns out that this is the real ninja. What were the casualties? One person was seriously injured and two were slightly injured. Ying, the captain of the Secret Service, had already completed the inspection there is no death toll. Hearing this, Sarutobi Hiruzen frowned are there any serious injuries? Tsunade. Exist. Tsunade stood up. Needless to say, she also knew what Sarutobi was asking her to do. Check. Yes. Tsunade nodded, dodged, and jumped to the wounded man and walked over. 
Orikimura graduated two and a half years ago. In the first half of the year, everyone was still working hard to practice basic skills, but in the next two years, the three of them started to learn skills. Orikimura was doing experiments, Jiraiya is learning Senjutsu, and Tsunade is learning medical ninjutsu. I have to say that it is really not an accident that a person can succeed. Talent and hard work are indispensable. This is the case for the Sunan. The seriously injured person was the Umbu code named Fox. His injury was a cut in the chest by Yun Ninja. The wound is so deep that you can see the bone. The Umbu captain looked at Tsunade's skillful movements and was once again surprised she, he's actually a medical ninja. How can medical ninjas still have such strong fighting power? It's incredible. Medical ninjas are not yet popular nowadays, and can even be said to be a scarce resource. Therefore, whether it is Tsunade's profession or her age, it can be said that she lives up to the name of the Thousand Hands. Tsunade ignored the Umbu's words, and concentrated on examining the Umbu's wounds. His wound was so deep that he needed surgery immediately. Operation, can you do it now? It's a bit difficult, but I'll try my best. Okay, hurry up. Sarutobi replied decisively. As he spoke, he called out to the other two uninjured Umbu and took them to the surrounding area to be on guard. For a moment, there were only three wounded and Orikimaru left in the open space in the center of the forest. Jiraiya looked at Orikimaru, who was calm and composed, and then at Tsunade, who was skilled in movements. He suddenly felt that he was just a salted fish. Although his strength was already very good, both in terms of strength and psychological quality even though he was there, he felt like he was far behind. But Tsune didn't care what Jiraiya thought. After adjusting her breathing, she took out her medical bag. But at this moment, she suddenly felt that she someone tapped me on the shoulder. Tsunade, let him drink this, it will make your surgery easier. Big, Orikimaru? Looking at the transparent liquid in a small test tube in Orikimaru's hand, Tsunade was stunned. This, what's this? Orikimaru said casually it speeds up the recovery of wounds. Yeah. Tsunade was a little confused. However, it was important to save people now, and she trusted Orikimaru, so she just hesitated for a moment before giving the potion to the fox to drink. Now that she believes in Orikimaru, it's the same as believing in Sarutobi Hiruzen. Bear with it. After the fox finished drinking, Tsunade reminded him, and then took out a series of things such as disinfectant, gauze, stitches, etc. from the medical bag to prepare for the operation. But Orikimaru looked carefully at the Umbu's wounds. Changes Gene repair solution can quickly restore or even regenerate damaged cells. It is not expensive. After the raw materials are used up, you can also use technology points to purchase it in the mall. 100 technology points per copy. And individual materials also sold individually. Depending on the material value, so the required technology points are different. The lowest priced material only costs 1 yuan. Bah, you can buy it with 1 technology point. So Orikimaru has nothing to regret. The reason why he took it out now is because he has never found a suitable experimental subject and just wanted to do an experiment. In other words, this is the first time he has acted on a seriously injured human body. How is this going, at this time, Tsunade looked at the slowly recovering wound and was completely stunned. She just disinfected and then cleaned the wound. Then, you can see that the wound has completely healed. She thought she had seen it wrong, but she didn't expect. Gene repair solution works great. The fox's wound is automatically recovering at a slow speed. Although it is not as good as the immortal's body, the healing effect is almost the same as when biting the phosphorus in the original novel. Others heard the exclamation and quickly gathered around. What's wrong? Tsunade. His wound. Everyone heard the news and quickly saw the wound that was slowly healing. How so? It's incredible. What's even more surprising is Sarutobi. He can't even speak now. Because he has only seen this kind of situation in the first Hokage. 
Although the recovery speed is slower, it is indeed happening automatically. Healing If we continue at this rate, we won't even need surgery. Orakimaru, did you really make this thing? After understanding the whole story, Sarutobi Hiruzen called Orakimaru aside and said very carefully. This disciple, from graduation to now, has given him too many surprises. Learning talent, fighting talent, battlefield adaptability and adaptability, as well as the newly discovered scientific research talent. Which one is not outstanding? Not to mention anything else, the gene repair fluid just now is enough to attract his attention. Just kidding, it is similar to the first generation Hokage resilience. You know, who is the first Hokage? He is the god of the ninja world. His power is unique in the entire ninja world. Can the recovery power of the first Hokage be achieved with just one potion? Sarutobi Makoto some of them can't believe what they just heard. After all, the second generation Hokage has been studying how to bring the power of Senjo Hashirama back to the world. Now the second generation Hokage has not done it, but he has been beaten by the eight-year-old Orakimaru did it. Yes, teacher. Hearing what Sarutobi said, Orakimaru replied calmly. He originally planned to use the modified genetic enhancement fluid to enter the experimental base of Kanaha village in advance. Although the current situation is somewhat different from what he expected, he can still implement his plan the purpose. Therefore, when he heard Sarutobi Hiruzen's question, he did not hide it. Unbelievable! Hearing Orakimaru's own admission, Sarutobi Hiruzen looked at Orakimaru with obvious horror. Originally, it was a rare good thing that his disciples were excellent, but Orakimaru's current excellence has already it's an exaggeration. As the top group of people in Kanaha village, Sarutobi Hiruzen knows very well. Unless a person's combat power reaches the tailed beast level, no matter how strong he is, there is a limit. But in scientific research and technology with such an outstanding talent in this area, it is entirely possible to change the overall combat effectiveness of a great country's ninja village. In other words, if Orakimaru's talent in this area is discovered by an enemy country, or if he himself wants to be detrimental to the village, it will all it would be a disaster. Sarutobi is a hero after all, and he has already thought a lot at this moment. Eagle, take the three of them back first. Back among the crowd, after seeing Tsunade bandaging the other two slightly injured Umbu, Sarutobi Hiruzen decisively gave orders. Originally, he planned to lead the three of them to familiarize themselves with the battlefield, but the hand Orakimaru showed just now made him instantly changed attention. There is no way, if Orakimaru has really mastered this technology, then his life safety will become extremely important. Yes. Hearing Sarutobi Hiruzen's order, Eagle nodded decisively. He also saw the situation just now, so he naturally guessed something. So, he didn't hesitate too much. The eagle was running in front and Orakimaru and the other three were following behind. Jiraiya and Tsunade seemed to realize something and remain silent the whole way. Even the coldness shown by Orakimaru after the battle was forgotten by them. Three days later, a group of four returned to Kanaha. But after the eagle came back, he turned around and ran back to the front line. Just like that, Orakimaru and the other three suddenly became idle. Orakimaru also decided to take a rest before Kanaha's top brass returned to the village. The next morning, he came to a big tree where he used to rest. He lay on the branches and looked at the sunlight shining through the leaves. There is peace in my heart. A huge flower python was crawling on the branch next to him. Orakimaru turned a blind eye. Because this flower python is the one his parents raised. As long as you enter Kanaha's high-level experimental base, you should have a chance to come into contact with the cells of the first generation Hokage. Orakimaru muttered to himself. Although in his memory, Orakimaru could easily access the cells of the first Hokage, but that should be many years later. Therefore, if you want to contact him in advance, you must take the initiative. This is why Orakimaru did not hesitate to come up with his research results before. Orakimaru. A crisp voice interrupted Orakimaru's thoughts. 
Orikimura turned around and saw Tsunade blinking and staring at him under the tree. What's wrong? Without, it's nothing, I just think the barbecue restaurant at the end of the village seems good. Should we try it? Tsunade is a student of medical ninjutsu. Although her research direction is different from Orikimura's, they are similar. Therefore, she knows the importance of that potion. This time, she came here to discuss this aspect with Orikimaru. Sure. Orikimaru jumped down from the tree let's go. Well, etc. Tsunade quickly followed. The two of them gradually moved away, and the flower python on the tree also turned into white smoke and disappeared. Orikimaru was so straightforward, which made Tsunade a little uncomfortable. But she quickly kept up with Orikimaru. Mirao, a barbecue restaurant. The barbecue here is really good. Tender and juicy. Even Orikimaru has a huge appetite. Because the three of them went to the battlefield and went back and forth plus the search time, it took a total of more than ten days. You can't eat such delicious food while fighting outside. It's so delicious. I don't know where that Jiraiya guy has gone. Otherwise, we can enjoy this delicious food together. Tsunade also ate happily, eating barbecue while hesitating. Seeing Tsunade eating, Orikimaru showed a smile for the first time. You, why are you laughing? Seeing Orikimaru didn't speak, Tsunade raised her head subconsciously. Then she saw Orikimaru's smile. You know, Orikimaru smiles, which is a rare thing. In the more than two years of getting along here, Tsunade can be sure no more than five times. Without, nothing. Orikimaru shook his head slightly. For some reason, every time he saw Tsunade eating, he felt peaceful for no reason. This feeling seemed to be familiar and made him very comfortable. Why are you so weird? Tsunade couldn't help but mutter. But she was young after all, so she quickly put the matter behind her and continued to enjoy the food. Orikimaru wants to obtain Kanaha resources. Therefore, he needs to reveal certain scientific research talents to Kanaha. In this way, Kanaha's higher UPS will definitely arrange for him to participate in some experiments. At that time, whatever you want is just a matter of words. But now, the second Hokage and other senior officials are still on the front line, so he can only wait. Talk to yourself when they come back. He believed that what he showed was enough to attract their attention. But he never expected that the wait would be a month. This morning, he was doing experiments at his home. Tsunade watched Orikimaru's operation process carefully from the side. Tsunade and Jiraiya, ever since they learned that Orikimaru can create a super recovery potion, well, Tsunade and Jiraiya called it that. The two of them admired Orikimaru so much. Even Jiraiya, who likes to argue the most, admires him greatly now. After all, the resilience of this thing is really amazing. Jiraiya has zero talent in medicine, so although he admires Orikimaru, he still has no interest in Orikimaru's research and travels between Kanaha and M.T. Mayaboku every day. But Tsunade is different. She is the future medical master, good at preparing various antidotes and healing medicines. Therefore, he has a strong interest in Orikimaru's super recovery potion. Orikimaru, do you think this herb can be replaced by another herb? Looking at a few green leaves lying quietly in the beaker, Tsunade squatted on the ground and blinked, asking curiously. Of course, although the effect is slightly worse, the main effect is not the effect. How awesome! You guys know so much! Even better than the Dean! Tsunade exclaimed. Orikimaru knew that the director she was talking about was the director of Kanaha Hospital. The majors are all different, so what's the difference between them? Hey, I just think you're awesome. Orikimaru shook his head helplessly, and just as he was about to say something, a burst of noise suddenly came from outside. Hi, outside, what happened? After hearing Orikimaru's words, Tsunade was also confused and ran out of the room in three steps. Soon she understood the whole story. The war ended, Kanaha won a great victory, and the ninjas began to return to the village in large numbers. The villagers are holding a welcoming ceremony. 
a large number of Kanaha ninjas have returned from the front line. At this time, they have arrived at the entrance of Kanaha village. These villagers are all the family members of the ninjas. Seeing their family members coming back, each and every one of them burst into tears. Of course, there are still some who have not come back, or who have come back with corpses. At this time, they also broke down and cried. Even though we won the battle, it was still very sad. Tsunade murmured to herself. Orakimura said this kind of war will continue for many years, just get used to it. Return, will it last for many more years? Of course, do you think that after this war is over, the world will be at peace immediately? Orakimura said calmly. World War II, Third War, Fourth War. Which war is not littered with corpses? There are just some things that are not suitable to be explained clearly. After hearing Orakimura's words, Tsunade couldn't express what she felt in her heart, but I heard Orakimura's voice but it sounded again. Strangeness, why didn't the second Hokage come back? Um? Tsunade was stunned and said, yes, not only did the second grandpa not come back, but neither did Sarutobi sensei Thinking of this, she ran out and stopped one of the ninjas that, Sayama Senpai. Oh? It turns out to be little Tsunade. What's wrong? What's up? The ninja was stunned for a moment, then smiled heartily. Tsunade also smiled and said it's nothing, I just want to ask, didn't the Hokage come back with you? You mean Hokage-sama? Lord Hokage took several other adults to the border to sign an alliance agreement with the Kingdom of Thunder, so it should be two days late. Oh, so that's it. He he, it's okay. Tsunade smiled and stopped asking. But when Orakimura heard this, he couldn't help but frowned. The second Hokage went to sign an alliance agreement with the Kingdom of Thunder? Why does it sound so familiar? Suddenly, Orakimura's mind a flash of inspiration. The second Hokage went to sign an armistice agreement, a gold and silver horn coup? In other words, the second Hokage is going to die? To be honest, Orakimaru was not very impressed by the second Hokage. After coming to Kanaha village for so long, Orakimaru had never seen the second Hokage except when he went to the front line. Sarutobi would take the usual tasks and give them to them to do. And them? Except for Tsunade, he and Jiraiya only glanced at each other from a distance when giving large lectures. Because during this war period, most of the second Hokage was on the front line, and military affairs were cumbersome, most of which were war-related issues. There are not that many important tasks at all, and it takes three genin to meet the Hokage. Therefore, facing the tragedy of the second Hokage, Orakimaru, who was not familiar with him, could only say sorry. Of course, if you want to ask Orakimaru, does he want to change the course of history? Of course there is. However, some things can be changed and some things cannot be changed. Like now. Although he is already very strong now, he is still less than nine years old after all. People speak softly, and not many people will believe what they say. If you run up to others and say, Golden Horn and Silver Horn will cause a coup, and the second Hokage will die. Maybe people will ask you back, how did you know? Then he couldn't answer it, or hesitated a little, so he was immediately arrested and sliced up. Even if it was because of Sarutobi, the higher UPS reluctantly believed what he said. But to put it bluntly, what does the life and death of the second Hokage have to do with him? Please forgive Orakimaru for being a selfish person now. Because of his experiences before time travel, he understood what it means that good people don't live long, and disasters last for thousands of years. He has sworn not to be a good person again. Save people? Not to mention whether it was too late now, even if it was possible, he didn't want to take the risk. Sure enough, it seemed to be to confirm Orakimura's conjecture. Seven days later, Sarutobi Hiruzen and others returned to the village, and they brought back the body of Uchiha Kagami. Three days later, the body of the second Hokage was also transported back from the Kingdom of Thunder. Just like that, the world of Kanaha village in the country of fire changed. First of all, 
there is the funeral of the second Hokage. All Kanaha ninjas participated, including Orokimaru of course. At the funeral, the ninjas of Kanaha couldn't believe their eyes. Why did the second Hokage die in battle even though the war was won? Hasn't the Kingdom of Thunder surrendered? Now they simply can't imagine that the Kingdom of Thunder is also a victim this time. Their second generation Rakage also died. Secondly, Hiruzen Sarutobi will succeed as Hokage. Sarutobi Hiruzen's position as Hokage was given by the second Hokage in times of danger. So on the surface, it seems that it is a sure thing that he will become the third Hokage. However, there is serious fighting within Kanaha village. Of course, many people will be dissatisfied if he becomes Hokage. Among them, his friend Shimura Danzo is one of them. He and Sarutobi had been competing with each other since childhood, but in the end, because of an order given by the second Hokage before his death, he had no chance of becoming the Hokage in this life. At least that was the case when Hiruzen Sarutobi was alive. Because the duty of a ninja is to obey. What's more, the person who issued the order was his spiritual idol, the second Hokage. Of course, in addition to Danzo, the Uchiha clan is also very dissatisfied. Because Kanaha village was founded by the first Hokage and Uchiha Madara. Logically speaking, Kanaha village should have their share of Uchiha. But from the first year of Kanaha to the current Kanaha 19th year, the Hokage has reached the third generation, but there is no Hokage from their Uchiha clan? This has to be said to be a shame. You said that the first Hokage Senjo Hashirama should be the Hokage, so forget it. After all, it is Mr. Ban who conquers the world with you. They also recognized the second Hokage Senjo Tobirama. After all, you are the younger brother of the first Hokage, and both of them have the surname Senju. But why do you, Hiruzen Sarutobi? You are neither the hero who founded the village nor a member of the Senju and Uchiha tribesmen. Why do you become Hokage? However, they were even more miserable than Danzo, and they did not even dare to express their dissatisfaction. Because when the second Hokage was in power, they suppressed their clansmen too hard, and they didn't dare to express anything at all. When the third Hokage takes over, he naturally has to entrust his own people with important responsibilities. Morning, Hokage Conference Room At this time, Sarutobi Hiruzen has already put on his own god robe. He is young, energetic, and high-spirited. Behind him is his longtime friend, Danzo Shimura. Danzo, I'm really sorry about what happened this time. The third Hokage looked apologetic. He knew that Danzo had always wanted to be Hokage, but before he left, the second Hokage asked him to be Hokage. This is something he cannot refuse. Because Hokage is also an honor for him. Hearing this, Shimura Danzo snorted coldly don't make sarcastic remarks there. Teacher, he asked you to be the Hokage. I have nothing to say. Now I just want to ask, how do you plan to secure the position of Hokage? Um? What do you mean? Hearing this, the third Hokage couldn't help but frown. This guy obviously meant something in his words. Shimura Danzo sneered what do you mean? Don't tell me you don't know who is making those voices that oppose you. So what? Hearing this, the third Hokage smiled confidently I believe that with my ability, I can definitely make them. Sarutobi. Danzo Shimura shouted angrily, interrupting the third Hokage please stop being naive. Kanaha was founded by Senju and Uchiha, and your surname is Sarutobi. If you don't quell these objections, you won't be able to secure your position. Quell opposition, Sarutobi was stunned for a moment, then his eyes turned sharp then what do you want to do? Give me Umbu deployment rights. I'll shut them up. I have to say that Danzo is really ruthless in what he does. In order to stabilize his position, he immediately became murderous. No, you can't do that. Sarutobi immediately knew what Danzo meant and rejected it decisively. He knew Danzo's style of dealing with things, so he absolutely couldn't agree. Danzo said calmly don't worry, I won't mess around. That's not okay, we are all ninjas of Kanaha. Sarutobi. Um. 
you are really not suitable for this position. Danzo said calmly a village cannot have only light but no darkness. You are too naive. Sarutobi and Danzo once again had a dispute because of different ideas. Danzo's meaning is very simple, just send those who object to carry out important tasks and then let them die on the way. As for whether he is killed by the enemy or by his own people, that is up to him. All he had to do was prevent others from being suspicious in Kanaha. With Danzo's ability, it was easy to do this. It's just that Sarutobi inherited the will of the first Hokage, which is completely opposite to Danzo. He can be ruthless towards his enemies, but he is still a bit unable to deal with his own people. Sarutobi Hiruzen is now the Hokage. Danzo has no way to disobey Sarutobi, so he has no choice but to agree to Sarutobi's observation for a while. But he was still unwilling to give in and told Sarutobi his other idea. Establishing an independent Umbu training class. Hearing Danzo's idea, Sarutobi Hiruzen was stunned. Danzo wants to establish this institution to help him train Umbu? Are you kidding? Danzo said lightly yes, you are the Hokage now, and there are many things that are not suitable for you. Do it, leave these things to me from now on. This, Sarutobi Hiruzen closed his eyes. As a companion who has grown up together, of course he understands what Danzo is thinking. Danzo has always wanted to compete for the position of Hokage, but unfortunately the second Hokage finally passed the position to him, so Danzo has no choice but to gain some power from another angle. An independent political power other than the Hokage has never existed since the founding of Kanaha, but Hiruzen Sarutobi knew that if he didn't give it, Danzo might do something irreversible, which he didn't want to see. Because the two grew up together, they can be considered the best companions. And as someone who has obtained the position of Hokage, he also feels that he should make some compensation to Danzo in these aspects. Therefore, after much hesitation, Sarutobi Hiruzen quickly made a decision OK, but we still have to discuss it with Koharu and Men Yan. Of course. Danzo didn't refuse. Because he knew that Koharu Kashomi and Mito Kazuo would not oppose him. You know the six disciples of the second Hokage, why Koharu Kashomi and Mito Kaobu became elders. Isn't it because they have no family background? As long as their demands are not too excessive, how can they object without background support? So, the Umbu training class gen, which is independent of the Hokage regime, was established. On the other side, in front of Orokimaru's house. Orokimaru. What's wrong? Can you take a walk with me? This, all right. At noon, two figures walked slowly forward on the street. Today, Orokimaru is still wearing a white robe with Megatama. And Tsunade is wearing green short sleeves and shorts, with a rope wrapped around her waist. Blue belt. Tell me, when will this war end? Tsunade who was walking suddenly said something sentimental. It was obvious that she was in a bad mood. After hearing the question, Orokimaru said lightly I don't know, but I know a way to end the war. Um, any solution? Tsunade was a little surprised. She was just asking casually, and she didn't expect Orokimaru, who was about the same age as herself, to be able to answer. She didn't expect. Orokimaru to bring up such an interesting topic? Orokimaru paused, and then said it coldly. Two words unity. System, unite? Tsunade was surprised. This guy doesn't have a high fever and is talking nonsense, right? Good. Orokimaru ignored him and continued only through unification can we achieve true peace. What, when did you learn to joke? Tsunade was speechless the five major ninja villages have been in conflict for a long time. How easy is it to achieve unification? It's not easy, but it's not impossible. Orokimaru replied calmly forget it, let's not talk about this, let's go, I'll treat you to roast chicken. Alas, how did you know that I like to eat roasted tender chicken? I often see you running to buy things alone. Hee <laughs> hee. I didn't expect you to pay attention to others. Tsunade suddenly blushed. Orokimaru said calmly it's nothing. If I remember correctly, 
Jiraiya has invited you alone many times. I don't want to go with that big pervert. Tsunade said matter-of-factly, and then smiled slightly as for a boyfriend, Orakimaru is more suitable for you. Yeah. Of course, if you want. Let's talk about it when we grow up. Well? So you agree? Facing Tsunade's direct response, Orakimaru was a little overwhelmed. If both parties were adults now, he might not hesitate at all. You may even use some means to release the evil in your heart. But now... The strengthened physique is not the reason for his early development. Even if he has been reborn, he will not be able to have a dramatic relationship with a woman before he is nine years old. After casually giving Tsunade a few perfunctory words, the two of them arrived at the village's grilled chicken restaurant. Hey, that's... As soon as they arrived, the two of them discovered an acquaintance. Oh? Orakimaru? Tsunade? Ha ha! Why are you here? Come, 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 and sit here. A young man in white clothes and white hair saw the two people standing at the door and quickly stood up to say hello to them. Why are you two alone, and Jiraiya didn't come either? That guy went to practice somewhere else. Tsunade said casually. Nowadays, the three ninjas only get together when they are gathering or have missions. Usually, they are usually busy with their own affairs one is doing research, and the other is practicing magic one learns medical ninjutsu. Jiraiya also learned senjutsu, which was originally a very hidden thing. At least until he learned it, Orakimaru and Tsunade couldn't know about it. But things are different now. His whereabouts have long become an open secret between the three of them. Orakimaru knows, and Tsunade naturally knows, but they won't tell others about it. Even if this person is their friend, it's impossible. Orakimaru looked at the young man in white clothes and white hair in front of him. Birahu, are you alone? Of course not, I came with Dai and he went to the toilet. Bailiahu said with a smile. As soon as he finished speaking, a boy wearing green tights came over from the direction of the toilet. Now, now, let me introduce to you. Seeing the person coming, Orakimaru was stunned. In fact, no introduction is needed. Orakimaru also knows him. It's just that he didn't expect that Bailia who actually knew Matt die? This is incredible, okay? But if you think about it carefully, it seems normal. Bailia who was one year younger than him. More than a year ago, Jiraiya had the courage to help Bailia who. So this guy became the follower of the three of them. And Matt die is just one year younger than him. Not only are the two of them the same age but they also have similar physical fitness and ninja talent. Well, they are all at the tail end of the crane. Even if they are not classmates, they should still have a common language. So it's not surprising that they came together. Oh? It turns out that he is the disciple of Lord Hokage, he is really awesome. My name is Matt Day, please give me some advice. With that said, Matt Day bowed slightly to Orakimaru and Tsunade with a loud voice and a very humble attitude. Faced with Matt Dai's respect, Orakimaru said nothing, but Tsunade scratched it a little embarrassedly. Scratch your own hair. No, not so polite, we. Okay, please take a seat. Yes. Mate Day nodded and sat next to Bailiohu. There is something special about this party. Two crane tails, two geniuses. Two types of people who seemed completely impossible to get together, but for various reasons, they sat together by mistake. But Orakimaru, who knows the plot, will naturally not underestimate these two crane tails. Amat Dai, the founder of Eight Gate Dungia. On the other hand, Bayrahu was not willing to be mediocre. In order to catch up with the footsteps of the Sunan, he developed a forbidden technique called a Nagaura no Jutsu. This forbidden technique can fuse ninjas or psychic beasts with one's own body, and can even fuse the blood succession limit. It can be said that it is extremely similar to Orakimaru's genetic fusion. Although his Anigawara technique is completely different from Orakimaru's genetic fusion, he can do this on his own, which can be said to be very powerful. I remember that when Orakimaru first met Beirahu, he had already included this guy in his experiment list. 
it's just that he hasn't decided yet whether he should be his experimental subject or his subordinate. Of course, no matter which one it is, now is not the time. After eating the roast chicken, Orakimaru originally wanted to pay, but Bayrahu tried to force him to pay. Orakimaru was not pretentious about this, because based on his understanding of Bayrahu, if he forced payment, the guy would definitely be unhappy. The four of them came out of the roast chicken. Looking at the two people leaving, Tsunade turned Orakimaru with her arm. Oh, Orakimaru, that guy in green clothes, why do I feel like I've seen him before somewhere? Everyone is from the same village, so it's normal to meet each other. No, I mean the kind that has some impression. Orakimaru raised his hand and was about to speak. Whizzing. Two Umbu came out of nowhere and landed in front of them, interrupting his thoughts. Orakimaru, summoned by the Hokage. Hearing this, Orakimaru breathed a sigh of relief. Have you finally thought of yourself? Hokage Conference Room. The third Hokage, Hiruzen Sarutobi, sat at the top of the table wearing a royal robe. On both sides of him are three elders, Koharu Koharu, Mito Kaden, and Danzo Shimura. Akimichi Tofu and Uchiha Kagamai, both disciples of the second Hokage, are not included in this list. Although the six of them are both disciples of the second Hokage, Akimichi Takafu has family power and is not suitable to be a high-level official in Kanaha. And the Uchiha Mirror? Now it's a corpse. Even if he is still alive, the Uchiha clan has always been the target of suppression by the second Hokage. Even if he has been recognized by the second Hokage and affirmed by Danzo, Uchiha is Uchiha. Want to join the top management of Kanaha? It's simply impossible. You said that the potion made by Orakimaru can give people amazing recovery power? After discussing the details of the establishment of Root, several people finally shifted the topic to Orakimaru. It's just that Shimura Danzo still couldn't believe his ears at this time. Since signing the alliance contract with the Kingdom of Thunder, they have been busy. Busy with the diplomacy between the two countries, busy with the two countries' Hokage's funeral, busy with Sarutobi Hiruzen's rise to power. Now that everything was finally ready, Sarutobi Hiruzen finally remembered his disciple. Then when he mentioned Orakimura's situation, they all showed incredulous expressions. What a surprise! Yeah, it's unbelievable. Sarutobi Hiruzen nodded slightly This matter is absolutely true, Eagle can prove it. How can this be? Danzo still doesn't believe it. You know, it's similar to the resilience of the first Hokage. So many professionals at the top of Kanaha have studied it, but there has been no progress at all. At this time, it was researched by an eight or nine year old kid. Who would believe it? Sarutobi. Hiruzen smiled bitterly I don't think it's possible, but that was the situation at the time. If you don't believe it, wouldn't you know if you investigate it yourself? Of course I'll investigate. Danzo said calmly it's just this kind of thing. For such an important matter, even if he had believed Sarutobi's words, he would investigate it thoroughly afterwards. Because this fact really matters. Of course. The most important thing is that it's hard for people to believe this kind of thing just by hearing it, right? Tuck tuck tuck. There's a knock on the door. Orakimaru, dressed in casual clothes, pushed open the door and entered. Teacher. Orakimaru called out politely. In any case, Sarutobi did teach him a lot. There is nothing wrong with calling him teacher. As soon as he entered the conference room, he felt a few strange looks. Sarutobi Hiruzen he he smiled Orakimaru, you are here. Well, you are talented and intelligent. Do you know why the teacher is looking for you? No, teacher. Orakimaru said calmly. He has been waiting for this day for too long. Ahem, then the teacher will stop beating around the bush. Sarutobi Hiruzen's meaning is very obvious. He just wants Orakimaru to share the scientific research results with the village. First, he plays the emotional card and talks about the master-disciple relationship, and then finds out the ins and outs of why Orakimaru engages in scientific research. Orakimaru came here for a purpose, 
and he naturally knew all about it. However, he still concealed some things. For example, the raw materials for gene repair solution. Because of this raw material, there are two kinds of herbs that are not available in this world, at least he has not seen them so far. If you want to make the next potion, unless you find the same herb, you have to find a substitute. When they heard about the rare medicinal materials, Saratobi Harrison and Danzo were a little disappointed, but they also felt that this seemed more reasonable. Otherwise, if you just make a potion, you can gain a ninja's recovery power similar to that of an immortal body in a short period of time, then why would anyone else play with it? Of course, even so, Orokimaru's research results still surprised them. You know, Orokimaru is less than nine years old now. With his scientific research talent, he can make a huge contribution to the village with just a little training. In this case, Orokimaru, you go back first. As for the arrangements on your side, wait until we discuss it. Okay, teacher. Orokimaru was not in a hurry, turned around and left the office. He spent a lot of time waiting anyway, and he didn't care about the past few days. After Orokimaru left, Danzo also left shortly after. He was the first to find the eagle of the Umbu. Eagle at this time I was on duty, and when I saw Danzo, I didn't react at all. Group, Lord Danzo. Danzo nodded slightly well, let me ask you, two months ago, Sarutobi was the one who led you to eliminate the Kumo Ninja Division. Yes, my lord. That time when your subordinates were injured. After listening to Eagle's story, Danzo quickly made his own judgment in his mind. Suppressing the shock in his heart, he found the fox again and checked his wounds. It is said that the wound that was so deep that the bone was visible at that time does not even leave a scar now, and even the old scars have disappeared. Not only does it have the ability to repair cells, but it also has the ability to regenerate cells? Isn't this the resilience of the first Hokage? Suddenly, Danzo shocked Orokimaru into a god. This guy is simply a genius. He had already noticed Orokimaru, but now he was even more concerned. Orokimaru was very satisfied with the reaction of Kanaha's top management. Because for him, although the repair effect of the genetic repair solution is very good, it is actually only average. You know, in the world of Naruto, in addition to the sage body of the first Hokage and the special physique of Siang Phosphorus, there are many other abilities that can also achieve this kind of recovery effect. Even more exaggerated than the effect of genetic repair solution. For example, with the immortal talisman of M.T. Mayaboku, even if Hamura was punched through the stomach, he could still be resurrected with full health in a short time. Another example is Kisame's same Hata, which absorbs Chakra to help heal its owner, and it's incredibly fast. Another example is Tsunade's own creative regeneration. When she uses this technique, even if you stab her in the heart, it will have no effect. Therefore, gene repair solution and the like are nothing at all. With a small amount of gene repair solution, you can get a lot of experimental materials, which is even more profitable. Walking on the bustling streets of Kanaha village, looking at the lively crowd, Orokimaru sighed in his heart. This is the strength of Kanaha. Even after going through the battlefield, there are still so many people on this street. Don't underestimate the importance of population. You must know that the land of fire country is the richest area in the entire ninja world. The population base is also the largest. Although there are many families in Kanaha, these family ninjas only account for a small proportion of Kanaha ninjas. Most of Kanaha is composed of civilian ninjas. These talents are the cornerstone of Kanaha, and the major families are just the pillars. It doesn't work without anyone. This is the first time Orokimaru has come to this world and put down everything like this, walking leisurely on the street, watching these villagers coming and going, and immersing himself in it. This feeling is very comfortable. Make him want to enjoy all this unconsciously. Orokimaru, Orokimaru. Orokimaru was just about to go shopping elsewhere when he suddenly heard a sneaky voice coming over. Orokimaru turned around and saw Tsunade standing in front of a skewer stall, waving to her excitedly. He walked over slowly what's wrong. 
Can it, please eat this? Tsuna pointed at the kebabs on the stall next to him and said excitedly. Seeing Tsunade's drooling look, Orikimaru was stunned. I just went to see the teacher's kung fu, you, hungry again. Just now, Bailiahu and the others were here, and I wasn't even full. Tsunade said matter-of-factly. She eats a lot. However, as a princess of the Senjo clan, she naturally has to maintain her daughter's image in front of others. So when faced with her favorite food just now, she could only stop it. Hearing this, Orikimaru nodded slightly, and suddenly he thought of something. Did you lose all your money again? This, hey hey. Tsunade smiled awkwardly. You still understand me? Really, Orikimaru is helpless. He took the money and bought ten skewers, handed it to Tsunade, then turned and left. Because he is doing experiments, even if he has been doing the task for more than two years, he is not very rich now. The deposit is less than 100,000 tails. However, although he is very poor now, except for eating and buying ninja tools, there is nothing else in this world that requires expenditure. So when faced with Tsunade's request, he had no reason to refuse. Seeing Orikimaru leaving, Tsunade chased after him with meat skewers. Hey, Orikimaru, wait. Won't you eat some? Tsunade handed the meat skewer to Orikimaru. I don't want to eat any more. I want to go to the training ground to practice ninjutsu. Then I'm going to. Let's go. Kanaha village, training ground. Jiraiya was lying on the grass sweating profusely, with a confused look on his face. Really, I, Jiraiya-sama, why do I have to train so hard? Everyone has a reason to work hard. Either for money, power, or girls. However, no matter what it is for, there is always a reason. At this time, Jiraiya can't find himself a reason to work hard. But as soon as he finished speaking, the situation where he went to find Orikimaru and unexpectedly ran into Tsunade appeared in his mind. I don't want to go with that big pervert. As for a boyfriend, Orikimaru is more suitable for you. This sentence deeply hurt his young heart. Moreover, Tsunade said this sentence more than once, and once she said it in front of him. In the past, he only thought Tsunade was joking, but now. Damn it, Tsunade really likes Orikimaru, so, the answer is very simple. Jiraiya suddenly felt like he had a clear realization I want to become the most powerful ninja, and I want to impress that guy Tsunade. Um, not just Tsunade. I want all the ladies to look at me with admiration. Ha ha ha, now that the goal is clear, there is no time to dilly-dally. Thinking of this, Jiraiya immediately stood up like a carp, and his whole body was full of energy as if he had been on a stimulant. He clenched his fists with both hands and looked up to the sky and roared. I want to work hard. But his motivation lasted for less than a second, and his whole person turned to stone in an instant. Because in the distance, Orikimaru and Tsunade were walking side by side towards the training ground. Tsunade was still holding meat skewers in her hand, and from time to time feed Orikimaru a bite. Although Orikimaru ate reluctantly, the bright smile on Tsunade's face was unfailing. Ah, ah, for, why do you do this to me, ah? Jiraiya is going crazy. Orikimaru, I challenge you, challenge. Kanaha training ground. Looking at the white-haired boy who suddenly appeared from the front, Orikimaru was a little surprised. Just seeing Jiraiya's movements, he instantly understood what was going on. It must have been Tsunade teasing him just now when he was there, this guy saw him. Jiraiya clenched his fists with both hands, full of fighting spirit, just like when he was in the ninja school before, eager to have a duel between men with Orikimaru. Jiraiya, please save it. Before Orikimaru could speak, Tsunade, who was nibbling on a kebab next to her, casually scorned him with your current strength, how can you be Orikimaru's opponent? I don't care, I'm going to fight him. Jiraiya's second disease broke out and shouted loudly Orikimaru, come on, let's have a showdown. Idiot. Orikimaru didn't want to pay attention to him. How could he not know what Jiraiya was thinking? It's just that fighting him was really pointless. Orikimaru, 
stop. Seeing Orokimaru was about to leave, Jiraiya immediately shouted, clenched his fists and stepped forward punch me. Jiraiya seems to have made up his mind. He must have a fight today before he gives up. In the past two months, his strength has improved a lot, so he still has the confidence to face Orokimaru now. Orokimaru's eyes were slightly stern, and he turned sideways to let go of his fist, and kicked him at the same time. The moves he used to deal with Uchihachi couldn't help but use them on Jiraiya. However, Jiraiya was not Uchiha gathered, and he also knew Orokimaru's moves very well. If he missed the attack, he immediately turned around to block. Bang! Orokimaru kicked Jiraiya on the arm, and Jiraiya was kicked out. What a powerful force! Although Jiraiya had expected it, his arm was still a little numb from Orokimaru's kick. He was still in the air, forcibly twisting his body, posing and landing firmly. However, the powerful one on Orokimaru's leg the force caused him to slide for several meters before landing on his feet. Give up, Jiraiya, you are no match for me, Orokimaru said calmly. Since using the genetic enhancement liquid, his physical and mental strength have been greatly increased. In terms of strength and reaction, he is naturally much stronger than ordinary ninjas. Although Orokimaru feels that his physical strength jutsu and so on are not in line with his style. He should be the same as Orokimaru in the original work, following the root of ninjutsu and forbidden jutsu. But the changes in his body are beyond his control. In someone's words it's, I'm so awesome, do you blame me? Stop talking nonsense and watch the moves. After landing, Jiraiya was still full of fighting spirit. While speaking, he quickly formed seals with his hands. Fire escape. Flame bomb. Boom. Huge flames, with hot air waves, swept towards Orokimaru overwhelmingly. Jiraiya he is also very good at fire escape. His fire escape technique can be said to be no worse than the Uchiha clan who are the best at fire escape. Fire escape. Flame bullet is Jiraiya's unique fire escape technique. Hold the oil made from chakra in your mouth and spit it out. It is a ninjutsu that uses fire escape to burn it at the same time and attacks in the shape of a fire bullet. Limiting the amount of oil can shorten the activation time of the ninjutsu. If the enemy is careless, the fire bomb with oil will be burned to death. It can be used up. It can also spit out the oil multiple times in a roll like ordinary fire escape. It is different from other fire escapes in that there is oil in his fire escape. After hitting the enemy, it is easier to stick to the enemy and have a burning effect. Seeing this fire escape, Tsunade, who had already stepped aside, was speechless. Jiraiya, this guy is serious about it as soon as he comes here. She was a little surprised, but her tone was unusually relaxed. She was not worried about Orokimaru at all. She even walked to sit on the grass nearby as if watching a show. Because she also knew Orokimaru's strength very well. The fact is true. In this way, facing this intensity of fire escape, Orokimaru not only did not hide, but also had no interest in releasing ninjutsu to block it. The fire quickly enveloped Orokimaru. Looking at the fire that was still burning in front of him, Jiraiya did not he did not relax his vigilance, because he knew that Orokimaru would not be killed so easily. After losing the chakra supply, the fire gradually disappeared, but where was Orokimaru still in the scene? Sure enough, it's gone. Jiraiya seemed to have expected it. He was about to search where the other party was when he suddenly became vigilant and rushed forward a few meters. The next second... Orokimaru's figure slowly appeared in front of Jiraiya just now. Location. He came out of the soil on the ground. There is no doubt. Earth Escape. Sarutobi Hiruzen's best five-element escape technique has been used by Orokimaru at this time. It seems that if I don't defeat you today, I won't be able to practice properly. Hey, it's good to have this awareness. Jiraiya grinned and bit his finger to form another seal Orokimaru, please remember this moment. Today is the day that my handsome and handsome Lord Jiraiya defeats you, this stinky snake. Spiritual Art Bang! 
the runes spread and white smoke rose. A toad larger than an adult appeared in the sight of the three of them. Jiraya, why do you always like to call me when I'm on vacation? Toad's dissatisfied voice reached the ears of several people. Stop talking nonsense, I must defeat Orakimura today. Nanny. Orakimura saw Jiraya directly summoning a toad, and couldn't help but narrowed his eyes in this case, come on then. Similarly, the seal. The art of psychic. Bang. A flower python that is bigger than a toad appears in everyone's sight. Orakimura doesn't know the name of the toad that Jiraya channeled. I don't a Euro trademark T know what species this toad belongs to. He only knew that with Jiraya's current strength, no matter what toad was channeled, it would not be able to defeat his snake. Because snakes are the natural enemies of toads. Unless Jiraya can now channel the two immortals Fukazaku and Shima from Mayaboka Mountain, no matter which one he channels, he will only be beaten. Sure enough, when he saw the flower python spitting out the letter behind Orakimaru, the toad that was channeled began to sweat on its forehead. During previous training, it hated Orakimaru's snakes the most, and now it's being channeled to challenge him? Is this guy Jiraya trying to trick a toad? At how young are these two guys able to use necromancy? Too strong. That is, Orakimaru, who used to be in our class. How awesome. The other one. Is it Jiraya? Has Jiraya grown to this point? The training ground is very big, so there will naturally be other students, but they are far away. But the fire release ninjutsu released by Jiraya just now attracted their attention. At this time, they were watching the battle between the two, let out a voice of admiration. There is no way, it is still very scary that a child of this age can release such an awesome ninjutsu. And after the opponent's ninjutsu is released, it is a psychic technique? This is even more unbelievable. Especially Orakimaru the snake, generally the more timid students, are even starting to retreat. At the same time, in the woods next to the training ground, there are two figures hidden on the trunk of a certain big tree. The dense woods have become their natural protective umbrella. They wore animal masks on their faces, and one of them held a monocular in his hand. It's unbelievable that this is a battle between two genin. Yes. Even many adult Chuyunin can't do this. No wonder Danzo-sama ordered us to keep an eye on him, at their age. Oops, no good. Flash mob. The two reacted quickly, and instantly dodged to the side. Phew. As soon as the two left the place, the white-haired kid wearing a beige red-edged robe flew towards them with a toad. In midair and there was the sound of a toad complaining. Hateful, little Jiraya, don't summon me again for this boring battle next time. Bang! As soon as he finished speaking, the toad turned into a ball of white smoke and disappeared. Boom! Jiraya fell to the ground immediately, making a shallow pit in the ground, and a lot of smoke and dust rose from the pit. Pain, 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 it hurts, Orakimaru, this guy, is too cruel. In the smoke and dust, Jiraya rubbed his head, complained, and struggled to sit up from the ground. Just now, he and his toad were swept over by the snake and the dragon's tail. He couldn't be beaten to death. Who would have thought that Orakimaru would actually use illusions on him and the toad? Although the illusion only lasted for a moment, it was enough for the snake to attack them. If the current illusion doesn't use that power, won't it be able to affect it for a long time? The first time he used Genjutsu on a toad made Orakimaru understand his current level of Genjutsu. Genjutsu is a technique that uses spiritual power to interfere with the enemy's chakra and cause the enemy's chakra to be disordered to cause hallucinations. It is a must for ninja combat. One of the three skills. For example, when the Uchiha clan uses the Sharingan on the enemy, they use the huge spiritual power of the Sharingan to interfere with the opponent's chakra, thereby causing the illusion of the enemy's chakra disorder. The caster the stronger the spiritual power of the enemy, the faster it can interfere with the enemy's chakra. On the contrary, if the enemy has more chakra in the body, the more troublesome it will be for the caster to interfere. 
This is why those shadow level powerhouses rarely fall prey to illusions. The reason? Because they have a huge amount of chakra, it is difficult to use mental power to interfere, and it will take a long time. During this period of time, the shadow level strongman can easily break away from your mental interference. Unless your pupil the power, that is, the spiritual power, can be so strong that it is outrageous, such as Uchiha Madara. Or, your illusion is outside the scope of ordinary illusion, such as Izanami, Infinite Tsukuyomi, etc. Gods, wait! Otherwise, illusions will be difficult to work on shadow level experts. Just now, Orakimaru used a range type illusion like Narakumi no Jutsu to interfere with Jiraiya and the Toad, and then let himself the snake took the opportunity to attack. Not to mention, the effect was very good. Although Jiraiya reacted in time, the gap in strength left him no time to defend. Okay, you go back. Orakimaru said to the snake in his mind. Yes, master. The flower python said respectfully, and after saying that, it turned into a ball of white smoke and disappeared with a bang sound. Looking at the disappearing flower python, Orakimaru suddenly thought of an interesting thing. He signed a blood contract, so except for the few intelligent snakes in Longdi Cave, all other snakes with incomplete intelligence will obey my orders unconditionally. With my genetic technology now so awesome, can I cultivate a snake with incomplete intelligence? Like 10,000 snakes? Or a snake several times or a hundred times stronger than 10,000 snakes? If it is really possible, then it is also a fortress, right? System, is there such genetic technology that can breed pets? Have. Really? Orakimaru raised his eyebrows what? Biological genetic evolution fluid. The system's answer is very simple and straightforward. As long as you continue to experiment, all scientific research materials will be provided unconditionally. You don't need to develop it yourself. Orakimaru knows that this is equivalent to having predecessors contribute scientific research results to you on the road of scientific research. It can be said that you have taken a big shortcut. Otherwise, even if his current genetic knowledge is very good, it will be even more difficult to develop any new genetic drug. Just like those experts, just one genetic enhancement solution is probably enough for them to study for a lifetime. Orakimaru, you, what did you just use? Tsunade was a little unresponsive at this time. She was still holding the two remaining meat skewers in her hand. She didn't know what to say. In the previous battle, the two of them fought well, but at the last moment, she I really don't understand. Why didn't the toad react at all when the snake went to hit the toad? Isn't this different from normal battles? Orakimaru said casually it's nothing, I just used an illusion. Magical, illusion? Tsunade was stunned for a moment, then quickly realized when did you learn to use illusions to fight? I've always done it, I've just never used it, just on a whim, suddenly I want to try it. Orakimaru said calmly. Although in the original work, Orakimaru was defeated by Uchiha Itaki using illusion, but in fact, Orakimaru's illusion ability is still very strong. Otherwise, he wouldn't have just used a look. He almost scared the three brats from class 7 to death. As long as he doesn't encounter those genjutsu geeks pretending to be Sharinan, Orakimaru's genjutsu ability can still be used. Especially now. The genetic enhancement fluid has fully improved his genjutsu abilities. Physical and mental strength, and because of the existence of the system, he has integrated the power of Uchiha. His mental strength has reached an exaggerated level. Even without the power of Uchiha, he can still perform ordinary illusions. Hearing that Orakimaru Tsunade was speechless. It turns out that this guy used Jiraiya to practice. At this time, Jiraiya did not return to the training ground, but simply lay down on the spot. I have to say, he is very miserable, really miserable. He finally practiced a combined ninjutsu with his toad and prepared to show off his skills in front of Orakimaru, but he was defeated without even releasing the ninjutsu. Not to mention how frustrating this feeling is. Ah, I still can't beat this guy Orakimaru. 
Jiraiya looked at the sky and complained. He likes Tsunade, everyone knows this. It's a pity that Tsunade doesn't like him, everyone knows this. Not only does Tsunade dislike him, but she often beats him up. This made him very depressed. He knew that Tsunade liked Orokimaru, so he wanted to become stronger to make Tsunade change her mind. But being abused again and again made him want to give up. No matter how hard you try, you can't beat that guy Orokimaru, right? No, no, I am the extremely handsome Lord Jiraiya, I must find a way to defeat Orokimaru. Thinking of this, he closed his eyes and began to meditate. In fact, in the original work, through hard work and chance, Jiraiya could defeat Orokimaru after learning Senjutsu. However, he was very slow to learn the magic of immortality, and it took many years before he learned the magic of immortality. Therefore, if he wants to defeat Orokimaru, he probably has no hope in this life. Orokimaru trained with Tsunade at the training ground until the evening. After bidding farewell to Tsunade, he returned to his residence. Take a look at your properties panel. The current technology is, cell transplantation. Next stage unlocked, splinter cell. There are a lot of technology points left, a total of 23,000 points. Orokimaru took one look and didn't care anymore. Because the skill of cell transplantation requires not only Kanaha's support to use it. And for him, there is no gene fusion that is useful. Gene fusion can perfectly integrate other people's genes. As for cell transplantation, it can only be done through surgery, just like in the original work. Not only does the body look defective after the transplant, but it also fails to unleash the full power of the genes. Just like the original Captain Yamato. The cells of the first Hokage were transplanted, but they didn't have one-tenth of the fighting power of the first Hokage. They could only use wood release to do greening. It was a waste. The only advantage of cell transplantation is that it is cheap. Yes, cheap. Very cheap. There is no need for gene fusion fluid or any systematic things. It only needs to be combined with some ordinary drugs and you can complete the operation by yourself on the experimental subject. Therefore, Orokimaru is not in a hurry for such a useless skill. Forget it, let's see what the higher UPS in Kanaha say first. After saying that, Orokimaru ignored these trivial matters and lay down directly on his little bed, closing his eyes and sleeping. In the next few days, Orokimaru lived a very leisurely life, not doing experiments or training. There was no task assigned to him from above. When he has nothing to do, he goes shopping, eats, and occasionally takes a bath in the bathhouse. His life is not too comfortable. Finally, on the fourth day, Sarutobi Hiruzen called him to the office. Orokimaru, after thinking about it these days, I always feel that. Although you are also very talented in scientific research, you are also my proudest disciple, so I decided to ask for your opinion first. Well, where are you planning to develop? Hearing what Sarutobi Hiruzen said, Orokimaru was stunned. What do you mean by this? teacher. Oh, I didn't make it clear. Sarutobi Hiruzen laughed what I mean is that although you have good talents in both ninja and scientific research, a person's energy is limited. If you can make achievements in one field, then he is already an amazing genius. You are still young now, so it seems that you can take care of both at the same time, but as you grow older, you will find it more and more difficult. As your teacher, I have the responsibility to guide you correctly. What does the teacher mean by asking me to choose one and give up the other? Orokimaru understood the meaning of Sarutobi's words. This is just like choosing a major in modern times. When you have talents in both fields, it is easy to achieve results by focusing on one aspect. But if you want to take care of both, just it is possible to lose both sides. Because human energy is limited, you cannot achieve results in two completely different fields. This is common sense. Sarutobi Hiruzen nodded slightly well, your understanding is indeed very good. Gao, that's what the teacher means. This, can't you choose both? Orokimaru asked tentatively. He knew that Hiruzen Sarutobi meant well, 
and the fact was just as he said. It is difficult for one person to balance the energy of two fields. Especially ninja and scientific research are two completely different concepts. That's even more troublesome. But what he doesn't know is that he has a system. More than 95% of the knowledge of each scientific research project is directly instilled into him by the system. He only needs to spend an hour or two to absorb this knowledge. Now, during the day, he didn't even have to think about scientific research, and he could still conduct normal experiments at night. So Saratobi's worry was completely unnecessary. After hearing Orakimura's words, Saratobi Hiruzen thought for a moment, said with some worry it's possible, but it's very risky. To be honest, Orakimura is so talented, he really doesn't want Orakimura to become useless like this. It's okay, teacher. Orakimura said calmly I have always focused on improving my own strength. Studying these is just a hobby. Industry, hobby. Sarutobi Hiruzen was stunned for a moment, then twitched his lips. You are only eight years old, and you can make such a powerful recovery potion as a hobby? How do you let the researchers at the top of Kanaha live? Do you think they are shit eaters? But Sarutobi is now the Hokage so naturally he won't say such vulgar words. And thinking about it carefully, it seems so. Because after Orakimura graduated, he always arrived on time for every gathering, training, and mission. And every time I complete the training mission, I do it very well. In other words, his ninja ability has not slackened at all. Did he really complete the recovery potion in his spare time? Oh my god! Thinking about this, Hiruzen Sarutobi should take a deep breath, and then praise this person it's so terrifying. Well, now that you have decided, the teacher will support you no matter what. As he said that, Sarutobi knocked on his desk. Whoosh! An umbu wearing an animal mask appeared in front of the two of them. He also held a money box in his hand. The umbu handed the money box to the third hokage, and then disappeared into the office without saying a word. Sarutobi Hiruzen pushed the money box on the table here are two million tails, although compared to the value of your scientific research results, it is a bit less. But take it first. If you need anything in the future, just tell the teacher. The teacher will try his best to satisfy you. Thank you teacher. Orakimura said without politeness at all. He did not refuse because he knew that this was what he deserved and compared to the technology of genetic repair fluid, two million tails is really pitiful. Although there are two rare the medicinal materials can only be sold in the system, but Orakimaru has already found a substitute. Although the effect after the experiment is not good, as long as this technology is announced, it will be enough to sell it for a sky-high price. Well, you go down, I will send someone to contact you later. Yes. Orakimaru took the money box, turned and left. After Orakimaru left, Danzo walked out of the lounge next to the office. Sarutobi, your disciple is very good, how about giving him to me? Hearing this, Sarutobi's expression changed Danzo, you said you wanted to establish an independent umbu training class. I agreed without saying a word, but this child is less than nine years old. Umbu. Don't they need to be trained from a young age? Moreover, this kid has the potential to become an umbu. Danzo retorted. Umbu, because the missions they perform are more confidential, they require higher loyalty. If you start training them from a young age, they are more likely to be brainwashed, and your loyalty will be higher. In addition, you occasionally need to kill some irrelevant people in the missions. People so Umbu need to have a certain dark side in their hearts. In both aspects, Orakimaru is very suitable. Hearing Danzo's words, Sarutobi was stunned for a moment, and then thought of the time when he fought against Kumo Ninja, Orakimaru killed him a cloud ninja who had no power to fight back suddenly had a slightly stern look in his eyes. Orakimaru is too young, so don't take any chances with him. Danzo established the root and wanted to inject fresh blood into the root. So, he noticed Orakimaru. Just like he noticed Kakashi later. Why would Danzo pay attention to them? 
because Orokimaru and Kakashi have two things in common. Unparalleled ninja talent and darkness deep inside. In his mind, such talents should enter his department. If you don't become his subordinate, it will be a waste of resources. But now, because his route has just been established and is currently unstable, he can only obey the orders of the third Hokage. On the other hand, Orokimaru had already considered Danzo. Perhaps to other people, Danzo is an ambitious, selfish and conceited person, and he will do whatever it takes to get the position of Hokage. It's a very dangerous boss. But for Orokimaru, Danzo is nothing to worry about. Why do you say that? Because in Orokimaru's heart, Danzo is actually very pathetic. He has great ambitions. He wants to be the Hokage and lead Kanaha to dominate the ninja world, but he does not have the strength to match his ambitions. Not to mention leading Kanaha to unify the ninja world, he has never even sat in the position of Hokage that was originally planned. He was pinned down by Sarutobi Hiruzen all his life, and he never got over until he died. A careerist who is not strong enough to support his own ambitions cannot make any waves at all. Whether it is the original Orokimaru or the current Orokimaru, he has never regarded Danzo as his opponent. At most, he regards him as a tool that can be used. Use his power, his selfishness, and his ambition to help him accomplish things that he can't usually accomplish. Hey, Orokimaru! Far away, Orokimaru heard that familiar voice. Looking up, sure enough, Jiraiya ran towards him with a whooshing sound. Oh, Orokimaru! What is that in your hand? Money box? Um. Wow, how much is in it? Pack it in such a big box. Two million tails. Scare? Jiraiya was stunned you, have you done an S-level mission? Roughly the same. Orokimaru replied casually. The banknotes in this world are one thousand tails each. If you buy two million tails, this ordinary money box will just be filled. With an S-level mission, the maximum commission is two million tails. Therefore, there is nothing wrong with Jiraiya thinking so. Good, amazing. Hearing Orokimaru's admission, Jiraiya realized something and suddenly looked envious. This guy must have contributed the technology of the super recovery potion to the village. Otherwise, how could he, a genin, receive an S-level mission? How could it be possible to get so much commission? Let's go and treat you to barbecue. Orokimaru's words interrupted Jiraiya's thoughts. He was a little depressed, but he suddenly became energetic. Oh, are you serious? Although under normal circumstances, the money a genin earns is enough for a small family. But Jiraiya never knows what saving is. Therefore, a luxury item like barbecue is still very attractive to him damn it. Orokimaru nodded slightly and took it as his own answer. Two million tails is not a lot, but it is definitely a lot. So after you have money, you naturally have to plan. Orokimaru took the money to treat Tsunade and Jiraiya to a barbecue, and then bought a larger house. In Kanaha village, houses are not valuable. A three-story building covering an area of 150 square meters costs less than one million tails in total. The only troublesome thing is that to buy a house, you need to apply to the Hokage. Of course, given Orokimaru's current situation, Hiruzen Sarutobi has no reason to disagree. The next night, before Orokimaru started moving, several Ambu knocked on his door. Orokimaru opens the door. The person who came was an adult male, wearing a fox mask and a slight smile in his voice. Orokimaru, we meet again. Who are you? Fox. Orokimaru's pupils narrowed, and he quickly recognized the identity of the person. After all, we had performed missions together before. The fox nodded slightly it's me. Thank you for what happened before. There's nothing to be thankful for. Even without my potion, your injury can be cured. Orokimaru said and paused here you guys, what's up? Oh, that's it. The Hokage ordered me to take you to your workstation at the experimental base and help you move the experimental equipment. That's it, Orokimaru glanced at the five umbu behind the fox and nodded slightly then come in and move. 
With Orakimura's permission, the five Umbu filed in. Originally, the Umbu were a little surprised to see Orakimaru as a child, but now that they saw Orakimaru's laboratory, they were even more impressed. How could an eight or nine year old kid have so many experimental equipment? But they are Umbu, and this mission is classified as confidential, so naturally they won't meddle in such nosy matters. Not talking nonsense, he took out his space scroll and started to help Orakimaru move things. The Umbu moved very quickly and in less than an hour, all the experimental equipment in Orakimaru's house was wiped out. Then the fox led the way, Orakimaru followed closely behind him. Everyone jumped on the roof and soon arrived at Kanaha's secret experimental base. Here is a building in the corner of Kanaha village. The building is very spacious and there are four guards at the door. The fox stepped forward and exchanged commands with the guard, and then walked into the building with Orakimaru. The experimental base is in the basement of the building. It is brightly lit and there are even several staff members busy. The fox pointed at two of the clean and spacious laboratories and said, according to the arrangement above, these two laboratories are yours. The two rooms are very spacious, except for the necessary tables and chairs, there is nothing else. Just perfect for Orakimaru to put things in. Orakimaru was very satisfied with this and ordered the Umbu to place the experimental equipment in the designated location and begin to become familiar with the environment. There are eight or nine rooms in the basement, but there are not many staff, only four or five people. Seeing that Orakimaru was still a little kid, they couldn't help but be stunned. It turns out that the person coming today is still a child? Simply incredible. Hey, kid, what's your name? One of the researchers raised his chin towards Orakimaru. Orakimaru. Orakimaru replied calmly. He didn't discuss academic ideas with these people, so his tone was relatively cold. Orakimaru? The researcher didn't care it's okay, just take a look at it yourself. Good. Seeing that the other party seemed very busy, Orakimaru didn't bother him anymore. He just watched quietly from the side. These researchers seemed to be dissecting a corpse. Looking at the forehead protector taken off next to him, it should belong to Kumo Ninja. Orakimaru after watching it for a while, I nodded secretly in my mind. Although these guys are just minor players, their skills are indeed good. Professional anatomy techniques without many years of clinical experience cannot achieve this level. Now I am making strengthening fluids and so on. He is very handy but there are still only theories about anatomy and surgery. If you want to become a great scientist, you must learn to use a scalpel. Well, thinking of this, Orakimaru immediately made a decision in his heart. He has so many high-tech products, you can gain absolute control over the experiment by showing your hands. Therefore, the production of potions can be temporarily stopped. Next, let's learn biological anatomy. With the goal and direction, Orakimaru was determined, and looked at after a few minutes, he turned around and left. A speechless night. Early the next morning, Orakimaru started moving. The experimental equipment in the old house is gone, so he only needs to take some important items and daily necessities to the new house. What surprised Orakimaru was that Tsunade and Jiraiya learned about his move when they had dinner together yesterday and they actually came over to help him pack their things early this morning. Especially Jiraiya. She and Tsunade tortured him so much, and he still came to help her move her things? He is simply an unbeatable Xiao Xiang. Hey, Jiraiya, learn more from Orakimaru. Tsunade sat on the tatami next to her very rudely, like a big sister giving advice look at others, they can buy a new house by themselves at such a young age, and then look at you. How can this compare? Besides, if I can save so much money, can you be my girlfriend? Jiraiya said nonchalantly. This guy is not only thick-skinned, but he is also always straightforward in his speech. No matter what you say about me, I like beautiful girls anyway. I'm just a bitch. If you don't accept it, you'll bite me. When you hear that Tsunade looked disdainful at Leia's words be your girlfriend. Go ahead and dream. Isn't that enough? 
If you don't want to be my girlfriend, then why do you care so much about me? I only know Orokimaru all day long, Orokimaru is so annoying. Oh, you guy, how do you talk? How about it? Jiraiya smiled contemptuously and continued to seek death want to have a fight here. I won't be afraid of you, you unfeminine flat-chested woman. Except, and I. Tsunade's face suddenly darkened, and she clenched her fists Orokimaru. Um. You don't want this house anymore, right? Well, this house is too old and too small. I will never come here again. That's good. A dark smile appeared on Tsunade's face, and at the same time she pinched her fingers and made a crackling sound. Ha ha, Jiraiya. You, what do you want to do? Jiraiya seemed to realize that something was wrong and swallowed his saliva. Cold sweat broke out on his forehead, and he stepped back involuntarily. Go to hell. Phew. Tsunade's figure suddenly disappeared from the place, and reappeared in front of Jiraiya. Boom. Tsunade punched Jiraiya out of anger and instantly hit Jiraiya out, directly crashing through the wood of Orokimaru's house. Wall. There were screams coming from further and further away in the air. After knocking Jiraiya away, Tsunade clapped her hands casually and turned to look at Orokimaru. The original angry face turned into a smile. Sorry, sorry, I'm so sorry, I broke your house to pieces. But since you don't want it anyway, you don't have to pay for it, right? Orokimaru looked at Tsunade's face-changing smile, and then looked at the big hole Jiraiya made on the wooden wall. He couldn't help but mourn for three seconds for Jiraiya. But if you think about it carefully, Jiraiya deserves it. You know that Tsunade is very violent, but you still mess with her all the time? Forget it once or twice, how many times has this happened? It's really just seeking death. I don't know how long it took, Orokimaru's things were almost packed, and Jiraiya came back from the big hole with a big bag on his head. Hateful, Orokimaru. You are not kind at all, why not stop that woman, Jiraiya covered the bag on his head and yelled in grievance. Just now, he only relied on the fact that this was Orokimaru's territory, so he had the confidence to provoke Tsunade. Because he knew that Tsunade liked Orokimaru, and she would generally not use violence in Orokimaru's house. But Orokimaru was very cooperative and said that he didn't want this house anymore. She used the teleportation technique. Orokimaru said casually. His meaning was obvious. Tsunade used the teleportation technique and he had no time to stop it. But will Jiraiya believe it? I definitely won't believe it. What, your teleportation technique is obviously faster than hers, you, you did it on purpose. It was intentional, so what? Tsunade casually interjected Orokimaru is my boyfriend now. If he doesn't help me. Will he help you, a pervert? Male, boyfriend? Jiraiya was stunned. Did these two guys confirm their relationship? When did it happen? Why didn't he know? Why did he suddenly feel like crying? A series of questions instantly appeared in Jiraiya's mind. Tsunade's direct, Orokimaru was also stunned. When had he promised? Thinking of this, he subconsciously glanced at Tsunade's expression. Well, judging from the look of this girl, she was just trying to hurt Jiraiya. It's just that this discerning person can't Jiraiya couldn't tell the lie, and he became extremely depressed. Shaking his head and ignoring the two of them, Orokimaru packed up the things he had packed and walked slowly towards his new home. See you there. Orokimaru left, and Tsunade and Jiraiya quickly followed. Orokimaru's new home is in the northwest corner of Kanaha village. Not far from the Hayaga clan. It's a big house. Looking at the bustling street in front of him, Orokimaru grew take a breath. Ease. When the three of them passed by the Hayaga clan, Orokimaru's eyes were attracted by two little kids. They looked exactly the same and were learning to walk in crotchless pants. When he saw the Teiki clan emblem on the door behind them, Orokimaru I have to lament my fate. It has been almost three years since they came to this world. The two brothers Hayaga Hizashi and Hayaga Hizashi of the Hayaga clan are only one year old now? 
Do you want to witness the growth of these strong men? Uchiha Fugaku is four years old now. The two brothers Hinata and Hinata are only one year old. In Kakashi and Metkai's generation, many people's fathers are younger than themselves. It's really impossible to find any fun. Will life be like this? The supplies were moved to the third floor and Jiraiya and Tsunade also stayed to help Orokimaru organize his new home. Although Tsunade doesn't usually do these housework, she is a ninja after all. Her self-care ability is certainly not comparable to that of ordinary little kids. And Jiraiya? Well, although this guy was abused by the two of them in every aspect, he was better because he was thick-skinned, and he still had a forest living in his heart. Naturally, he would not hang himself on a tree like Tsunade. He has already regarded Orokimaru as his competitor, and defeating Orokimaru has become his obsession. Therefore, he will not care about these small things with the two of them. On this day, the three of them were helping Orokimaru organize spending time in the new home. At night, Jiraiya and Tsunade left. Orokimaru looked at the spacious and bright new home, and his whole heart felt relaxed. He stretched his body, came to the large mirror of the new home, and looked at seeing his long flowing hair and fair skin in the mirror, the corner of Orokimaru's mouth curled up. As expected of the Sherinan, with his current physical condition, he can only withstand three Megatama at most. He in the mirror was no different from him outside the mirror. But soon, Orokimaru's golden vertical pupils in the mirror began to change color. The golden pupils gradually darkened, and finally turned into a strange scarlet red. Three people as black as ink, something like a comma, evenly distributed around the scarlet pupils. Orokimaru took a deep breath, and then closed his eyes. When his eyes opened again, the scarlet pupils had disappeared, replaced by him originally golden vertical pupils. If other ninjas saw this scene, they would definitely be extremely surprised. Because no one would have thought that a child from an ordinary ninja family could actually awaken the Sherinan, the limit of blood inheritance of the Uchiha clan. I? Sherinan? Yes. Sherinan. This is the power of the Uchiha clan that was fused when Orokimaru was studying the gene fusion fluid. It is made by extracting the genes of several Uchiha eye-opening clan members. No need to transplant cells, it can be awakened and used directly without the stimulation of mental power, and it is still a three Magatama. This is incredible for the entire ninja world. But now, Orokimaru did it easily. According to Orokimaru's research, the reason why Uchiha people are so warlike and arrogant is because their genes contain a special power. This special power will be stimulated by the stimulation of the host's own spiritual power, thus forming the representative of spiritual power, Sherinan. And because the mental power of the Sherinan is so huge, even the current Uchiha clan's body cannot bear it. Therefore, as long as their tribesmen are stimulated by words or external stimulation, they will easily develop mental problems. It ranges from being bellicose and arrogant at worst to falling into madness. Because their bodies are not strong enough to suppress the power of the Sherinan, they can easily break down and do some irrational things. This may be why the second Hokage called them the evil clan. Of course, Orokimaru, who knew the plot, knew very well that the power of their Sherinan belonged to the divine fruit. According to legend, the sacred tree is the ten tails, and the ten tails is evil. Kagaya ate the sacred fruit from the sacred tree, so her temperament changed drastically. But the power of the divine fruit was integrated into her body and passed on to her descendants. According to Orokimaru's analysis, Kagaya has three powers, one is his own, one is from the sacred tree, and the other is from the sacred fruit. His own is the Byakugan, while the divine trees is the body of a sage and the Divine Fruits is the Nine Megatama Reincarnation Sherinan. Originally, the three powers were combined into one, but Kagaya's bloodline was passed down from generation to generation, and the genes gradually became separated. Let's not talk about Kagaya's own Byakugan inheritance for now. Here we mainly talk about the power of Divine Trees and Divine Fruits. If the Sacred Tree is the Ten Tails, the source of Chakra, then the sacred fruit is the root of the Sherinan and the Rin Egan. Both have huge amounts of chakra, but
but the sacred tree mainly represents body energy. The divine fruit mainly represents spiritual energy. Hamura inherited Kagaya's Byakugan. Hago Romo, the sage of six paths, not only inherited the eye power, but also inherited the body of a sage. It's just that his power, starting from his descendants Azura and Indra, was divided into two again. Azura inherits the physique, and Indra inherits the eye power. Because physical energy only makes the body stronger and has little impact on people's thinking, the Azura lineage who inherit the physical gene are not affected by mental power. Such people have normal thinking and tend to be kind in all aspects of their character. As for those who inherit eye power, because their mental power is too great, it is easy for people to have ideological problems and become very advocating for power. If you are slightly unsatisfied, you will become very extreme. Just like Indra who killed his tribe for no reason, Uchihamadara who wanted to create infinite Tsukuyomi after the death of his younger brother, and Uchiha Obito who didn't hesitate to make an enemy of the whole world after the death of his childhood sweetheart, after learning what happened to his brother, Uchiha Suzuki who wants to destroy Kanaha and so on. The topic is a bit far-fetched, I have said so much just to illustrate one point. The pupil power attached to the divine fruit, whether it is the Rin Egan or the Sherinan, is very powerful mentally. You must have a strong enough body to be able to suppress the mental power attached to it, otherwise the huge mental power will easily overwhelm you. People lose their minds. Even if there are only three Megatama eyes, it is enough to change the character of an Uchiha. Based on Orakimura's current physique after using the intermediate strengthening liquid. Well, three Megatama is already the limit. In fact, after the six path sage, the generation of Azura and Indra, although their physiques and eye powers have been separated, their physical energy and mental energy are actually not much different. Indra does not have the body of an immortal, but his physique is still strong and the amount of chakra is still astonishing. Azura has no pupil power, but his mental power is still good. The intensity of his mental power can even directly condense the jade of seeking Dao. It's just that the bloodline gradually faded, allowing their descendants, the Senju and Uchiha races, to develop into two extremes. Only the human body of an immortal is left. One only has pupil power left. And both require awakening to use. The most important thing is that many people in their bloodline have lost the qualifications to awaken the sage body or the Sherinan. What Orakimura has to do is to collect the genes of the people who are qualified to awaken the Sherinan and use them to enhance his eye power. Some of these people have awakened the Sherinan, and some have not yet awakened the Sherinan. But that doesn't matter. As long as his genes contain this power, it will be enough for Orakimura to use it. The more Sherinan genes collected, the stronger the pupil power obtained by fusing them together after purification and tempering. As long as the Sherinan gene, spiritual power, is enough, turning on the kaleidoscope is only a matter of minutes. Based on the Uchiha family genes he had collected at Kanaha Hospital in the past two years, it was more than enough to open the three Megatama, but the kaleidoscope was still far behind. After all, there are only a few blood samples of Uchiha people in the hospital. Most of the Uchihas who had their eyes opened did not store their blood in the hospital. What's more, Orakimura's current physical strength is not strong enough to withstand the power of the Manjikyo Sherinan. Now Orakimaru, even if he collects enough Sherinan genes and wants to forcibly fuse the Manjikyo, he may not go crazy, but his spirit will definitely be affected. When using the kaleidoscope skill, the physical load will definitely be overloaded. Myopia, eye bleeding, and body pain are all side effects of overloading the body. At this point, some people may ask, as long as the body is strong enough, does using the Manjikyo Sherinan have no side effects? The answer is yes. Just like the original Uchiha Obito. After transplanting the cells of the first generation Hokage, White Zetsu, I can use kaleidoscope and other things casually. Not to mention my eyes bleeding, my whole body hurts, and even the most basic myopia does not appear. Orakimaru estimated that after using the advanced genetic enhancement fluid, he would be able to use the Manjikyo Sherinan at will. 
If you fuse the cells of the first generation Hokage, you can use even the Samsara I. Yes, in Orochimura's mind, the Rin Egan is more advanced than the main Jikyo Sharinan, and it's more than one level higher. You know, Obito in the original work, even if he has the cells of the first generation Hokage, it is a bit difficult to transplant a reincarnation eye. Want to use a pair of Samsara eyes? At least it needs to be of the physique of the Azumaki or Senjo clan. Just transplanting cells is simply not enough. What? Uchiha Madara doesn't have the physique of Uzumaki and Senju, so why can he use a pair of Samsara eyes? Because he is the reincarnation of Indra Chakra and has the power of a direct relative of the Six Paths Immortals, this is different. Forget it, it's useless to think about it now. After coming into contact with the cells of the first generation Hokage, everything will be clear. After figuring this out, Orokimura stopped thinking, closed his eyes, and quickly fell asleep. The First Ninja World War was officially declared over due to the death of the second generation shadows of Kanaha Village and Kumagakur Village, and the rise of the third generation Hokage Sarutobi Hiruzen. Because the person who killed the second Hokage was Ginko Ginko who initiated the coup and had nothing to do with the Kingdom of Thunder, the peace-loving Kanaha Village did not pursue the matter. Sarutobi Hiruzen became the Hokage, and Danzo established his roots. Kanaha has entered a formal development period. Early 20th year in Kanaha. It has been four months since Orokimaru moved into his new home. In other words, it has been three years since Orokimaru came to this world. It's another gorgeous and colorful morning, the morning light slowly opens the curtain, bringing freshness to the world. Kanaha Village, Hokage's office. The third Hokage was sitting at his desk, holding his chin with his hands looking at Orokimaru and the other three standing in front, lost in thought. He is the teacher of the three of them, and he should have tried his best to teach his students, but now he is also the Hokage. As the third Hokage of Kanaha village, Hiruzen Sarutobi naturally cannot be like other teachers, running around with his students anytime, anywhere, completing tasks and teaching them. In terms of teaching students, Hiruzen Sarutobi will naturally do his best. Even as disciples of Hiruz and Sarutobi, they can get training resources that other civilian ninjas do not have. But it's naturally impossible to take them with me when doing tasks or something. Have you ever seen the Hokage running around with his disciples during non-war times? Therefore, he called the three of them here today just to discuss future mission issues. Among the three, Jiraiya is a bit careless and will do something outrageous if he is not careful. Tsunade's temper is easily irritable, and she can easily get upset when unexpected situations arise. Only Orokimaru is calm and collected. Thinking of this, the third Hokage slowly spoke Orokimaru, from today on, you are the captain of your team. Well. What? Tsunade was stunned, but Jiraiya exclaimed. Why? Why is Orokimaru the captain? I, I can do it too. I believe that my handsome and handsome Jiraiya-sama is absolutely qualified to be the leader of this team. Hearing Jiraiya's words, the third Hokage still spoke, but Tsunade next to him looked contemptuous. Jiraiya, don't you have any idea of your own strength? Tsunade came back to her senses and struck mercilessly what do you think is better than Orokimaru and you? Is it strength? Is it resilience? Or judgment? Oh, by the way. Orokimaru can't compare to you when it comes to lust. Hateful, Tsunade, stop looking down on others. Is not it? Big pervert. The two of them were talking and going to have sex again. Okay, okay, don't argue. The third Hokage stopped him in time among the three of you, Orokimaru is indeed the most suitable person to be the captain. From today on, the future tasks will be decided by. Tuck tuck tuck. Before the third Hokage could finish speaking, there was a knock on the office door. Come in. Hokage-sama, the experiment was successful, the experiment was successful, ha ha ha. A middle-aged man wearing glasses and a white coat ran in excitedly from outside the office. The moment he saw Orokimaru, he couldn't help but froze. Alas, the teacher is here too? Ha? Huh? Teacher. 
Hearing the white coat's name for Orokimaru, Jiraiya, and Tsunade were stunned at the same time. He actually called Orokimaru sensei? This is, what the hell? Orokimaru looked calm don't worry about me, you are busy with your business. Yes, yes. The white coat nodded shamefully, and then said to the Hokage Lord Hokage, the experiment on the recovery potion was successful. Success? The third Hokage's eyes were slightly stern are you saying that the recovery potion was successful? Yes, Hokage-sama. Talk about it in detail. Based on the information given by Mr. Orokimaru, I thought about it, and then three months ago. The man in the white coat was talking about the experimental process during this period with great excitement. He is a medical ninja from Kanaha Hospital named Harano. He has rich medical expertise. After receiving the order from above, he has been following Orokimaru to learn the production of gene repair solution. During the production process, Orokimaru's talent and unique insights into genetic knowledge impressed him greatly. Sometimes just a few clicks can make him feel enlightened. Therefore, he couldn't hold back and became Orokimaru as his disciple. Although it may sound unbelievable for a middle-aged man in his forties to become a disciple of a kid who is less than ten years old, but this is the fact. Orokimaru pretended to study with him for a while, and then gave him the formula and production process of the genetic repair solution that he had already modified. So Yuenya began to study it by himself. Only when he encountered something he really didn't understand, he would ask Orokimaru for advice. Finally, after three months, this repair solution was finally developed. Although it is a substitute, the resilience is a little worse, but the difference is not too much. After listening to Yuanyi's story, the third Hokage couldn't help but nodded how much does it cost to make a recovery potion now? That, it takes about 50,000 tails. This thing is just like a smart chip. The most expensive thing is the technology, not the raw materials. 50,000 tails. The third Hokage was stunned for a moment, then nodded it is indeed much more expensive than ordinary wound medicine of several hundred tails, but it is worth every penny. Make a batch for later use. Yes. That, I'll go down first. Go for it. The third Hokage waved his hand. The white coat nodded, then glanced at Orokimaru before turning and leaving. It wasn't until he walked away that Tsunade and Jireyu reacted, looking at Orokimaru next to them in shock. Although it was only for a moment although he was able to improve the medicine, he could still achieve such good results after improving the medicine. Such scientific research talent is a bit exaggerated. The most important thing is that he can be someone else's teacher at the age of 10. Until the three of them left the Hokage's office, Tsuna both hand and Jiraiya haven't come back to their senses yet. At this time, they only have one thought in their minds this damn boy is also a little brat, why is there such a big gap? Especially Jiraiya, his inferiority complex is so high. It seems that no matter what field he is in, he is not Orokimaru's opponent. Thinking of this, Jiraiya subconsciously looked at Orokimaru next to him. At this moment, Orokimaru behind his head, there seemed to be something like the sun, emitting dazzling light, which made him unable to open his eyes. At night, after Orokimaru finished the experiment, he returned to his residence alone. Thinking about the steps of cell transplantation in my mind. Cell transplantation is more complicated than imagined. Because it not only includes cell culture, but also requires living organisms as experimental subjects. Cell cultivation takes a long time, and Orokimaru can't experiment with living people now. Therefore, Orokimaru's experimental subjects are currently limited to mice, and they are still in the cell culture stage. Because of this, the scientific research projects given by the system have not made any substantial progress. Tuck tuck tuck. There was a sudden knock on the door. Orokimaru frowned, but still got up and opened the door. This is Kanaha, and there can be no enemies for him. He frowned but was a little confused about who would come to find him at this point. The door opened, and there was an umbu standing at the door. Judging from his height and body shape, I probably don't recognize him. Orokimaru, someone wants to see you. 
Umbu's voice was low and he got straight to the point. After hearing such straightforward words from Umbu, Orokimaru immediately turned to Danzo. But thinking about it carefully, it was impossible. Danzo had just established the root department not long ago, and he didn't even have the foundation yet. Steady, he didn't reveal the scientific research technology that would be useful to him, so he probably wouldn't come looking for him. Who wants to see me? Orokimaru still asked subconsciously. Because from the tone of the umbu, it didn't sound like the third hokage. Hearing this, the umbu hesitated for a moment please forgive me for not being able to tell you. You will know after you go. Hearing this, Orokimaru was surprised. You can hire umbu, but you can't reveal your identity. Is there any hidden big boss in Kanaha besides Sarutobi and Danzo? Is that so? Then let's go. With such doubts, Orokimaru followed the umbu out. In Kanaha, he is not afraid of anyone trying to harm him. Because he is very important to Kanaha now, and the slightest disturbance will cause a series of chain reactions in Kanaha. Ordinary people, simply cannot bear this responsibility. Of course, having said that, Orokimaru should still be vigilant. Following the umbu all the way, the two of them quickly reached their destination. This is a mansion, similar to Kanaha's the secret experimental base is similar, but the area is smaller. Six people. Um, what? Umbu didn't seem to hear Orokimaru's murmur clearly. Without, nothing. Orokimaru said calmly. The calmness was only on the surface, but he couldn't help but be surprised in his heart. This house seemed ordinary, but there were six Umbu hidden in invisible places around it. Then who lived here? Orokimaru squinted his eyes and used his perception ability to sense. Does the person inside have a huge amount of chakra? Huge amount of chakra? Could it be her? Perception is an ability that Orokimaru only started to study. It uses the characteristics of snakes to sense the surrounding chakra. Although the range is not comparable to the chakra perception of the original Xiang Phosphorus, the accuracy is still not bad. Therefore, Orokimaru could sense the people in the hut and quickly guessed their identity. Sure enough, Umbu opened the door. A middle-aged woman wearing a white kimono and a double bun appeared in Orokimaru's sight. She is said to be middle-aged, but she actually looks a little old. The face bears traces of countless years. Orokimaru entered the room at the signal of the Umbu. The Umbu didn't say anything, but slowly backed out and closed the door. In the room, Orokimaru immediately confirmed his judgment when he saw the Senjo clan's emblem embroidered on the woman's white robe and her very eye-catching fiery red hair. Do you want to see me? Yes. You are? Orokimaru still cautiously showed a hint of doubt. Although he already knew the woman's identity. Uzumaki Mito. The middle-aged woman calmly uttered a few words. Uzumaki Mito, the name only has four words. But the weight of these words, as long as they are spoken, even Sarutobi Hiruzen must be respectful. No wonder this person has so much power. No wonder there are so many hidden umbu around. It turns out that she is Uzumaki Mito. Uzumaki Mito, the current nine-tailed Jin Hiruki, the wife of the god of ninja world, Senjo Hashirama, and the real power of the Senjo clan at present man. Any one of these three identities would be enough to shock the ninja world. Seeing Uzumaki Mito, Orokimaru was a little surprised, but the do etiquette was indispensable. He straightened his robe a little. It turns out to be Mito-sama. Orokimaru is rude. Well, nice kid. Uzumaki Mito has a different identity from her. He feels very gentle. Just a casual smile gives people a feeling of spring breeze. Affinity, some people are born with this power. Uzumaki Mito is like this. Sit down. Uzumaki Mito smiled and pointed to the seat next to him. Orokimaru nodded, and sat on the stool next to him with some confusion, secretly guessing the other party's intention to come to him. The wife of the first Hokage, a person like this in Kanaha village it has been a long time, but I have never seen someone. What is she looking for? Could it be that she is looking for him, 
is she doing it for Tsunade? In addition to being Senjo Hashirama's wife, Uzumaki Mito is also Tsunade's grandmother. So, if she is here for Tsunade, it seems to make sense. But when it comes to Tsunade, it shouldn't be her turn to take action, right? I heard that you developed that powerful restorative potion. Uzumaki Mito suddenly said this, interrupting Orokimura's thoughts. Orokimura came back to his senses and nodded slightly yes, Mito-sama. Haha, you don't have to be formal, you are in the same class as Tsunade, just like her, call me Grandma Mito. Yes, yes, Mito, Grandmother. Orokimura struggled in his heart for a long time, and finally he came up with this title. He has never seen what a grandma looks like in his two lives, and he is really resisting when he is suddenly asked to recognize her as a grandma. Uzumaki Mito smiled kindly Orokimaru, you are a good kid. You have no family heritage, but you can become Sarutobi's disciple with your own talent, I'm very optimistic about your future. Orokimaru didn't speak, because he knew that Uzumaki Mito had more to come. Sure enough, Uzumaki Mito just paused, and then continued Tsunade often mentioned you in front of me, saying how good your talent and strength are. You are so strong, haha, when I saw you today, you are even stronger than the rumors said. Are you curious, what do I want from you? Very curious indeed. That's right, everyone would be curious if I called you here out of nowhere. Uzumaki Mito smiled self-deprecatingly haha. I'm a bit nagging as I get older, so don't mind it. No. In fact, I called you here today for no other reason than to hear your views on the future. A vision for the future? Orokimaru's heart moved what do you mean? Is it that you have any ideals or, dream? Uzumaki Mito said slowly. There was nothing strange about her expression. After saying this, she straightened her robe and looked at Orokimaru with a smile dream? Hearing this, Orokimaru's eyes narrowed slightly. After thinking for a moment, he slowly said I wonder if bringing peace to the ninja world counts. Peace in the ninja world? Uzumaki Mito was a little surprised, but he continued to speak haha, this dream is really not small, then you, what are you going to do? This, I haven't thought about it yet. Orokimaru lied calmly however, I will work hard in this regard. Orokimaru didn't know why Uzumaki Mito suddenly asked this question, but he subconsciously felt that he should be more cautious. In fact, deep down in his heart, he had already made a plan. The unified theory he told Tsunade before it's definitely not just talk. As a time traveler who came from a peaceful era, Orokimaru naturally doesn't like war. In war years, fighting is going on, and life will be in danger if you don't pay attention. What's the meaning of this era? The pleasure gained from killing is often not as refreshing as the enjoyment in peaceful times. In peaceful times, as long as you have a little power or money, your life can be interesting and colorful. However, this world is a world of war, Orokimaru has no choice. The only thing he can do is to become stronger, and then do whatever he wants. And unifying the ninja world is one of the few things he wants to do. Through the deterrence of force, all countries will be forced to compromise, thereby creating a peaceful and prosperous age. It sounds a bit fanciful, but Orokimaru really thinks so. And in the original work, there are three other people who obviously think so too. The first one is Danzo. It's just that his strength cannot support his ambition, so let alone success or failure, he hasn't even started a plan. The second one is Nagato, or Pain. He also had the same idea, to capture the tailed beasts and create the ultimate weapon, the ten tails, to shock the five great nations, and he almost succeeded. It's just that his strength is still not enough, and he was finally defeated by the protagonists Halo and Mouth Escape. The third one is Kagaya. Not only did she think so, but she also did it, and even did it in the end. If it weren't for the fact that she was discovered by two traitors when she used humans to worship the sacred tree, I'm afraid the ninja world would still be under her rule. There is no way a war will break out. In the past, Orokimaru was just an ordinary person on earth, so he had no choice. 
you can only live a life of mediocrity and let others bully you. But now, he is Orokimaru, he has a system, so he has ambition. He wants to be the ruler of this world. Just like the ancestral dragon in memory. Unify the entire ninja world. The only difference is. Zalong's lifespan is limited, so although he achieved unification, after his death, the world was once again in flames of war, and all life was in ruins. But now, he is Orokimaru, and as long as he can research the immortal reincarnation, his lifespan will be unlimited. Not to mention the capabilities that come with the system. So he has the time and capital. Of course, these things are still relatively far away, and it is impossible for him to tell these things to Azumaki Mito, or even to anyone. I mentioned it to Tsunade before, but it was just a whim. Uzumaki Mito heard Orokimaru's words and nodded with a smile well, not only is he talented, but he also knows how to work hard. He is a good boy. Haha, <laughs> that girl Tsunade was right. Um? Tsunade. Orokimaru narrowed his eyes. Did Tsunade really say something to her? It seems that the butterfly effect is working. Because he remembered that Tsunade in the original book only had a good impression of Orokimaru but she was far from telling her. Parents are at this level. But now. Uzumaki Mito looked at Orokimaru and seemed to be getting more and more satisfied. He took Orokimaru and chatted for another ten minutes. In the end, because it was too late, it was not appropriate to say too much, so Orokimaru was asked to go back. Watching Orokimaru leave, Uzumaki Mito nodded slightly with talent, courage, and determination, Orokimaru you will become a good ninja. Uzumaki Mito murmured to himself. As everyone knows, this time, even she looked away. It is said that Uzumaki Mito can sense the good and evil of people, so he should be able to sense whether others are lying, just like the original work. Under the moonlight, Orokimaru was thinking about the scene just now. Uzumaki Mito should not have used his perception ability to detect himself just now. Because to perceive good and evil, you need to turn on the Nine Tails mode. And to perceive lies, you also need to concentrate. Done. Uzumaki Mito was in neither of these two states just now. Therefore, she should not have noticed anything unusual about herself. Thinking of this, Orokimaru nodded slightly. It seems that she did not expect that a person less than ten years old a little kid, how dare you lie in front of her. On the surface, the abilities of a ninja are divided into three types, ninjutsu, teijutsu, and genjutsu. But in terms of strength, only the eight gate dungeon can see the physical skills. The others are not worth mentioning at all. The really powerful ones are those magical arts, forbidden arts, and the abilities that come with blood. Strength, speed, and the power of ninjutsu. Back at his home, Orokimaru was lying on his bed his mind spinning rapidly. He was a little surprised by Uzumaki Mito's interview, but it had no impact on his life. So, for him now, the most important thing is to improve his strength. His strength is not weak now, but it is obviously not enough. I am still half a scientist, so naturally I cannot take the strength route, so strength abilities and eight gate dungeon will not be considered. In terms of speed, what are the fastest techniques? Flying Thunder God? Eight Gates Dungia? The Thunder Escape Armor of Yunren Village? Thunder Dun Armor, like the Eight Door Dun Armor, requires a strong body to support it, so it will not be considered. Then only the space type Flying Thunder God is left? Well, this ability is very good. Space Jump, Long Distance Teleportation, this they are all magical techniques for escaping and fighting enemies. Think about the heroic appearance of the fourth Hokage who used this technique to become famous in the third battle. It can be said to be a must-have magical technique for time travelers. However, Orokimaru in the original work of this technique should have read it, but in the end he didn't. You know why you haven't learned it. Then can you learn it? Of course, this is not the most important thing. The most important thing is that the art of flying thunder god is now in the Book of Seals, and it is an imperfect one. The Book of Seals records the forbidden art. Book. 
Orikimura narrowed his eyes. It seems that the sealed book contains the dirt reincarnation that he needs. Although according to memory, these two techniques are not perfect yet, but he can use them to study. The only one the difficulty is that now that the second Hokage is dead, with the style of the third Hokage, he will definitely not let himself see it. After all, these are all forbidden techniques. So, what should I do? After thinking for a moment, Orikimaru was very confused. The answer is almost there. It seems that the only way to start is from Danzo and let Danzo show it to him. It seems that Orikimaru in the original work had the opportunity to see these two techniques after colluding with Danzo. Then there is nothing wrong with following his old path. Well, the more I think about it, the more right I am. Find an opportunity to fool Danzo. Hidden. As long as you gain his trust, isn't it easy to read the sealed book? By then, not only the sealed book, but even the cells of the first Hokage will be available for use. Thinking of this, Orikimaru nodded with satisfaction.